Chapter 2201, Go Crush Him, Crown Prince Mo heaved a sigh of relief as he strode over. He was scared that Kiyokiya would misunderstand, yet who knew that the little fellow believed him? This made him extremely happy. You've made arrangements for those people already? Kiao Mu glanced at Crown Prince Mo and asked with a harumph, MHM, I told the steward to do the rest. They can just sweep the floor and do other chores in the future. There's no problem now, right? Kiao Mu was extremely pleased. Yang Xirong's tense expression finally relaxed. You really did send them to do chores? Mo Lian nodded, and he looked at Yang Xirong in earnest. Don't worry. Second Aunt Master. They can only do menial chores. I fear that they can't handle anything more complicated. Yang Xirong was unable to respond to that. Sure enough, this Mo Lian was a very crafty guy. But speaking of which, their Kiao seemed to have said to make those courtesans be floor sweeping maid servants. They didn't communicate beforehand. Yet their way of handling the courtesans was the same. It was evident that these two people's craftiness was probably on the same level. Yang Xirong didn't know whether she should feel gratified or feel sorry for those courtesans. Second Aunt Master, rest assured. Kiam Yu told Yang Xirong softly, Lian has never done anything to hurt me. Yang Xirong eased up slightly as she looked at Mo Lian. Mo Lian took this chance to add, Second Aunt Master. Don't worry, I won't do anything that will put Kiyoki Ao in danger. Yang Xirong sized him up and then snorted. You can't deny your identity. Once you return to Divine Province, I don't believe that there won't be trouble. There indeed will be troublesome matters. Mo Lian explained good naturedly, but I will take care of them for Kiyoki Ao. With me here, Kiyoki Ao does not need to face any of it alone. Yang Xirong hummed and nodded in acknowledgement. Speaking of which, the crown prince really was black-hearted. Yang Xirong mused. If she didn't personally witness the way he handled matters, she really wouldn't know that this brat had such a black heart underneath his gentle exterior. Kiao Mu grabbed crown prince Mo's palm. The vassal prince of Jianping has been inviting you again and again. Are you still not going? Yes. Why not? Mo Lian's lips showed a cold smile. Mo Kun this guy nearly caused Second Aunt Master's impression of him to drop below zero. Second Aunt Master had originally disliked him, yet he nearly ruined it for him this time. This made the Crown Prince Mo extremely pissed. Crown Prince Mo had originally planned not to attend this banquet, yet he had changed his mind now. He was going to go. If not, how was he going to openly crush this Mo Kun? Kiao Mu glanced at him and asked, You've decided? Mo Lian nodded, and then he grasped her tender wrist. Together, Miss Kiao pursed her lips. He didn't invite me. That invitation clearly denoted that it was only requesting for Mo Lian's audience. Mo Lian smiled and kissed the back of her hand with a smack. MHM. You're going with me? You are my wife. If you don't go, I won't go either. Inviting me equals inviting you. Mo Lian said softly, we are one. Chapter 2202, you're jealous. Kiao Mu glanced at him. You won't think I'm in the way? Mo Lian was startled. Afterwards he gave her a tight squeeze in his arms and lifted her up to meet his gaze. My Kiao Kiao, you're being jealous, Fui. Kiao Mu suddenly thought of something. She turned to look at Second Aunt Master's sullen expression and immediately yelped. Second Aunt Master is still here. This darn brat was too despicable, acting like there was no one else present. Yang Xirong harumphed and waved her hand. Whatever. Make sure you prepare well. If you're going to the Divine Province, don't leave out anything you need. It won't be like at home, so don't mess around and do stuff that makes me worry. Mess around? Worry? Second Aunt Master was referring to smooching and cuddling. Mo Lian and the little fellow looked each other in the eye with their faces almost touching. He chortled and gave her a smooch on the cheek. My Kiao Kiao, don't worry, your Aunt Master won't be able to separate us even if she wants to. If she prohibits me from seeing you, I'll come in through the window or dig a tunnel if I have to. Thank you then. Kiao Mu rolled her eyes at him. Her adorable response amused Mo Lian greatly. Let's go. We'll go back and dress you up before going to see that fool. The vassal prince of Jianping had been pacing back and forth in his study. At this time, there were two other people seated in his study. They looked like identical twins. They were in their forties, with facial features that gave them an acerbic look. Why so troubled? Vassal Prince. 
one of them couldn't help but remark while shaking his head. You don't know, that guy is especially formidable. When he recalled the events of that day, Mo Khan couldn't resist having the jitters. Those people around Mo Lian didn't seem like normal people. It was obvious from their moves that several minor mystic cultivators were not their match. TSK. The twin on the left couldn't resist scoffing. That crown prince grew up on Sai Kong planet in the lower domain. Even with those people from the Council of Elders relaying their experience, you should know that the spiritual energy in the lower domain in sparse, even mystic energy isn't common. I have also heard that spiritual cultivators are extremely rare in the lower domain. The other man said with a smile, even if he started cultivating in the womb, he might not have broken through to the spiritual realm. Mo Kun didn't feel better after hearing this. Rather, he said extremely nervously, then you have no understanding of this crown prince. The crown prince is absolutely not as simple as you think. Vassal prince, vassal prince. A boy servant quickly walked in and bowed. Mo Kun showed delight. Did his highness the crown prince accept the beauties I gave him? That boy servant looked at Mo Kun awkwardly. He nodded and then shook his head. What do you mean by nodding and shaking your head? Vassal prince, that. The crown prince did indeed accept the beauties you gave him. Mo Kun slapped his thigh and was visibly pleased. Then isn't that good? Why did you shake your head? Like I said, this Mo Lian is just putting on a front. Didn't he still accept my beauties? The boy servant explained with a crestfallen face. This humble one heard that Crown Prince Mo relegated the beauties we sent over to be floor sweeping maid servants. Do you still think your beauty trap worked? Chapter 2203 Angered to Death Mo Kun widened his eyes in surprise. You're speaking the truth. Mo Lian that Dan Brat really sent his beauties to sweep the floor. He would actually do such a thing. Mo Kun's teeth ached from anger. He stared at the boy servant sullenly like a venomous snake. The boy servant hastily dropped to the ground and cowed out. Th this is what this humble one heard. As for the specifics, th that requires further inquiry. Then hurry up and go. Mo Kun roared. Go check where he sent them to sweep the floor. These were all rare beauties. Yet he was actually willing to do that? Mo Kun's heart ached terribly. If he had known the brat was this unappreciative, he wouldn't have given them. He didn't know whether he could take them back now. The boy servant was so scared that he scrambled out the door. By the time he climbed out the door, he was drenched in cold sweat. He hastily ran to make inquiries when he thought of the vassal prince's order. One of the twins snorted. This person really knows how to squander precious treasures. Vassal prince, why do we have to rush up and declare our presence in front of him? Let's first not talk about whether this person can return to the divine province. Even if he returns. That man smiled sinisterly. Isn't there still the eldest young sir, the second young sir? and the others. We just need to watch the fun from the back. Mo Kun thought it over and then declared indignantly. Previously, he scared this vassal prince into losing decorum. After being clear-headed now, I won't be making a fool of myself again. Humphrey, he's just an unrecognized crown prince. The vassal prince of Jianping sniggered, just wait until he returns to the divine province. Then why is the vassal prince still inviting him to a banquet? Mo Kun gritted his teeth. I originally planned to make connections with him, yet now. This vassal prince sees that he is just someone who doesn't appreciate favors. Isn't that so? The middle-aged man said with a smile, Our old vassal king is someone whose words hold weight in front of the emperor. DSK, how dare he disdain the vassal prince? Mo Kun raised his hand to halt the middle-aged man's flattery. He asked sternly, where is R. Biao? Where the hell did he go? His response was so incoherent just now. Is this crown prince coming to the banquet or not? Soon, that boy servant that went out hastily ran back and bowed obsequiously in front of Mo Kun. Mo Kun waved his hand impatiently and asked, what exactly is going on? Where did he throw those beauties to sweep the floor? And tonight's banquet, is he coming or not? If this guy truly spurned him, Humphrey, once he got back, he'd immediately tell his father to lodge a firm complaint against this guy in front of the emperor. The boy servant Tabi Ao quickly knelt down with a flump and answered while trembling with fear, re-reporting to the vassal prince, his highness the crown prince, he, he what, spit it out. 
His Highness the Crown Prince ordered a steward to keep those beauties in their inn's court to scrub the floor, wipe tables, and remove the night soil. Smack. Mokan was burning in wrath and smashed his cup at once. Repeat that again. The boy servant. You woo, this humble one wasn't responsible. Chapter 2204, Cousin has come. What can being angry at this humble one do? It doesn't help at all. The boy servant criticized in his mind, but he dared not show this on the surface at all. He could only say with an obsequious smile, the beauties have been left at the inn. Mokun bolted up from his seat and smashed basically everything he could in the living room. Afterwards, he shouted, utterly discomfited, how dare this brat spur me. His beauties, if you didn't want them, send them back. Yet you assigned them to the inn to remove the night soil. Only that guy surnamed Mo would do such a thing. Oh that's not it. Only that guy called Mo Lian would do such a thing. Mo Kun was burning in fury as he paced back and forth in the living room. He was stepping on broken pieces of porcelain, which repeatedly made crunching sounds. Vassal Prince. Scram. Yes, yes. This humble one will scram right away, immediately. As if granted amnesty. Arbiao rushed out in a fluster. Come back. Mokun's roar brought Arbiao back dejectedly. He bowed obsequiously as he asked Mokun, Vassal Prince, what, what other instructions do you have? Since this guy is not showing me face, go and retrieve everyone from the inn. He'd take them back. Were these delicate beauties meant for him to treat them this way? He had been reluctant to part with these beauties for that brat's enjoyment. Yet the result. He got face slapped. Mokan walked to and fro, to and fro, in the living room with his hands behind his back. Arbi Ao was crestfallen as he asked Mokan timidly, Vassal Prince, ah, are you sure you want to do this? Taking back people you had given someone else, this. If word got back to the divine province, this would definitely become a humongous joke in the upper social circles. As the Vassal Prince's subordinate, he was completely thinking of the vassal prince's face. If they handled the matter this way, it would make people ridicule the vassal prince. At that time, the first person to be implicated would be him. The vassal prince was certainly not going to admit that he had made the wrong decision. In that case, he, Arbiao would be the wrong one. Go. Yes. 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 Arbiao turned around bitterly and was about to leave. At that time. A couple who were almost like immortals came over. His knees bowed from getting spooked, and he immediately knelt down. Your Highness the Crown Prince. The Crown Prince cast him a look. Don't you see my Crown Prince Consort? Gree greetings to the Crown Prince Consort. May the Crown Prince Consort live a long life. Arbiao immediately lowered his head and prostrated out of his desire to live. Wasn't His Highness the Crown Prince's presence a bit too powerful? Crown Prince Mo hummed in acknowledgement and held Kiao Mu's petite hand. He stepped on the broken porcelain pieces as he walked up to Mo Kun with a spurious smile. What's wrong? You're welcoming us with a floor of broken pieces? Mo Kun shrunk his neck inexplicably, and moved closer to the twins. Greet, greetings to cousin. Cousin-in-law, Mo Lian looked at him coldly, Mo Kun, so strange, he suddenly felt as if the entire living room was covered in ice, the temperature was extremely chilling, MHM, so cold, Mo Kun retreated another step and inexplicably fawned, Ka cousin, you've come so early, excuse me for not going out to meet you, Mo Lian swept him a look without any mirth in his eyes, just now when we walked up to the door, we heard you say to return something to you, Chapter 2205, What Identity of Yours? You say it. Mo Lian looked at Abi Ao, the boy servant prostrating on the floor. Return what to your vassal prince? Abi Ao broke out in a cold sweet. Ayo, my goodness. This humble one was merely a boy servant. How come he was getting pulled into the fire? Abi Ao was afraid of replying carelessly. Therefore, he lowered his head and spoke sternly, reporting to your highness. The vassal prince did did not say anything. Mo Kun, why don't you tell me? Mo Kun turned around and looked coldly at this cousin of his. It was said that the vassal king of Jianping liked his youngest son the most. In the capital, 
the vassal king of Jianping's status was only inferior to his father's. That's why these sons of his were extremely pampered and fortunate. This vassal prince of Jianping was the third eldest of the Jianping family's direct line of descendants. There were two sons born of concubines that were also tough characters. This was the news that Mo Lian could obtain for the moment. As for what these people were really thinking, frankly speaking, Mo Lian didn't need to worry about that. His identity was apparent. As long as he returned to the divine province, any aristocrat would have to make way for him. At this time, the vassal prince of Jianping only wanted to go home and find his daddy. He backed away fearfully and promptly regretted his loose mouth from previously. They were just several beauties that he had given to cousin the crown prince. His cousin could do whatever he liked to them. For these beauties, Ah, it was truly not a wise decision to go against the crown prince. Mo Kun was unaware that his current behavior was seen by Kiao Mu as cowardly. How could the crown prince have such a cowardly cousin? Kiao Mu immediately glanced at her hubby with distaste. Afterwards, she wrestled her petite hand out from his palms. The crown prince. It was so annoying every time he saw this cousin. Kiao Kiao seemed to not like this cowardly cousin of his. Not only that, she would scorn him every single time because he was too much of a scaredy cat. Crown Prince Mo, who felt extremely wronged, was angrier the more he looked at this cousin. The vassal king was an outstanding figure for his time. How did he give birth to such a scaredy cat? Your Highness the Crown Prince. One of the twins suddenly shouted and cupped his hands toward Crown Prince Mo. Crown Prince Mo swept a cold glance over his body. Who are you? This one is the vassal prince of Jianping's personal guard, Lao Hai. This one is my younger brother, Lao Jiang. That middle-aged man called Lao Hai stated, This one has several words that I do not know whether I should say it. With what identity are you talking to us? A cold glint flashed through Crown Prince Mo's eyes. It was so chilly that it made one's heart shudder. Lao Hai's expression sank, and then he suddenly stepped forward. Kiao Mu felt a force blasting at her face head on. You sure enough are brazen? Mo Lian pulled her into his arms. With a flick of his sleeve, he then parried all the spiritual energy attacks from a Lao Hai. At the same time, a cold light flitted across his eyes. He swept out a fire arrow that shot straight at Lao Hai's face in the blink of an eye. Lao Hai was shocked. He had never thought the crown prince was so speedy. It was already too late for him to dodge. He dropped to the ground and rolled. However, his left arm had already gotten pierced through by the fire arrow. That speed was nearly impossible to discern with the naked eye. It was already too late for Lao Hai to respond, so he could only shout. Chapter 2206 giving a return gift, bam. Lao Hai instantly got hit flying, he flipped through the air before tumbling to the ground. He then spewed out a large amount of fresh blood. Eldest brother. Lao Jiang was shocked and swiftly went up to help him up. However, Lao Hai's shout entered his ears. Look out, second brother. Eldest brother, these two brothers simultaneously got sent flying out by two palm strikes from a distance. They tumbled without being able to resist the inertia from the strikes. One crashed into a cabinet, and the other got flung to the wall. The one who crashed into the cabinet caused the latter to topple over onto his waist. The one that smashed into the wall was in an even worse state. His head had smashed through the wall and had gotten stuck. He was unable to get out for the time being. The crown prince's moves silenced the entire hall. The vassal prince of Jianping stumbled backwards and hid behind the big wooden armchair at once. His voice trembled as he gazed at the crown prince in terror. Cousin, we, we can talk, talk things out. He had said that Mo Lian had astonishing combat prowess. Yet Lao Hai and Lao Jiang still dared to rush up and talk big before gauging Crown Prince Mo's strength. They truly weren't too smart. He looked at these two personal guards, and then compared them to his eldest brother and second brother's attendants. Mo Kun couldn't help but feel a bit crushed. He was the vassal king of Jianping's legitimate son and successfully inherited the title of vassal prince according to ancestral rules, but his old man still doted on his gifted eldest brother the most. Eldest brother's personal attendant was an expert whose cultivation was nearly at the divine realm. While these two guards, Lao Hai and Lao Jiang, were only level 10 grand spiritual cultivators. They were definitely presentable in the middle six prefectures and the lower star domain, but, 
it was another matter entirely in the upper three provinces. Wait, Mo Kun seemed to realize something and thought long and hard. He suddenly looked at Crown Prince Mo in shock. This cousin of his had defeated two level 10 grand spiritual cultivators in several seconds by just waving his hand. Then his cultivation realm should be. Mo Kun couldn't help getting scared after the fact. He backed away some more while hugging onto the big wooden armchair. You don't come over. He yelled at Mo Lian, cousin. We hail from the same ancestry and roots and share the same surname, you, you cannot do me any fatal harm, my dad is, he is your uncle, Mo Kun, ah, here, present, Mo Kun hastily nodded, but he still continued backing away while hugging onto the big wooden armchair, Kiao Mu looked down even more on people from the Mo clan when she saw his cowardly actions, she was anxious to pull her petite hand out of Mo Lian's grasp, but she failed, Mo Lian, he was so angry, because of this nutcase Mo Kun, not only had second aunt master misunderstood him, he was even making Kiao Kiao look down on the Mo clan. Cousin, I I'm telling you, if there are any problems, we should talk about it calmly. That, those beauties I gave you, you, you can do whatever you want. It's totally fine. Ah, whether you want them to sweep the floor at the inn or remove night soil, I I won't interfere at all. Are you able to? Kiao Mu snorted brashly and raised her petite hand. What are you people doing? Quickly present the return gift. Mo Kun's eyes bulged out, and his nerves inexplicably tensed. There, there was a return gift. Chapter 2207, Kiao Kiao is angry. Mo Kun, why did he have a bad premonition? He immediately tensed up at Kiao Mu's mention of a return gift. No, no need. You don't have to. Mo Kun quickly added, that, uh, little cousin-in-law, you actually don't need to give a return gift. Kiao Mu coldly swept him a glance. Bring them over. What are you doing? Stop, stop. Mo Kun glared as he reflexively backed away again while hugging onto the big wooden armchair. He glared at Kiao Mu vigilantly and frantically gestured to his two guards with his eyes. Unfortunately, Lao Jiang had just helped up his eldest brother, who had coughed up blood. The both of them had sour expressions as they supported each other. They were afraid of getting beaten up by Crown Prince Mo so they momentarily stayed put. A series of familiar snorts came from the door. Mo Kun was hiding behind the big wooden armchair. His eyes turned round when he looked at the entrance. A group of buff men were hoisting over ten fatsos. They grunted as they squeezed through the door. Luckily, this living room in Mo Kun's temporary living quarters was quite large. It was not crowded at all after 20 plus people hoisted in tensos. The vassal prince's steward and servants had come over after hearing the ruckus. They were all dumbfounded and looked at this legendary young crown prince consort like she was a killer shark. The pitiful vassal prince screamed while hugging the chair, cousin-in-law, what do you want to do? What is the meaning of this? Ah, this fellow had actually hoisted over so many pigs as his return gift. Mo Kun had the urge to cry. This terrifying little cousin-in-law couldn't be thinking of making him eat all ten pigs in one day. Kiao Mu squeezed her chubby hands and looked expressionlessly at the wailing Mo Kun. What are you all standing there for? Get a move on. The guards that came in with the young crown prince consort silently gulped and quickly restrained the struggling Mo Kun. With both arms twisted behind his back, the big wooden armchair Mo Kun was hugging to naturally crashed to the floor. He was nearly about to cry. He looked at crown prince Mo with fear and trepidation, and his eyes had basically teared up. Cousin, cousin, you, you aren't stopping your wife, wh what does she want to do? Cousin, cousin, I I. I'm telling you people, don't be reckless. I I, I can't eat so much pork. I I, a bunch of nonsense. Kiao Mu chided, bring him away. Mo Lian facepamped speechlessly. He silently averted his gaze. Truthfully speaking, he didn't know that Kiao Kiao had prepared this. No wonder the little fellow had sternly told him to wait when they were leaving earlier. She had said that she was going to prepare a return gift for Mo Kun. He had wondered what kind of return gift it was. Yet his wife had actually prepared ten sos for Mo Kun. This truly was. Only her brain could think of such a thing. Kiao Kiao? 
Molian quietly called his wifey. Kiao Mu glanced at him and then expressionlessly turned her face. Let's go. Several guards escorted Mo Kun all the way to the kitchen area in the backyard. The vassal prince's steward chased after the group in dismay. He shouted between pants, Crown Prince Consort. What are you planning to do? Kiao Mu saw an empty corral from afar and waved her hand. She ordered coldly, put them all inside. Chapter 2208. The consequences are rather severe. Those twenty plus buff men walked up and then look at each other in dismay before quickly setting those ten sows inside. Where is he? The guards twitched their mouths, but they escorted the howling Mo Kun forward without a word. They bowed in greeting. Crown Prince Consort, MHM. The young Crown Prince Consort deadpanned, quickly escort the vassal Prince of Jianping inside. Yes. One of the guards twitched his mouth, suppressing his laughter. He announced calmly, Vassal Prince, please, what are you doing? What are you guys doing? What, what are you doing? The Vassal Prince of Jianping screamed tragically. The Vassal Prince of Jianping flailed his arms about and grabbed at anything he could. He clung to the fence as he got dragged inside. Molian Kiao Mu coldly watched as the Vassal Prince of Jianping clung onto the fence for dear life. The guards failed to escort him inside. The little fellow thus trotted up and gave his butterflying kick. Molian, bam. The vassal prince of Jianping pitifully tumbled headfirst into the pig pen and fell flat on his face. His teeth nearly got knocked out, and tears started streaming out his eyes. Shut the gate. At Kiaomu's order, the guards swiftly locked up the gate. Everyone, you can't do this. The steward threw himself at Molian's feet. The boy servant Tabi Ao was also frightened to death. He scrambled over with a pale face and kowtowed repeatedly toward Molian. Your Highness the Crown Prince, Your Highness the Crown Prince, spare our lives. Molian, this Highness didn't do anything. What was up with your expressions that said this Highness was utterly heartless? Kiao Mu leapt up onto the gate and looked coldly at the vassal Prince of Jianping who was scrambling in the pig pen. She waved her petite hand and a sparse powder drifted into the pig pen, she expressionlessly watched as the ten sows suddenly started getting agitated, they chased after the vassal prince of Jianping and butted at him crazily with their snouts, Kiao Mu turned around in distaste and hopped down from the gate, cumbering over several buckets of water, reporting to your highness the crown prince, reporting to the crown prince consort, th those, cough, those guests to the night banquet, ha have come, oh, Molian turned to look at the boy servant making the report. Who is there? Cough, Shunshan Prefecture's Prefecture Lord, and the sect leaders and elite disciples of the Six Yang faction, the Tanfu faction, and the other big factions. MHM, bring them over, Molian stated indifferently. Bring them over? You cannot, Your Highness the Crown Prince. The steward bawled out loud as he prostrated on the ground. How can I not? The host is over here. Didn't they come over for a banquet? A banquet is sure to have some entertainment. Crown Prince Mo waved his hand impatiently. What are you babbling for? Quickly bring them over. The steward. It was popular for the hosts of banquets nowadays to be the entertainer? Yes. The boy servant awkwardly left to carry out this order. The remaining people feared to even breathe a word. They silently lowered their heads and stood at attention on both sides. They wished that they were deaf so that they didn't have to hear all this. At this moment, everybody wished for nothing more than to be wooden stakes. This crown prince could even discipline the vassal prince of Jianping let alone small fry like them, who dared to stand out and provoke this hooda couple. Chapter 2209, An Amazing Return Gift, ha ha ha. Faction Master King Gwing of the Six Yang Faction walked over with several disciples. He glimpsed Crown Prince Mo from far away, and he hastily bowed in greeting. Your Highness the Crown Prince, nice to meet you, nice to meet you. Crown Prince Mo nodded lightly in acknowledgement. Faction Master King Wag's bald head was extremely dazzling in the light of the sunset. The middle-aged man who was with him had ordinary facial features, but his voice was especially sonorous. This one is one Yazi of the Tanfu faction. Greetings to your highness the Crown Prince of the Divine Province. Wu Jianyi followed his father and looked at Mo Lian and Kiao Mu with a complicated expression. These two people had given him a very, very deep impression at Liang Yuan Pharmacy. 
The people from Hongi Yuan Island had suffered terribly at this young couple's hands. He would never forget the madam's strange state just before she passed away. So it turned out that these two were the crown prince and crown prince consort. As people with such prominent identities, no wonder their actions were so aggressive, not afraid of attracting trouble. Wu Jianyi suddenly turned around. Sure enough, he saw Zhang Yuxiang standing behind her. Even at this time, the latter was glaring fixedly at Kiao Mu. Wu Jianyi had wanted to warn this Miss Zhang, but when he caught sight of what was happening inside the pig pen, his eyes bulged and the hairs on his neck nearly exploded. My heavens! Wasn't the person enclosed in the pig pen and running madly in circles the unlucky vassal prince of Jianping? The people present couldn't help twitching their mouths. This vassal prince of Jianping was actually so unlucky. At this moment, he was running around the inside of the pig pen like a madman. He panted heavily. The most terrifying thing was that there were actually ten so's running crazily after him. In their surprise, everybody silently exchanged queer glances. What was going on with the vassal prince of Jianping? Mo Kun had nearly lost half his life from running. He felt that the group of hogs chasing after him were too scary. He felt that should he stop, the group of pigs would probably tear him apart in the next second. Vassal prince, vassal. King Wayne quickly walked up and called out loud. He stared blankly as he watched the vassal prince of Jianping run past him. Faction master Wan Yuzi of the Tanfu faction quickly turned around and bowed hastily toward Mo Lian. Your Highness, might there be a misunderstanding between you and the vassal prince? Crown Prince Mo swept him a faint glance. What do you know? The crown prince consort is giving back a return gift. These unworldly people who are yelping from surprise. Mo Lian swept to look at Wan Yuzi and couldn't help but snigger. Ah, ah. The vassal prince of Jianping got freaked out from the group of hogs, and he wanted to leap up. Yet he didn't expect for a powerful force to come down on him while he was in midair. He nearly dropped into the middle of the group of hogs and he hastily hooked onto the gate with his hands. No, don't, don't. Let me out, little cousin-in-law. Quickly let me out. Cousin, cousin. Kiao Mu walked up and deadpanned icily. What? You don't like my return gift to you. Who would freak in like this kind of gift? Mo Kun was devastated and gripped the gate tightly, refusing to let go. There was no consideration for his image at this time. Chapter 2210 are you still going to give gifts to his highness? He had hung himself on the gate and kept trying to tuck in his legs. At this time, he sensed the group of hogs making circles beneath his feet. It was as if he lowered his feet any more, those hogs would be able to gnaw on his legs. It was too horrifying. Mokun shouted while crying, let me out, little cousin-in-law. What did I do wrong for you to do this to me? Let me out. Kiao Mu flared up when she heard this. You mean that you don't like my return gift? Mo Kun was just about to nod when he glimpsed Kiao Mu's chilly gaze. His heart trembled as he quickly shook his head furiously. I like it, I like it. Ah uh, no, no. I I, little cousin-in-law. You at Mo Kun was crying. He kept trying to bring his other leg up onto the gate by stomping against the floor. He was terror-stricken and his face had turned ghastly pale. Kiao Mu swept him a cold glance and asked him dryly, Are you still going to give gifts to the crown prince? No, I won't, I won't. Mo Kun had long pissed his pants. Never mind giving gifts, he wasn't going to give anything. Did he still dare? Wasn't it just giving his highness the crown prince a group of seductive beauties? Yet the crown prince consort gave him a group of sows as a return gift. This gift was truly novel compared to other people's return gifts. It was truly of a completely different manner. Kiao Mu nodded when she heard this. She glanced at the guard next to her and took out a thin piece of paper from her inner world. Have him sign it. That guard twitched his mouth. He hastily took the paper and brush and strode up to Mo Kun who was sprawled on the fence. He handed both the paper and brush to Mo Kun. Mo Kun was not in the state of mind to read through the piece of paper. He hastily signed it and wailed tearfully, Little cousin-in-law, Crown Prince Consort, Crown Prince Consort quickly let me go, Crown Prince Consort. He had promised her everything and signed his name. He had even apologized. So what did this devilish crown prince consort still want? Why wasn't she letting him go? Kiao Mu examined the paper he had signed and gave a nod. She shook the thin piece of paper in the air. Remember what you signed. 
Kiyomu spoke coldly, if people still plan to give this and that to the crown prince in the future, this crown prince consort guarantees that your return gifts will definitely satisfy you immensely. Everyone. So the crown prince consort was taking out her anger on the vassal prince of Jianping. After saying this, Kiyomu turned around and trotted back to Molian. Molian grasped her petite hand with a smile, and he headed outside. Are you happy now? Kiyomu? If he didn't let this little fellow vent, he would be the one to suffer. Thank the heavens that there was the vassal prince of Jianping. The little fellow should be feeling better now. Sure enough. Kiao Mu's expression had eased up. She reluctantly nodded. He's so weak that I don't even have the desire to lecture him. The crown prince. The steward and servant stared not stop the two of them from walking out. After waiting for them to walk further away, the steward then tearfully called for Arby out to rescue their master from the fence. By this time, the vassal prince of Jianping was lying limp on the ground. Both legs were shaking non-stop and he had wet his pants. Our dear Dunza was at a loss for words after watching this drama. The little lady was sure savage. Look at how much he freaked out the vassal prince of Jianping. As part of the peanut gallery, he found the thrill of watching quite addicting. Chapter 2211, What's the Price? Dunza pretended to show his concern and said, How are you, vassal prince of Jianping? Cough. Don't force yourself if you do not feel too well. Ah, you had better help the vassal prince back to his room. The faction master of Six Yang faction, King Guang, looked at the crown prince's back with a complex expression. This highness had actually shamed his own cousin in front of so many clan elders and sect leaders. It was evident that he was not easy to get along with. However, it made sense. The vassal prince of Jianping was really looking for trouble by challenging the identity of the divine province's crown prince. Not only did he nearly risk his life, he had also lost all face in front of everyone. The patriarchs all stood there awkwardly. They did not know whether they should immediately skedaddle or continue standing here in the background. Fortunately for them, Dunzu walked forward and helped up the discomposed vassal prince of Jianping with a smile. Vassal prince of Jianping, are you fine? Do I look fine? The vassal prince of Jianping snapped shrilly. He was in a crazed state and did not care at all about Dunzu and company. He only wanted to vent out all his wrath. His voice was so loud that it startled the patriarchs, and they all stepped back while furrowing their brows. The vassal prince of Jianping held on to the boy servant Arbiao's hand and got up shakily. His legs were still trembling uncontrollably. Mo Kun shouted, Mo Lian, Kiao Mu, I won't be letting you off. He would not let this matter end like this. That Mo Lian allowed his wife to actually treat him like this. He, he was definitely going to lodge a complaint with his father against him. This DMN Molian and DMN Kiao Mu, this black-hearted couple. He definitely wasn't going to let them off. Vassal Prince. Arbiao said despondently. His Highness the Crown Prince is difficult to deal with. We had better return to the Divine Province first. The Vassal Prince of Jianping slapped him and screamed indignantly. Shut up. Arbi Ao covered his face and backed away in fright. The vassal prince of Jianping pointed fingers and shouted, You all will pay for this. Oh, pay what? A cold voice came from beyond the crowd. Mo Kun did not expect that Mo Lian and Kiao Mu would actually come back after leaving. Mo Kun pissed his pants in fear on the spot, and he pushed the steward and Arbi Ao in front of him as cover. He hid his entire body behind the steward and Arby Ow. He only probed his head out halfway and screeched, You, you too. What do you still want? I'm warning you, don't be reckless. Don't act foolishly. Mo Kun screamed at the top of his lungs and croaked like a dying duck. Kiao Mu walked up to Mo Kun expressionlessly and beckoned to him with her finger. What do you want? Mo Kun's nerves tensed up. He clung to his steward's waist unwilling to let go. The old steward's face had already turned green. His waist was hurting from the vassal prince's grip. Bring him over. At Kiao Mu's order, several guards immediately swarmed up and rested Mo Kun's hands behind his back against his will. They escorted him over to Kiao Mu. Mo Kun's eyes bulged in horror, which, wh what did you do to me? Chapter 2212 can't take it. He had already discovered when he entered the pig pen that he couldn't muster up a single bit of spiritual energy, let alone jumping up, 
Even running away became difficult. Mo Kun was fearful. At that moment, he felt so minuscule in the world, weak like a tiny ant. It was like the other party could crush him with just a stomp. Little, little cousin-in-law, I, I was wrong. I know my mistake. Can you not make things difficult for me? I, I will not send cousin beauties anymore. Mo Kun bawled as he looked at Kiao Mu in terror. Anyone who sent the Crown Prince beauties after this were just blind fools. What kind of shrew did the Crown Prince marry? Look, he had only sent over a dozen beauties, yet she couldn't tolerate them. Shut up. Kiao Mu smacked his shoulder gruffly. That guy immediately sprawled on the ground with a flump. Kiao Mu grabbed his arm and yanked hard. Mo Kun screeched like a pig getting butchered. His arm got twisted backwards and raised high up. It hurt so badly. What are you screaming for? Kiao Mu smacked the back of his neck irritatedly. Shut up. Mo Kun quieted down. He sniffled only wanting to go back home and cry while hugging his dad. This wife that the crown prince had married was too fierce. Which man could stomach her temper? Arm, um, arm is, arm is breaking, it's breaking. Crown prince consort, it's breaking, breaking. New Wu Mo Kun felt like his arm no longer belonged to him. The pain from getting his arm twisted behind him kept coursing through his body. Kiao Mu gripped Mo Kun's arm and shook it hard. Clunk. A small box suddenly fell to the ground from Mo Kun's sleeve. Kiao Mu kicked that box up, and it landed in her hand. Ah, th this is. Crown Prince Consort, you can't snatch my slap. Kiao Mu swept her sleeve across his face without a word. Mo Kun fell down headfirst. Kiao Mu tossed the box in the air and looked at the person sprawled on the ground with contempt. You can make trouble for me anytime, but you had best be prepared to have your lifespan shortened. The little fellow threw the box into her inner world. She gave a snort and walked back to the crown prince without looking back. Mo Lian took her petite hand helplessly. What is inside that box? Just now? The little fellow had pulled him back halfway. It turned out that the reason was for this box in Mo Kun's sleeve. Kyukiu says that this is the seed of snow ginseng fruit. The little fellow glanced down at Mo Kun. She then looked up at Mo Kun and said, I'll plant it for you to eat. Mo Lian nodded. Is it good? MHM. Miss Kiao nodded. It tastes better than winter fruit. Eating it on a regular basis can increase normal people's lifespans. When we go back home during grandmother's birthday, I'll give it to her then. Okay. Mo Lian caressed her petite head with a smile. The young couple held hands and left for real this time. On the side, Zhang Yuxiang was emotional. She was just about to make a move when Wu Jianyi, who had been keeping an eye on her, pulled her back. Wu Jianyi lectured Zhang Yuxiang under his breath. What are you doing? This beach killed my mom. Should I not kill her for revenge? Chapter 2213. For you. You might as well wait two more days for the people from Hongi Yuan Island to arrive. Wu Jianyi said while creasing his brows, you will merely be humiliated if you charge up right now. When Zhang Yuxiang thought about the martial skills of Kiao Mu and Mo Lian's subordinates, she couldn't help but deflate. Even though Wu Jianyi was a useless coward, he did have brains. What he said right now was not wrong. If she rushed out right now to settle accounts with Kiao Mu and Mo Lian, it was certainly not advantageous to her at all. Zhang Yuxiang stopped indignantly. She glared resentfully at Kiao Mu and Mo Lian and watched unwillingly as they left. The vassal prince of Jianping had once again lost all his strength from the torment and lay limply on the ground. Ah Biao hastily scrambled over and reached out to help him up. Vassal, vassal prince, vassal prince, re-return to the divine province. M immediately returned to the divine province. The vassal prince of Jianping's lips trembled from anger. His entire body was shaking. He was going back to the divine province at once to find his dad. He didn't want to stay in this hellhole any longer. He wanted his daddy. He wanted to go back to the divine province. Ah Biao nodded repeatedly. Yes, yes, yes. But our special passageway, on only opens in two days. We're going back immediately. The vassal prince of Jianping nearly howled. The faction master of Tanfu faction, Wan Yuzi, jerked his eyelid. He couldn't resist saying. The vassal prince is tired. You had best bring him back to his room to rest. The vassal prince of Jianping's eyes abruptly turned round. He looked at Wan Yuzi, King Guang, and the rest murderously and screeched. 
How, how are you, you people here? Question mark. They, they had all seen his unsightly behavior, and his disgraceful situation when the crown prince consort forced him to the ground, it wasn't until now that the vassal prince of Jianping had recollected his wits and realized that all the patriarchs and elite disciples of Shanshan prefecture's patrician families had gathered here. King Guan quickly cupped his hands and said with a smile, Vassal Prince, King Wen will be leaving first, excuse me, please excuse us. All the patriarchs cupped their hands and bowed before quickly leaving with their disciples, they heard the vassal prince of Jianping's furious howl behind them, who, who brought them all over, who was it, regardless of how the vassal prince of Jianping was in hysterics. Kiao Mu and Mo Lian left the estate while holding hands. They walked back to their inn. Let's buy a house. Kiao Mu suddenly said, We'll have to stay here for several more days. It's not too convenient staying in an inn. Mo Lian's eyes lit up. He held Kiao Mu's petite hand up to his chest. Kiao Kiao, you want to experience married life with me right? You're overthinking it. Kiao Mu looked up at him and suddenly recalled what Fan Meng and Fanny Wu said that day. She tilted her head in contemplation, and then she took out a potted ink lotus flower from her inner world. For you, I planted it myself. Kiao Mu deadpanned. Mo Lian took the lotus flower she handed him. He looked at it admiringly and couldn't tear his gaze away. Kiao Kiao. You're giving this to me? Kiao Mu nodded. I planted it myself. There's only this one in the entire world. Do you like it? Mo Lian nodded emphatically. I like it. I like it. I naturally like it very much. Kiao Mu beckoned for him to bend down. Mo Lian blinked and bent down. What is it? Chapter 2214 Kiao Kiao's Confession Miss Kiao suddenly put her hands around his neck and pulled him down. She gave him a smacking kiss on the cheek. Mo Lian, I like you. All right, confession done. She gave him a gift and did her confession. Miss Kiao felt that she had completed an important mission and nodded in satisfaction. Afterwards, she let go and left the dumbstruck crown prince alone. She turned around and pattered away. The two of them had just walked out of the vassal prince of Jianping's front door. There were many pedestrians on the bustling street! Exclamation mark. The little fellow's confession was rather loud. That's why. The pedestrians had all turned to look at them with queer gazes. Kiao Mu quickly darted into an alley and knocked herself on the head. She had gone nuts. She didn't realize until after she confessed that she had done such a gutsy thing on a busy street in broad daylight. She was done for. It was all his fault for seducing her. He made her all muddle-headed. Kiao Mu cupped her burning cheeks and loitered around for a bit, just as she was about to turn around and look for Mo Lian. She felt a gust of wind behind her head. Someone was attacking the back of her neck. Kiao Mu's gaze turned cold. She swiftly evaded and jumped up onto the wall. Her eyes glinted coldly as she looked down at the person below. After missing this hit, that person didn't say anything and chased up onto the wall after her, attacking her face. This speed. Kiao Mu was startled. She turned and jumped down. Her long hair made a perfect arc in the air. After landing with a swish. Kiao Mu sprinted toward where Mo Lian was. However, two people soon appeared and sandwiched her from in front and behind. They attacked her chest and back ferociously. Surging spiritual energy bore down on her. Just as it was about to land on her body, Tung's figure abruptly appeared beside Kiao Mu. He crossed his arms to take the attacker's strike. Mo Lian had come swiftly after getting notified. He saw the strangers attacking Kiao Kiao at once and hollered. What are you guys doing? Those people seemed to have reservations after seeing him appear. They hastily exchanged glances. Seeing that this group of people was about to make a hasty retreat, Mo Lian dashed to Kiao Kiao. He had yet to scoop up his wifey when a large net hauled his Kiao Kiao up like a fish. She got taken away swiftly without a word. A core came from the sky. Mo Lian looked up furiously and saw a huge monstrous bird dragging away that net. After several flaps of its wings, it had vanished. Little Seven, Mo Lian shouted in a fluster. These people were kidnapping his wifey in front of him. Mo Lian leapt up onto the dragon's body and he swiftly chased after them with Tung and his men. After fifteen minutes, 
The still air in the alley rippled like water. That monstrous bird appeared in midair with the net in its claws. Chilean High appeared in the alley once more with his men. He beckoned for the monstrous bird to land in front of them with the net. Chilean High looked coldly at Kiamu through the net. He smiled at her sinisterly. It really isn't easy to catch you alone. Chapter 2215 All of a sudden, Kiao Mu looked expressionlessly back at him. This middle-aged man had taken advantage of Mo Lian's agitation to trick him into leaving. Actually, Chi Lian Hai had only used several invisibility talismans to hide everybody's presence, but with Mo Lian's astuteness, he was probably going to return in less than a minute. That's why! Exclamation mark. All right, immediately bring her away. Chi Lian Hai was also a prudent person. Even though he had tricked the crown prince of the divine province into leaving, he was clear that it wouldn't be for long. Chi Lian Hai's subordinates pointed at Kiao Mu with their weapons, warning her not to act recklessly. Chi Lian Hai sniggered, Don't worry, we don't want your life. We only want the crown prince consort to come along with us. Of course, you don't need to waste your energy breaking free of this net. Chi Lian Hai boasted complacently, not only can this net block your spiritual energy and presence, you have probably realized by now that you can't even use your spiritual conscious either. Kiao Mu looked at him icily. Bring her away. At Chi Lian Hai's order, the monstrous bird once again pulled the net up into the sky. Chi Lian Hai and his men had also swiftly summoned their spiritual beast mounts. Leaving with the monstrous bird, the group had only left for less than a minute when Mo Lian's figure once again appeared on the horizon. He returned back to the alley where Kiao Mu had been taken away and examined the empty alley sullenly. He subconsciously clenched his fists. Did Greenwood Guards Fangs you do this? Mo Lian shouted angrily, Go, go assemble all of Shanshan Prefecture's hidden guards and dig out Fang Su. After saying this, Mo Lian jumped onto Seventh Yan's back again and had him chase after Kiao Mu's presence. Sir Chi, it's bad. The pursuer is too fast. Chi Lian Hai's subordinate reported urgently. By this time, Chi Lian Hai also sensed Crown Prince Mo getting closer. He furrowed his brows and said, We clearly blocked off her presence. How is he tracking us so quickly? Who are you? Even though the net was swinging left and right in the wind, Kiao Mu still looked at Chi Lian Hai expressionlessly as she stood inside the net. Chi Lian Hai scoffed, The crown prince consort does not need to know who I am. You only need to know that your good days have come to an end starting today. Is that so? Chi Lian Hai smiled and opened a bottle of medicinal solution. He quickly poured the entire bottle into the red-beaked monstrous bird's mouth. The monstrous bird immediately cawed and flapped its wings even more vigorously. Its speed exploded as it flew twice as fast as before. Kiao Mu looked at them coldly and sized up. Chi Lian Hai, I have never seen you before. You don't need to try to get information from me. Chi Lian Hai said with a smile. I am merely bringing you back on orders. As for what will happen to you after that, you had better hope for the best. Kiao Mu calmly swallowed a pill and stared coldly at Chi Lian Hai. Are you confident of success? What? Could it be that the Crown Prince Consort is still able to retaliate at this time? Chi Lian Hai laughed at her complacently. This sky cicada net of mine isn't anything ordinary, let alone catching a measly spiritual cultivator like you. Even catching a grand spiritual cultivator is more than sufficient. Kiao Mu swept him a glance. Chapter 2216, Shock. Her hands were abruptly reinforced with a diamond talisman, and she sliced through the net like tofu. Rip. This sound caused the originally complacent Chi Lian Hai to jerk his eyebrow. Rip. After the sound of more tearing, Kiao Mu scurried right out from that net. She flipped onto the monstrous bird's back and smashed its big head with a punch. This solid punch that was reinforced with a diamond talisman promptly caused the monstrous bird to cry shrilly. It plummeted headfirst to the ground like a cannonball. Just as they were a foot from the ground, Kiao Mu's body abruptly flew up again in a parabolic arc. On the other hand, that monstrous bird crashed into the ground with a raspy cry. Its skull got smashed into bits upon impact, preventing any possibility of rescue. Kiao Mu floated in midair and looked coldly at that large bird that had met a violent death. 
She turned around and looked sardonically at the dumbfounded Chilianai. Chilianai, he didn't expect the crown prince consort to actually be able to get out so easily. This, this violent girl had, her actually, completely destroyed the sky cicada net. Ah, Chilianai felt stifled. It was suffocating him that he couldn't let it out, yet Kiaomu didn't wait for him to react, and she punched his belly ruthlessly. Chilianai was unable to take this hit. He flew out horizontally and crashed into several subordinates behind him. Chilianhai's subordinates had truly made a Herculean effort in order to catch Chilianhai. Even so, they had retreated many steps backwards to neutralize the impact from catching Chilianhai. After steadying himself, Chilianhai looked at Kiaomu in chagrin. He pressed his hand against his stomach and shouted tremblingly, You, you, this DMN little lady actually could actually still retaliate even after getting caught in the sky cicada net. He truly had underestimated her. Kiaomu extended her hand and waved a bronze pendant at him. Chilianhai's expression changed, and he reached for his waist. Sure enough, the bronze pendant at his waist was gone without his notice. Kiaomu looked over that identity pendant and looked up at Chilianhai. A cold smile formed on her lips. So you are from the Ani Prefecture. I didn't expect you all to be in the mood to come all the way to the Shunshan Prefecture from the Ani Prefecture to capture me. Chilianhai flung Chilianhai's identity pendant back. You can have it back. In any case, she had no use for it. Only Chilianhai and his group treated that lousy identity pendant with importance. Kiao Kiao. Kiaomu heard the crown prince's voice from afar. Her eyes lit up as she turned to look up at the sky. The crown prince was currently moving in her direction like a streak of lightning through the clear blue sky. In the blink of an eye, he had already arrived beside Kiaomu and hugged her tightly in his arms. His heart finally settled and he heaved a sigh of relief while holding her. Kiao Kiao. Kiao Mu reflexively soothed his chest with her hand. I'm fine. Chapter 2217, this is a one-hit KO. Molian truly had suffered from a big fright. In the blink of an eye, his wife had nearly gotten kidnapped in broad daylight. No one would be able to tolerate this. Kiao Kiao had just given him a flower and confessed in one moment and then she nearly got kidnapped in the next. It was already fortunate that the crown prince hadn't lost his mind on the spot when he helplessly watched that monstrous bird take the little fellow away. Luckily, he reacted in time and caught up to her kidnappers. Molian patted Giaomu's head. He still felt his heart pounding erratically at this moment. Hubby, Ani Prefecture sent these people over. Kiaomu glared at Chilianhai. People from the Ani Prefecture were also involved in the Holy Water Sect's extermination. She hadn't had the time to deal with them, yet who knew that they would first knock on her door to seek their deaths. Molian flung out a fire spirit, which hit a man behind Chilianhai. Just now, it was that man who held the net and aimed at his Kiaokiao's back with a dagger. That man got hit by the fire spirit without warning. He was struck flying and tumbled on the ground. Chilianhai looked back and couldn't help but marvel in shock at the crown prince's cultivation. All of his subordinates were at least level 7 spiritual cultivators. However, they had no means of resistance against the crown prince. You? Chilianhai's pupils contracted as he saw a streak of fire dart toward him like a gale. Chilianhai activated his defensive barrier with a grunt. However, the crown prince's purple flames made a strong impact. It was as if ten thousand fists had hit his chest, exploding in pain. The defensive barrier was simply unable to ward off this streak of fire and shattered on the spot. Chilianhai was also sent flying from this violent strike. He crashed into the wall behind him. That wall could not withstand such an impact and promptly crumbled into pieces. Chilianhai was half buried in the rubble and barely lifted up his body. He looked at the crown prince in horror. This crown prince was AC actually able to defeat him, a level 13 spiritual cultivator, in one strike. Chilianhai hastily summoned his spiritual beast, a spiritual magpie. He struggled to hop onto the spiritual magpie's back and urged it to flee. Roar! The cry of a dragon came from midair. Before Chilianhai could react, he sensed a strike aiming for his face. He had no time to evade and thus took a direct blow. Precisely speaking, 
Little Seven struck him down from the spiritual magpie with a flick of his tail. As for that unlucky spiritual magpie, how could it resist an ancient gold dragon? After getting howled at by Little Seven, it tucked in its wings and closed its eyes. It fell to the ground from midair and played dead. Little Seven spiraled around in the sky. As if covered in gold dust, he shone with a gold light wherever he went. After falling from midair, Chilean High fell down headfirst into the pile of rubble from the destroyed wall. Kiaomu swept him with a calm gaze and then turned her head with a snort. Serves him right. How dare he capture her and say that her good days were coming to an end. You're the one whose good days have come to an end. Starting from right now you are out of luck. Chapter 2218 an acute take. Chilean High struggled to get up from the rubble. He spat out several pieces of debris and stared at Molian and Kiaomu in humiliation. They had simply gone too far. Chilean High scrambled up from the debris and glared at Molian. You, you too, bam. Before he could finish speaking, Molian once again swept him flying, and he landed headfirst in the rubble. Chilean High after eating another mouthful of dirt. Why did the heavens not pity him and let him encounter this hoodoo? You, you can kill a soldier but not humiliate him. Chilean High once again struggled to get out from the pile of rubble. He howled, Crown Prince Mo, you, bam, bam, slap. Chilean High climbed out from the rubble and got smacked back in seven times in a row. The last time, he no longer had the strength to get up. He just lay in the rubble and coughed until his entire face was covered in dust. Don't mention that acute ache he was feeling. He had underestimated the enemy. Chilean High clenched his fists and found it hard to hide his indignation as well as his melancholy. Because of his overconfidence, the situation had developed into this state. Yet at this precise moment, Chilean High did not even have the courage to get back up. He knew that at this moment, Crown Prince Mo had crushed his courage completely. That bit of resolve that he had mustered had also been smacked flying. He just wanted to lie like this until the end of time. Unfortunately, he was not able to lie long before someone dragged his head out from the rubble. Chilean High felt like he was poultry awaiting slaughter. He got dragged out and thrown to the ground. Tongue was holding a sword and stepped on his back. He bent down and then turned to ask the Crown Prince and Kiaomu, Your Highness. Do you want to eliminate him right away? Molian looked at Chilean High and shook his head. Bring him over. Tung immediately dragged Chilean High to the crown prince and threw him to the ground like trash. Molian looked at Chilean High icily and suddenly sucked the latter's head into his palm. Chilean High's body started shaking in terror. He already knew what this terrifying man wanted to do to him. Soul search. He wanted to search his soul? How could he? No. Don't. Your Highness the Crown Prince, Your Highness the Crown Prince, SP spare my life, Your Highness the Crown Prince, I. Does your master think that this Crown Prince is very easy to bully? Crown Prince Mo looked down at Chilean High. In your people's eyes, this Crown Prince is just that easy to deal with? No, no. At this time, Chilean High was so terrified that his speech had become incoherent. His mind had blanked out and he did not have the energy to process what the crown prince was saying right now. He struggled in crown prince Mo's hand and kept shouting, Your Highness the crown prince, please calm your anger. Your Highness the crown prince, you can ask me anything. Th this humble one will definitely tell you everything without reserve or hiding anything. Molian looked at him coldly. Who are you to any prefecture's prefecture lord Guan Zotang? Th this humble one is the prefecture lord's personal attendant, and has served the prefecture lord for, for many years. That means you know him very well? Chapter 2219, Puppet Under Control. Yes. Yes. Molian nodded at him with a spurious smile. He looked at Kiaomu, who was leaning against him. The latter nodded in understanding. She took out a puppet curse and sent it into the area between Chilean High's eyebrows without a word. Normally, Kiaomu's puppet curse would be ineffective against Chilean High at her cultivation. However, because Chilean High was under Molian's control at this moment, it was all too easy for him to succumb now. Ah. Chilean High felt his conscious pool sting. Afterwards, it felt like he had lost his sense as his consciousness became clouded. What is your name? 
Kiamu asked coldly, Chilianhai, kneel, Chilianhai knelt obediently and prostrated piteously in front of them. The dozen Ani prefecture disciples who were originally kneeling on the ground backed away in terror at this sight. What, what was going on? General Manager Chi had actually, knelt down obediently. Tung and his men surrounded them at sword point. One of the men suddenly sprinted toward an opening. This person fled haphazardly with a pale face. Tung didn't even look at him and directly pierced his back through the heart. The person fell to the ground with a flump. Does a level 7 spiritual cultivator die so easily? Tung scoffed and directly speared the back of that person's head. The person that was lying on the ground shuddered and screamed tragically. This time, he was naturally dead as a doornail after getting speared through the head. He had originally wanted to play dead and find a chance to escape. Yet who knew that he would actually end up dead? The other people were also shaken when they saw Chi Lianhai's piteous obedience. They were aware that the crown prince and the crown prince consort must have used some strange methods. Yet their desire to flee was extinguished when they witnessed their companion's violent death. Chi Lianhai. Kiaomu recited his name coldly. Her expressionless face was tinged with a cold indifference. Do you know what I want you to go back and do? Chi Lian Hai kowtowed, expressing that he was ready to take orders. Kiao Mu nimbly made her way to Chi Lian Hai and looked at him icily. She bent down and whispered, I want you, to go back, and kill, Guan Zotang. The residence of Annie Prefecture's Prefecture Lord. Guan Yibo got blocked at the door by two guards. She was livid. I want to see my dad. I want to see my dad. Sixth young lady, my apologies. The Prefecture Lord is currently with Madame Hua. The Prefecture Lord has ordered that no one can bother him. Guan Yibo's face was flushed red, and her eyes turned moist. Let me in, I'll shoulder all the responsibility. I want to see my dad. I want. The two guards impatiently blocked Guan Yibo. Please conduct yourself with dignity, sixth young lady. You. Guan Yibo pointed at the two snobbish guards. She screamed hysterically, step aside. The two guards turned solemn and blocked Guan Yibo with their broadswords. Sixth young lady, please do not make things difficult for us subordinates. The prefecture lord has ordered that he will not be seeing anyone. My mum is about to die. I want dad to open the tower of wondrous treasures and give me the blood clotting cinnabar fruit to save my mum's life. The two guards couldn't help but scoff. Concubine Jiang has always been sickly and used black rank pills and above to extend her life. Chapter 2220, Begging for Medicine When has her body been in good condition? That's right, sixth young lady. You're worrying too much. Perhaps you'll discover when you return that concubine Jiang is feeling better. This time is different from before. Mum's symptoms are extremely severe. Apothecary Ga says that the blood clotting cinnabar fruit can save my mum. The blood clotting cinnabar fruit? Ah. The two guards shoved her back making her lose her balance. She fell back several steps. Sixth young lady, if you continue making trouble like this, we brothers will also be punished along with you. Isn't that so? Sixth young lady, please go back. Come back early tomorrow morning. Guan Yibo rushed up the stairs like crazy, and she hit those two guards in the chest with two fire spirits. However, as a minor level 1 spiritual cultivator, she was obviously not a match for two level 3 spiritual cultivator guards. One of the guards looked at her mockingly and gave a snort. He blocked the fire spirit with his palm. Guan Yibo's weak fire spirit lasted less than three seconds in the guard's palm before going out. That guard sneered, sixth young lady, you had better give up with your bit of spiritual energy. You know that you can't barge in. So what are still trying to do? We humble ones don't want to fight you. If we hurt you anywhere, we won't be able to answer to the prefecture lord. Right? Ha. Huh. The other guard also chortled. Sixth young lady. Please. Dad. 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 I beseech you for an audience. Dad. Dad. Guan Yibo charged up the stairs with all her might. However, the two guards shoved her and she fell back down several steps again. After this tussle happened for the third time, 
the guards had lost their patience and did not control their strength. One of them shoved her down the steps. Guan Yiba rolled down the steps twice before steadying herself. She stood up and saw the door to the prefecture lord's quarters open. Her father Guan Zhoutang was wearing a middle layer garment that showed his chest. His arm was around a young voluptuous woman who was exposing her neck and shoulders, and he looked down coldly on her from the top of the stairs. Guan Yibo. What are you doing? Guan Zhoutang berated. The voluptuous woman in his arm wriggled her slim waist and put her hand on Guan Zhoutang's chest. She looked down with a smile at the disheveled Guan Yibo, who had fallen on the steps. What sixth young lady? She was inferior to even a dog. The woman looked at Guan Yibo with ridicule before completely nestling against Guan Zhoutang. Dad, please bestow the blood clotting cinnabar fruit to save my mother. Guan Yibo got onto her knees and shuffled up the stairs, Dad, nonsense. Guan Zhoutang stared coldly at his youngest daughter, do you know what the blood clotting cinnabar fruit is? Guan Zhoutang scoffed at this daughter of his, that is a divine rank medicine, divine rank, they're only this single one in the entire Guan clan, that is a medicine that can save one's life, how can it be used on that good for nothing mother of yours, go back, don't speak such nonsense in the future, dad. Guan Yibo crawled up several more steps, dad, this daughter can do anything, just please, bestow the blood clotting cinnabar fruit to save my mother, ha. Huh. Guan Zhoutang sneered at her, chapter 2221, abandoned, who do you think you are, your gifted eldest sister, as a mere level 1 spiritual cultivator, what can you do for the clan, go back to your room and stay there, don't come out and make a spectacle of yourself, dad, Guan Yibo cried heartrendingly, hey, uh, sixth young lady, you really are not sensible, Madam Hua writhed her slim snake-like waist and pointed at Guan Yibo with her slender finger. The Lord has been troubled during this period of time, as his daughter, even if you don't help share the clan's responsibilities, how can you keep annoying the Lord with these trivial matters? All right, all right, in consideration of your young age, the Lord won't hold it against you. You had better hurry back to your courtyard, Dad, Dad. Guan Yibo crawled forward but was once again stopped by the two guards. Escort the sixth young lady back. Guan Zhoutang flicked his sleeve as he left while holding Madam Hua. He said coldly, don't hold back, throw her out. Sixth young lady, please. After receiving orders, the two guards treated Guan Yibo with even less respect. The two of them shoved Guan Yibo down the stairs and remarked loftily, TSK, how can a sickly, Good for nothing concubine hope to use the blood clotting cinnabar fruit, dream on, dad, dad, please save my mother's life, dad. Guan Yibo's tears had clouded her sight, she stared unwaveringly at Guan Zhoutang's back, and her indignation turned into intense hatred, Guan Zhoutang, you're heartless and ungrateful, if my mom didn't support you with the entire Jiang clan, resulting in the Jiang clan's demise, would you be enjoying today's vast riches, Guan Zhoutang? You aren't human. Guan Zhoutang stopped and turned around to roar. Are you people dead? Gag her and take her down. Give her a good beating. Yes, Prefect you lord. Several nefarious guards rushed out and dragged Guan Yibo away. They threw her on the steps and started flogging her with a rod. Guan Yibo stared hatefully up the steps at her father Guan Zhoutang and started laughing out loud. Guan Zhoutang, you will get your just deserts. The entire Guan clan will receive judgment. You cruel and unscrupulous person. You will die a miserable death. Someone gagged Guan Yibo with a filthy rag as they flogged her heavily with a rod. Several hits had already turned her black and blue. She was bleeding non-stop. Boa, Boa. A skinny maid servant was supporting a feeble woman who couldn't even walk steadily. Boa. When the woman saw the state her daughter was in, she wailed and struggled free of the young maid servant. She lunged over with a miraculous strength and hugged her daughter tightly. The heartless and barbaric guards did not care and continued to strike down on the mother and daughter duo. MFMPH, MFMPH. Guan Yibo flipped her long, bloodied hair as she turned her body to protect her mother. She withstood the repeated strikes from the rod. Boa. Don't hit my boa. The woman struggled to protect her daughter. 
but her cultivation was too low. Guan Yivo continued to protect her beneath her body. Guan Zhotang merely looked at the mother and daughter duo coldly. He then left while holding on to Madame Hua's slender waist. He turned a deaf ear to their pitiful cries. In any case, he had many children including those who were gifted geniuses. A mediocre daughter like Guan Zhotang was dispensable. Chapter 2222, Begging Bitterly, Seven Days Later The beginning of the first month, in the depth of winter, the entire Annie prefecture was enveloped in a cold white mist. On the bustling main street, a seemingly unremarkable carriage drove along the prosperous and lively street toward the official mansion. Just as the carriage reached the end of the main street, a pale hand lifted up the carriage curtain. She gazed past the moving crowd at the entrance to a pharmacy. A group of people had congregated there and were gossiping while pointing fingers at a kneeling girl. What's going on? This girl had come before dawn and wishes to buy from the Liang Yuan pharmacy on credit. But the pharmacy isn't a charity. Shopkeeper, please bestow a blood clotting cinnabar fruit. I can work for the pharmacy for the rest of my life to repay this debt. The girl shuffled forward on her knees while shouting at the people inside pharmacy. There were scars on her arms, and her face was extremely pale. It seemed like she had been beaten, and her body looked to be covered in injuries. An elderly shopkeeper in his fifties came out from the pharmacy's side door and sighed, Miss, please return, our pharmacy does not need help at this time. Shopkeeper, please have mercy. My mom is waiting waiting for medicine to save her life. My mom, miss, please do not make us, do what we are unable to. The blood clotting cinnabar fruit you are speaking of is a divine rank medicine. Not only does our pharmacy not have it, this entire capital city of the Ani prefecture, including the pill house, may not have it. Besides, the blood clotting cinnabar fruit is priceless. If our Liang Yuan pharmacy has this divine rank medicine, it will be our pharmacy's most prized treasure. How could we give it out so easily? Miss, please return, shopkeeper. Please save my mother. The girl cowed out heavily and sobbed. Please, shopkeeper, I beg of you. A young sir draped in a pure white fox fur robe walked out from the pharmacy. The moment this person appeared, it was as if the surroundings had lit up. His graceful bearing was indescribably peerless and elegant almost otherworldly. Young sir. The young sir slowly raised his hand to stop the shopkeeper from speaking. He glanced at the girl and said coldly, we do not have what you seek. There is no need to kneel here and waste your time. The shopkeeper didn't have the heart to speak harshly, and he advised with a sigh, miss, our young sir is right. Instead of wasting your time here, you had better return quickly. Perhaps you will be able to see your mother once more. The person kneeling in front of the Liang Yuan pharmacy was naturally Guan Yibo. At this moment, she looked up tearfully at that handsome young sir, and then she looked at the shopkeeper. Sorrow engulfed her heart, and she sat there in a daze. Was her mom really going to leave her? From now on, she would be alone in this world, with no other family. Stop. This chilly voice startled the carriage driver. His arms shook as he quickly pulled the reins to stop the horses. After some shuffling noises, a little lady wrapped in a scarlet cape walked down from her carriage. She stood from afar and gazed at Guan Yibo. It had started snowing lightly. The little lady just looked at the kneeling girl through the light snow. Chapter 2223 Savior. Mo Lian stepped down from the carriage and held her chilly hand. He asked softly, Kiao Kiao, what's wrong? Kiao Mu stared at the girl for a long time, but her mind had wandered off. She stood there for such a long time that she was practically about to turn into an exquisite snow sculpture. She stood there helplessly in a daze. It was as if she were the only person left in the entire world. The light snow landed on her body, face, hair and neck. Her sight seemed to ripple and undulate. It let her see herself from the very, very distant past. That small figure was also kneeling in front of the pharmacy and begging the shopkeeper to bestow a panacea and take a look at her mother who was on the verge of death after giving birth. She had been so insignificant back then. So pitiful and pitiable, so negligible. It was as if she were only a speck of dust in this world, so weak and fragile that it made one tremble from fear. Upon contact, the bubble in front of her would shatter into dust and drift off into the wind. Are you cold? 
Molian found her mood to be unstable. He pulled her into his arms and massaged her petite hands. He breathed hot air on them. Are you feeling stuffy? Kiao Mu's black eyes quivered when she looked at Molian. She reached out and touched his face with her chilly hand. Are you cold? Yes. He gripped her petite hands and breathed hot air on them. No matter how cold they are, I can warm them up. Even if it is during the coldest time of winter when everything has withered, as long as I am here. Kiao Kiao will never have to fear the cold. Kiao Mu smiled from the bottom of her heart. She pursed her lips and chided, sweet talking. How so? Molian circled his arms around her and brought her into his embrace. Do you want to go back into the carriage? Okay. Kiao Mu flicked her finger, and two streaks of light flew out into Guan Yibo's hands. The young sir watched her go with a profound gaze. He couldn't help but grip his left hand tightly. Actually, he had noticed her the moment she alighted from the carriage. He watched her gaze at Guan Yibo, watched her hold hands with and embrace Molian as if there was no one else there, whispering sweet nothings. He watched her be oblivious to his existence. He watched her turn around and leave after gifting medicine, not sparing him a single glance. It was just like he, Ding Yun, did not exist at all in this world. Several shouts came from the crowd. Just as everyone's gazes were on the medicinal bottle in Guan Yibo's hands, only young Sir Ding was watching the little lady's frail back as she got helped into the carriage. Oh goodness, miss. This, this is. This is. It's the blood clotting cinnabar fruit. The shopkeeper yelped in surprise as he pointed at the translucent red fruit in Guan Yibo's hands. Which? Which master gave you it? The shopkeeper hastily looked around. At this time, everyone was peering around with the shopkeeper. Their gazes landed on the carriage that had reached the corner of the street. Savior, please wait a moment. Savior, please leave me your name. Yibo will surely repay you in the future. Guan Yibo chased after the carriage emotionally. However, she only caught glimpse of a fleeting red sleeve. Chapter 2224 never changing. The carriage quickly picked up speed and departed. The shopkeeper ran after them for a bit before stroking his beard and praising the blood clotting cinnabar fruit in Guan Yibo's hands. As expected of a divine rank medicine. Miss, quickly store it in this jade box. You must not let the medicinal effects dissipate. Thank you, shopkeeper. Guan Yibo bowed gratefully toward the shopkeeper and placed the blood clotting cinnabar fruit which was still warm with the scent of fresh dirt, into the jade box. Miss, could you allow this old man to appraise the panacea inside this small medicinal bottle? Shopkeeper, please. Guan Yaiba handed the medicinal bottle over to the old shopkeeper, who took it with both hands. When the shopkeeper unplugged the bottle, everybody smelled a medicinal fragrance wafting through the air that instantly refreshed their minds. The shopkeeper's expression turned solemn and he carefully poured out a pill. He nodded repeatedly as he examined it, evaluating, a healing medicine that treats both internal and external injuries. Consuming one pill will heal all one's internal injuries, while crumbling it into powder and applying it externally will heal all one's external injuries. Even though it is only a black rank pill, its effects are hundreds thousands of times better than an ordinary black rank pill. It is not exaggerating to call it a heaven rank pill. Miss, quickly put it away and hurry back home to cure your mother. The shopkeeper hastily put the medicine back into the bottle and urged her to leave quickly. Guan Yibo nodded motionally with an MHM. She thanked the shopkeeper and then quickly ran back home. This miss truly is extraordinarily lucky. The shopkeeper nodded with a smile. Upon turning around, he saw their young sir look coldly into the distance with a frosty atmosphere around him. His heart jolted inexplicably. The young sir had been fine just earlier. How come he was like this now? Young sir Ding did not say a word and walked back into the pharmacy. His slender back figure seemed rather lonely. The shopkeeper was afraid to say anything to trigger the young sir's bad mood. He quickly followed him inside and opened up shop for business. From far away, the shopkeeper heard a muffled sound from a pillar in the corridor. He was surprised when he indistinctly heard the young sir murmur, Is he? That good? He? The shopkeeper feared to ask, and so he busied himself calling the shop assistants to get to work. Inside the carriage, 
Kiao Mu leaned against the window and looked at the drifting snow outside. She propped her cheek on one hand and stretched the other outside to catch a lustrous snowflake. When she pulled her hand back inside, she had morphed this snowflake into a transparent hexagonal ice crystal. All right, stop playing. Come over and drink some hot tea. Mo Lian looked at her helplessly. He lifted her into his lap and put a warm cup of tea into her hands. Kiao Kiao. Did you recall your bad nightmares just now? Kiao Mu nodded slowly while holding the toasty cup of tea. The me back then had wished that a savior could appear in my life and give me a helping hand. Unfortunately, even until the day she died, she was still alone. Mo Lian looked at her with a deep gaze and smiled. You don't need one now. Our future is in our own hands, isn't it? Yes. Kiao Mu put her warm hand on his face. She blinked and said, Mo Lian, that day when I said I like you, I truly meant it from the bottom of my heart. I know. Mo Lian chuckled as he grasped her hand and put it to his lips. He kissed it gently. Kiao Kiao. I also like you. These feelings will never change till the end of time. Chapter 2225. Duan Spining. The Ultramarine Province. Phoenix Imperial City. White snow danced and blanketed the entire city. Inside the spacious but solitary Chi Palace, Duan, who was dressed simply, leaned against the window and looked out into the horizon for a long time. It was a mystery what he was thinking about. His personal junior eunuch quickly walked inside and exclaimed in surprise, Your Highness, you have already stood at the window for nearly two hours. The junior eunuch asked, Would you like Xiaoxi to bring you food? Duan looked at him indifferently and waved his hand. I'm not hungry. You can go take a break. He only wanted to be alone for a while. The junior eunuch quickly said, Your Highness, you haven't eaten for nearly the entire day. You can make any requests of Xiaoxi. Duan was annoyed from his nagging and left the window, sitting down at the table. All right, just brew some tea. Your Highness, why are you so naggy? Duan glared at him. With my cultivation, I won't starve to death even if I go two weeks without a grain of rice. What are you worrying for? Xiao Zi pressed his lips together and exited pitifully. Before he could retreat from the chamber, a dignified and solemn looking maid servant hurried inside. The maid servant glanced at Xiao Zi from the corner of her eye. She didn't ask anything even though he looked deflated. Subsequently, she curtsied and said, Your Highness. The name list for the winter hunt has come out. Your Highness also has to accompany His Majesty on this outing. There is less than 20 days before departure. We will need to quickly prepare everything needed. Xiao Xi pursed his mouth and rolled his eyes. Nani Yu Anzun, with His Highness's cultivation, what is there that isn't in his inner world? What is there to prepare? The maid servant glared at Xiao Xi insolent. Mind how you speak to His Highness. Duan glanced at the junior eunuch who was pursing his mouth. He couldn't help but chuckle, and tossed down the book he was holding. All right, all right, set the table for a meal. This lad was rather gutsy to be bantering about his master. Xiaoxi giggled and quickly acknowledged his orders. He ran out to get food ready to be served. Your Highness, it is a rather long journey to the destination for the winter hunt. Yuanzen lowered her head and said, Midwinter has set in and the snow is making travel difficult. Your Highness does not have many people to attend to your needs, so this maid servant will draft up a list of names tomorrow. Your Highness can decide who you want to bring with you, or if you need to add any people or supplies. All right, you don't need to do all that. Duan waved his hand listlessly. He shook his head and said, just you and Xiaoxi will suffice. How can that do? Yuanzen said disapprovingly. Since your highness doesn't care to deal with these matters, this maid servant will decide the list of people who will go. You have to at least bring guards and attendants with you at the very least. Duan didn't even process what Yuanzen was rambling about. He merely propped his chin on his hand and looked far into the distance at the snow outside the window. He was a bit concerned. How long will the snow in the ultramarine province fall? Duan muttered. Yuanzen was startled. She turned to look outside the window and said softly, Each time, the heavy snows in the ultramarine province will last for a week. It is quite a long time. When I was on the Saikong planet, I had heard of this saying. The divine province is Phoenix Tree. 
the ultramarine province is flower of the snow territory, and the nether province is ghostly grass respectively live in the hottest, coldest, and most poisonous lands. Chapter 2226 So alike, it is said that if you gather these three divine rank medicines and then add a sacred rank blood million fruit to the mix, you will be able to refine the spirit returning pill that can reverse life and death. Duan propped his chin and looked up at Yuanzun. Is this true? Yuanzun was taken by surprise and then contemplated before answering. I have indeed heard of these medicines. However, it has only remained a legend after all these years. This prince has heard that the winter hunt this time will be in the Arctic, the icebound snow territory. If I can find that snow territory divine flower, then it'd be perfect. Yuanzun couldn't help but sigh seeing her master getting lost in his thoughts. This maid servant heard that the snow territory divine flower only lives in the coldest places. Touching it occasionally is fine, but touching it repeatedly will trigger it. It will open up all its petals and spit out all the ice spikes within. Once they engulf a person, they will not even leave behind a single scrap of their corpse. Consequently, it is extremely difficult to pick the snow territory divine flower. Furthermore, this kind of divine rank medicine is usually just a rumor. In reality, no one has ever acquired one. Duan breathed out and commented with a spurious smile while still propping his head. So truly alike. Covered with spikes that reap lives without warning. As Duan spoke, he seemed to think of something and smiled. Yuanzhen did not understand what Duan was talking about and observed him for a bit. Seeing that Duan did not say anything else, she curtsied and slowly retreated. The sky had already darkened completely. The various candle holders in the Tji Palace and the palace lanterns lit up the interior. Best novel online free at Vi. Green glazed tiles covered vermilion buildings, with luxurious pavilions scattered throughout. Layer after layer. They were situated in picturesque disorder. The glow from the palace lanterns set off the setting sun reflected on the winter lake. The darkness in the distance slowly draped over the watchtower and permeated the sky. Mikey Ao's section break. The residence of Annie Prefecture's Prefecture Lord. After sending away the clingy Madame Hua, Annie Prefecture's Prefecture Lord Guan Zhoutang sat in the main hall and looked sullenly at the middle-aged man who was kneeling in front of him with a hanging head. Why aren't you saying anything? This subordinate has failed in his mission. Please punish this subordinate. Guan Zhoutang looked at him coldly. Forget it. This prefecture lord has also underestimated the enemy this time. You first get up. Thank you, prefecture lord. Chi Lian Hai stood up while still lowering his head. This prefecture lord has recently acquired a spiritual breakthrough pill. Guan Zhoutang took out a porcelain bottle from his inner world and said exuberantly. First set everything aside and wait until this prefecture lord has advanced to level 14 spiritual cultivation. Congratulations, prefecture lord. Chi Lian Hai congratulated him expressionlessly. Unfortunately, Guan Zhoutang was absorbed in joy and did not realize that there was something off about Chi Lian Hai. Go keep watch outside. Yes. Chi Lian Hai walked out and closed the door. He turned around and looked coldly at the indistinct figure of Guan Zhoutang through the window. At the same time, inside the housing compound of Annie Prefecture's official mansion, Guan Yiba had run back emotionally, and she hastily helped up her mother, who was clinging on to her last breath from the bed. She instructed the maid servant to support her mother as she took out a translucent red fruit from her inner world. Guan Yibo emotionally fed the small fruit into concubine Jiang's mouth. Mom, quickly swallow it, mom. Guan Yibo urged hastily in her mind. Chapter 2227. The Guan clan is in trouble. After a short while, concubine Jiang, who was at her last gasp, had clearly improved. Her complexion had turned rosy, and her heartbeat also got stronger. Guan Yibo smiled from the bottom from her heart when she saw this. She hugged her mother tightly in her arms and cried out, Mother, mother, it's great. Everything is fine now. You'll be okay, mother. Uck, cough, 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 cough. Concubine Jiang slowly came to. When she saw her daughter close up face, she was startled. She then immediately started crying, Boa, my poor child, have we both died already? You're not allowed to speak nonsense, mom. 
Guan Yiba hastily patted her hand and smiled, Are you feeling much better now? Once I apply medicine on your wounds, you'll be able to completely heal. Concubine Jiang couldn't help but be surprised. I, I do indeed feel that my body is much more at ease. Boa, what medicine did you feed me? It's the blood clotting cinnabar fruit. What? Concubine Jiang couldn't help but exclaim in shock. She hastily grabbed Guan Yibo's arm and exhorted, Boa, you, you didn't do anything silly and go steal from the Tower of Wondrous Treasures to cure my illness, right? Guan Yibo hastily assured, Mom, don't worry, this medicine has nothing to do with the Tower of Wondrous Treasures. When Guan Yibo recalled how heartlessly Guan Zotang had treated her, she couldn't resist sneering. There is nothing for us to say to the Guan clan from here on out. Before concubine Jiang could ask her daughter what happened, the latter suddenly stood up. She quickly darted to the entrance and peered out the window cautiously. What's wrong? It seems like some place outside has caught fire. Guan Yibo was puzzled and peered out the window again. This time, she saw that the area around the Tower of Wondrous Treasures seemed to have been set ablaze. Guan Yibo did not feel any sympathy at all and merely looked at the blazing fire for a long time. Afterwards, she quickly walked back to her mother. Mom, it's not safe outside. Let's put the lights out and go to sleep. No matter what happens after this, don't get up. The young maid servant that waited on concubine Jiang was trembling in fear. Guan Yibo had no leisure to take care of the young maid servant's mood, and she extinguished the lamps in the room with a wave of her hand. The three of them each found a place to shut their eyes and rest. However, concubine Jiang's bed was the only place to lie down in this room. The young maid servant curled up by the bed, while Guan Yibo leaned against a corner of the room and shut her eyes. It wasn't until late into the night that the entire Guan clan seemed to have been ignited by firecrackers. It had gotten noisy outside. There were the sounds of footsteps everywhere, and the noise even extended into their housing compound. The sounds of knocking were suddenly heard. Guan Yiba pressed against her injured left arm. She stood up and opened the door. The sound of the door creaking open was especially piercing in the desolate night. The steward sized her up with furrowed brows, and his gaze landed on Guan Yibo's injured arms. Where is concubine Jiang? What do you people still want to do? Guan Yibo asked coldly, Mother has only just fallen asleep. Do you want a sickly invalid to get up and greet you? The steward raised up his lamp and shone it into the room. Chapter 2228 It's bad for the Guan clan. He saw that concubine Jiang was wrapped up in a thin blanket, showing only a ghastly pale face. Humphrey. The steward snorted and said brusquely, A thief has just been to the Tower of Wondrous Treasures. If Sixth Young Lady discovers anything, Remember to immediately report it. You must not act independently on your own. The cultivation of the thief this time is rather high. Guan Yibo looked coldly at this snobbish steward and did not say anything else to him. Just as the steward turned around, Guan Yibo bluntly slammed the door shut. It infuriated the steward so much that he turned around and glared at the door. He had the urge to smash it open again. How dare the unfavored sixth young lady lose her temper with him. She simply didn't know how recklessly she was acting. He'd make sure she would suffer in the future. Head steward who, where should we go next? We're going back. Steward who snapped. We're going back to check the Tower of Wondrous Treasures. Head steward, head steward. Suddenly, a frantic shout came from the meandering path. Soon, one of the official mansion's servants hurried to this head steward who and nearly tumbled to the floor. Head steward, it's awful, it's awful, you're awful. Head steward who kicked that boy servant angrily, quickly spit it out. Don't just be shouting all day. The boy servant's waist hurt from getting kicked, but he dared not retaliate. He hastily nodded while saying obsequiously, head steward who, just now you ordered this humble one and the guards to take an inventory of the items in the Tower of Wondrous Treasures. We subordinates discovered. Everything on the third floor and above, has, has, has all disappeared. What? The items on the third floor of the Tower of Wondrous Treasures and above were mostly curious treasures black rank and higher. There were forging materials, pills and herbs, as well as countless spiritual weapons and cultivation techniques. Basically, 
The Guan clan's entire fortune was inside. Head steward who jumped up and hastily rushed toward the Tower of Wondrous Treasures. He cursed while running, didn't I have all of you stay there and keep watch? What happened? Have you contacted the prefecture lord yet? After hearing the voices in the courtyard getting farther away, Guan Yibo waited for a while longer before opening the door. She looked coldly at the desolate courtyard. By this time, Concubine Jiang was completely fine getting out of bed. She hastily got up and walked to Guan Yibo. She held her arm and asked, Boa, what happened? Something really had happened to the Tower of Wondrous Treasures. Guan Yibo couldn't help but snigger. Just now, she had purposely not used that healing medicine so as to deliberately let head steward who see her injuries. Today, the Guan clan was in disarray. It seemed like someone had infiltrated the Tower of Wondrous Treasures. If her injuries had suddenly vanished, she would definitely be head steward whose crucial investigation target. Mom. Guan Yibo quickly walked to her bedside and looked at the scars on her body. She said quickly, you don't need to get rid of these for the moment. The Guan clan is in trouble, but this has nothing to do with us, Guan Yibo said with a cold smile, we only need to remember to avoid getting implicated. At the same time, Kiao Mu was under the influence of an invisibility talisman. She held Mo Lian's hand as she made a round through the Tower of Wondrous Treasures. She suddenly came to a halt. Chapter 2229 So Ruthless, Kiao Kiao, Mo Lian got close and asked in a low voice, did you see something? Kiao Mu raised her hand and covered his mouth. She whispered, be quiet. Mo Lian blinked and pulled her petite hand away from his mouth. He held her hand and whispered, we're being thieves right now. Kiao Mu nodded and pulled her hubby upstairs. At this time, the fire outside the building was burning fiercely. Several dozen people were rushing inside and outside the building. It was very rowdy with people both putting out the fire and saving items from the fire. An attendant who was getting on in years ran inside and wailed while slapping his thigh, it's over, it's over, it's over, it's over, it's over. After seeing the empty second floor, the old servant fell limply to the floor. Oh my goodness, this thief is truly hateful. They've actually emptied out the entire floor. This bastard thief. Ah, how am I supposed to explain this? Head steward who, what should we do now? Head steward who? Scram, scram. Quickly report to the prefecture lord. What are you people still standing here for? Scram. Head steward who kicked the boy servants butts and had them quickly go report to the prefecture lord. However, if they really went to report this to the prefecture lord at this point in time, they would only die. None of the boy servants were truly stupid. None of them moved and just fell to the floor while shouting. Head steward who was so livid that he was hovering between life and death. He stepped hard on a boy servant's foot. Quickly inform the prefecture lord. Kiao Mu had been standing beside that boy servant. She was going to walk over when Mo Lian pulled her to his side. He comforted her gently. You're not allowed to go over. He spoke softly into her ear. His voice brushed her face and his hot breath seemed to send an electric shock through her body. He was closing in on Kiao Mu's face. She found her face hot for some reason and put her petite hand against his chin to push away his handsome face. Why did you push me? He couldn't resist chuckling. Yet the more she pushed, the closer this guy clung to her. He had caught her up in his arms and hugged her tightly. Hot. The little fellow huffed as she stuck her hands out and grabbed a fistful of his hair. Don't yank. Mo Lian took her hands and skeezed them. He chuckled. Your hubby won't be handsome if you yank him bald. Kiao Mu twitched her mouth and squirmed in his embrace. Be quieter. They've nearly discovered us. Let them. Mo Lian was indifferent. You had even wanted to go over just now. Kiao Mu harumphed. She had indeed wanted to go over and kick that steward for being so abusive. If you kick him, we'll get exposed. He tucked a lock of hair behind her ear and said a smile. Kukiu says that there is something strange about this place. Do you want to waste all our previous effort? This guy was so abominable today. How come she felt like her face was giving off steam right now? Kiao Mu harumphed and snuggled in his embrace. If you keep fooling around, I'll toss you into Paradise Planet. Crown Prince Mo blinked aggrievedly and whispered into her ear. Kiao Kiao. Do you really want to throw me? Kiao Mu. This peerless devil was so awfully despicable. Chapter 2230. 
misfortunes never come alone. Molian held in his laughter and pulled her to the side to avoid the boisterous activity of the people from the Annie prefecture. At this time, the Tower of Wondrous Treasures was filled with hustle and bustle. Hence, they naturally did not attract attention when they avoided people and were whispering while invisible. Head steward who, we have also checked upstairs. It's, it's all empty. Besides the first floor, the five floors above have all been emptied. Head steward who, exclamation mark. When Kiao Mu watched the crowd buzzing around like headless flies, she couldn't help but find it funny. She looked up at Mo Lian, who was currently looking down at her with a smile. He whispered into her ear. The old man will definitely go to inform Guan Zotang in person. We just have to wait. As expected, after lingering around for a bit, he couldn't stand it anymore and hurried to the prefecture lord's residence to report the situation. Just as head steward who arrived at the prefecture lord's residence, he had yet to talk to the guards when he heard a woman's shrill calls for help from within. Madam Hua ran out from the bedchamber with disheveled hair and messy clothes. She shrieked, someone, someone come quickly, come quickly. Head steward who and several guards came up at the same time and quickly stopped the screaming Madam Hua. Madam, what's wrong? Madam Hua shouted in horror, quickly, quickly. The prefecture lord, bam. The door to the bedchamber suddenly got kicked open from the inside. A figure stumbled out from the open door. He clutched his head and roared, Prefecture, Prefecture Lord. Head steward who quickly identified the bloodied person that stumbled out as their Prefecture Lord Guan Zotang. At this moment, Guan Zotang was in a sorry state. Not only was he covered in blood, his eyes also seemed to have been pierced by something sharp. He shouted in a frenzy with disheveled hair hanging around his shoulders. He held on to the wall as he stumbled around. The guards backed away in fright, afraid to go up and support him. Ah! Guan Zotang clasped his hands together, and all the spiritual energy in his body surged out like a tsunami. The raging spiritual energy knocked the guards flying. They got thrown to the floor and coughed up blood falling unconscious. Guan Zotang's eyes were filled with blood, and he could no longer see anything. He clutched his head and looked toward Head Steward who with a distorted expression, Head Steward whose heart was about to jump out from fright. Even though he knew that Guan Zotang wasn't able to see him at all right now, all his hairs were standing on end just getting stared at by those bloody eyes. Prefecture, Prefecture Lord, how are you, Prefecture Lord? Head steward who did not know what had happened. He withstood his tingling scalp and reached out tremblingly to support Guan Zotang. Ah! Guan Zotang roared and flung away head steward whose arm. He roared at the sky. I'm gonna kill you. Kill you. Prefecture lord. Prefecture lord. Head steward who looked at where Guan Zotang was pointing. After a moment. Quick. Quick. Quickly. Head steward who urged a group of guards that had rushed over to search the prefecture lord's room. Soon, the guards carried out a dead person from the room. Head steward who couldn't help but be shocked. Wasn't this Chi Lian Hai? Head steward who braced himself and asked, Pre prefecture lord, th the tower of wondrous treasures has been looted. Ah, chapter 2231. Super unlucky. Fifteen minutes ago, Anna Prefecture's Prefecture Lord Guan Zotang had been inside his residence, attempting to break through to the level 14 spiritual realm. However, just as he was at the critical juncture of his cultivation, he got bitten by the watchdog he had personally nurtured. Guan Zotang truly did not expect Chi Lianhai to backstab him. That strike did not hit his vitals and the energy current around him even sent Chi Lianhai's Sabah flying. However, this interruption caused the spiritual energy in his body to diverge. Unluckily for Guan Zotang, this caused him to instantly enter vital energy deviation. His spiritual energy ran amok, and his orifices all bled at once. Just as he struggled with all his might to suppress his rampaging spiritual energy, the deed Chi Lianhai actually stabbed him in the back again. Just as Guan Zotang turned around, he felt two cold lights fly into his eyes. He reflexively howled and started striking blindly. One of his hits landed on Chi Lianhai and sent the latter flying. Even though Guan Zotang could not see, he could still utilize his spiritual conscious. Therefore, 
he swiftly lunged over without another word and finished Chi Lian Hai off with his sword. By this time, Guan Zhaotang's eyes had become a bloody mess. He was agitated since he suspected that he would most likely lose his sight. Head steward who braced himself and asked, Pre Prefectual Lord, Th the Tower of Wondrous Treasures has been looted. Ah! Anger consumed Guan Zhaotang, and he struck out at head steward who at once. He turned around with disheveled hair, and he glowered at head steward who with bloody dyes. Head steward who jolted from fright. He made an effort to get up from the ground and scrambled to Guan Zhaotang's feet. He wept, Sir Prefect you lord, there truly is something fishy about this incident. We subordinates conducted multiple searches outside the Tower of Wondrous Treasures but we did not find a single trace. Yet, yet all the items inside the Tower of Wondrous Treasures have, have actually vanished. Guan Zhaotang sent head steward who tumbling with a kick to the latter's back. Ah, ah. Guan Zhaotang was agitated and furious. He made large strides forward before suddenly stopping and rapidly returning to Chi Lian Hai's side. Guan Zhaotang lifted up Chi Lian Hai's corpse and examined it with his spiritual conscious. Upon checking, his body shook fiercely for a while. It turned out that Chi Lian Hai's body had already corroded from poison. No wonder he could not retaliate after getting struck several times. Who? Who was controlling Chi Lian Hai from the shadows? Prefecture. Prefecture Lord. Head steward who called out to him with fear and trepidation. My lord, are you alright? You really did scare me to death just now. Ah. Madame Hua had wanted to come over and console Guan Zhaotang, yet Guan Zhaotang was not in the mood to flirt with her. He pushed Madame Hua to the floor without even sparing a glance. Guan Zhaotang quickly led Head a steward who and the rest toward the Tower of Wondrous Treasures. He turned a deaf ear to Madame Hua calling out to him from behind. Guan Zhaotang looked back and forth with a contorted expression. He hurried to the Tower of Wondrous Treasures' his entrance with Head Steward Who and company. Head Steward Who looked up at the blackened Tower of Wondrous Treasures, and fearfully stole a glance at his Lord Guan Zhaotang. At this time, Guan Zhaotang did not talk to him and directly walked into the Tower of Wondrous Treasures. Using his spiritual conscious the entire way was exhausting Guan Zhaotang's mental energy. Chapter 2232 It doesn't matter even if you discover us. Moreover, after his spiritual energy diverged, he had been doing his utmost to suppress the rampaging spiritual energy in his body while they had been hurrying over. After finally suppressing his spiritual energy, he was nearly at his limit. Right now, Guan Zhaotang was absorbed in worrying about what had happened to his Tower of Wondrous Treasures. He did not have time to catch his breath and directly ran toward the Tower of Wondrous Treasures' second floor. Once he reached the second floor and saw the empty floor, Guan Zhaotang's heart had turned cold. He quickly made his way to the third, fourth, fifth, sixth floors. The first floor originally did not have much there only several mystic energy beads and the like on the shelves. The thief had passed through the remaining second to the sixth floors and had even stolen the hundred treasures racks that stored the items. Ah! Guan Zhaotang howled miserably, because he had exerted himself. Blood started seeping from his eyes again. Head steward who dared not utter a sound and had shrunk in the corner. He timidly trailed ten steps behind Guan Zotang. Guan Zotang suddenly seemed to have thought of something, and he quickly ran toward the sixth floor. Head steward who and several guards sprinted to the sixth floor with him. Because they ran too fast, they were all panting to catch their breath. Guan Zotang walked straight to the center of the empty sixth floor and the ring on his left hand suddenly lit up. Kiao Mu, who had followed them up here, couldn't help but get excited. She subconsciously gripped Mo Lian's hand. Waiting so long for this old guy was not in vain. He had finally come. He had finally come to open the Tower of Wondrous Treasures' secret room. Kiao Mu's eyes lit up as she watched Guan Zotang's every movement. A column of light landed on Guan Zotang and ascended while enveloping him. Please visit pnduen01.com. Kiao Mu hastily pulled on Mo Lian's hand. The young couple hastily jumped into that column of light. At the same time, they felt a force pulling them upward. Guan Zhaotang's eyelid jerked, 
yet he maintained a poker force as the column of light pulled him upward. The column of light pulled Kiao Mu and Mo Lian to where the seventh floor was. The two of them looked at each other, enlightened. From the outside, it was impossible to see that it actually had seven floors, but in reality, this hidden floor was well hidden by a talisman matrix. Before Kiao Mu and Mo Lian could even take a step out onto the seventh floor, they heard the sound of clacking locks all around them. Kiao Mu looked around and saw rows of iron bars come out from the walls and trap her and Mo Lian on the seventh floor. The two of them instantly appeared before Guan Zotang. Kiao Mu sized him up and scoffed. You're rather astute. Guan Zotang had long been shaking from anger. He could vaguely make out Kiao Mu's expression with his spiritual conscious. Guan Zotang shouted agitatedly, Who, who are you? The Mer was also surprised when he heard old man Tang call. You had sent your most trusted subordinate to capture me, yet you don't know who I am. Kiao Mu sneered as she looked at Guan Zotang. It's you. Guan Zotang immediately came to a realization. Kiao Mu? He truly did not expect Miss Kiao to actually be so gutsy and barge straight into his territory. You, you which made Chi Lian Hai become like that? Guan Zotang roared. Chapter 2233 Are you stupid? Kiao Mu looked at him coldly. This seventh floor of the Tower of Wondrous Treasures was actually very empty. Only a crooked tree was growing in the middle. From the looks of it, it looked half dead more than alive. So what if I did? And what if I didn't? Is there any meaning to asking this right now? Guan Zotang looked like he was in his death throes. Kiao Mu loathed to say any more to him. She took out her ferule and injected spiritual energy inside before hitting Guan Zotang with a streak of fire. Before dispatching people to capture me, you should have known that there are some people that you can't touch. Bang! A transparent defensive boundary rose in front of Guan Zotang and blocked Kiao Mu's attack. Kiao Mu furrowed her brows as she looked over. Strange, the spiritual energy she injected had actually vanished without a trace. That streak of fire just now should have been able to break through the defensive boundary but it actually disappeared. Guan Zotang's cold sneer abruptly turned into mad laughter. You think you can touch me on this seventh floor of the Tower of Wondrous Treasures? Little lady, you are still too inexperienced. Guan Zotang walked over coldly to the old tree that had twisted roots and gnarled branches. He pointed at the tree behind him. Do you see? I purposely planted this screening tree here. Its presence is normally hidden by a talisman matrix and it won't affect people. But right now, ha 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 ha, are you getting a bit scared? Do you feel like all the spiritual energy and spiritual conscious in your body has vanished? Guan Zotang snickered, your time to die has come. The screening tree not only blocks off people's spiritual conscious, Kiao Mu was rather curious. She recalled the tree that had blocked everyone's spiritual conscious in Poland Prefecture's Mount Tai and compared it with this crooked and with a tree. It grows like this. An ordinary screening tree can naturally only block people's spiritual conscious. However, this one I transplanted is naturally different. Guan Zotang laughed uproariously. The blood in his eyes that had still not dried flowed down and made his face look even more contorted. Ha ha ha. Are you scared? Guan Zotang snickered. You can kneel and beg for mercy if you're scared. Kiao Mu looked at him expressionlessly. She moved her finger in the next moment and several dozen explosion talismans flew over and encircled Guan Zotang. What are you doing? Guan Zotang's expression finally changed. Talismans? How was this little little lady sending out so many talismans? Are you stupid? Kiao Mu swept him a cold glance and did not say anything else unnecessary. She beckoned for the several dozen explosion talismans to line up in an array in front of him. A series of explosions caused the floor of the entire Tower of Wondrous Treasures to shake. The entire Tower of Wondrous Treasures was shaking. The guards on the lower floors ran downstairs in shock, with none of them knowing what was going on. Cough, 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 cough. Guan Zotang clutched his chest and staggered backwards. He glared at the two vague figures with a pale face. His own spiritual conscious had also gotten blocked, so he could only make out two shaky figures when he was looking at Kiao Mu and Mo Lian right now. Kiao Mu curled her lips. She looked mockingly at the man who appeared after she destroyed the defensive boundary. Chapter 2234 Capture
the screening tree is useless against me. She was a talisman practitioner, all right, even if it blocked her cultivation. She still had lots of talismans to use against Guan Zotang. Who exactly was the naive one? Mo Lian did not interfere from beginning to end. He merely stood on the side and looked at his Kiao Kiao's performance with a smile. Kiao Mu's face did not show any expression as she looked at Guan Zotang. You're the one who gave the order to snatch the sacred water from the holy water sect. You made the decision. Kiao Mu stared quietly at Guan Zotang with a chilliness in her eyes. It was just as if. If Guan Zotang admitted it, an abyss to hell would open up the next second, waiting to swallow him up. Guan Zotang's heart jolted. He felt an unspeakable terror when the little lady's black eyes were staring at him. If you look deep into her icy eyes, they seemed to be filled with boundless killing intent. Guan Zotang inexplicably started defending himself. I've heard of the incident with Sai Kong Planet's holy water sect. This matter is completely because Hong Jin Kun coveted the sacred water and carried out the operation on his own. Guan Zotang was also furious when he got to this point. Hong Jin Kun actually refrained from reporting such an important matter as the sacred water's discovery. He thought that the few people he commanded was enough to snatch an Another sect's treasure? If Hong Jin Kun didn't act on his own, it was likely that he, Guan Zotang, would possess the sacred water right now. It was possible that he could even break through to the divine realm. More talismans floated up in Kiao Mu's hand. You, of course, won't admit it. There is no need for you to admit to it either. Kiao Mu's gaze turned sharp, and 10, 20, 30. Countless five spirit talismans rose up around her. Guan Zotang's expression changed drastically. You! What are you doing? Heavens! What did the simultaneous explosion of more than a hundred five spirit talismans feel like? Guan Zotang found out in that instant. There was the sound of a huge tremor, and the explosive energy current knocked away head steward who, who was originally blocked outside the iron bars. He rolled down the stairs, head steward who landed headfirst and twisted his neck. By the time he got up again, he saw that the entire tower of wondrous treasures had collapsed. Rubble and dust billowed outward. Head steward who choked on dust and coughed repeatedly. When he looked up again, he couldn't help but stare in shock. A gigantic crooked tree had appeared out of thin air in front of everywhere. That tree had twisted roots and gnarled branches, and its crown was also extremely large. It was so dense that it seemed to have burst through the center of the Tower of Wondrous Treasures. A young girl in pale clothes was standing beneath this ancient tree and looking upward. Head steward who looked up and his heart nearly jumped out from his chest in fright. A person was struggling as he hung upside down from that old tree, and both his hands were bound by spirit binding rope. It was none other than Guan Zotang. Any prefecture's guards had long pissed their pants in terror and fled. Head steward who also hastily scrambled away. He wanted to leave this place. He felt that if he continued staying here, something even more unlucky might happen to him. Kiao Mu's eyes lit up as she examined the old tree in front of her. Kyu Kyu, why does this tree look so strange? Chapter 2235 Concealing Primordial Tree She had used so many five spirit talismans just now and destroyed the entire building. Oh uh, no, she had made the ground in this area cave in but this tree was still safe and sound. She didn't believe that there was nothing strange about this tree. Master, I can't make out anything about this tree, but since it can block spiritual conscious and spiritual energy, let's keep it. Will it affect the paradise planet's spiritual domain if you plant it there? It won't. Kyukiu spoke with the confidence of how does it dare retaliate against this boss and harumped. If it makes trouble, I'll eat it. Kiyaomu naturally believed it as even its seed fragments were very formidable. It wasn't an exaggeration for it to eat this screening tree. Fine then, transplant it inside. Kiao Mu nodded. She did not know what to do with this strange screening tree at the moment, but since Kukiu wanted to move it into Paradise Planet, there should be some use. Kiao Mu was unaware at this time that this screening tree would help her out in the future. Right now, the little fellow was like a scavenger picking up everything she found. She even instructed Kyukiu to throw this tree further away to prevent it from affecting the peach trees. We keep calling it a screening tree, but it just told me now that it's a concealing primordial tree. Kyukiu explained helplessly, 
Master, this concealing primordial tree can evolve. If our spiritual domain transforms into a divine realm, perhaps the concealing primordial tree can also block other people's divine energy and divine conscious in the future. Kiyamu, what use was that? Seeing that she didn't get the point, Kyukiu couldn't resist coughing lightly and continued, Master, do you still not understand? If we plant this concealing primordial tree inside our sect, anybody that comes to challenge our sect will lose their spiritual energy. How will they fight? Kiyamu couldn't help but snigger when she heard this. Are you making a joke? If you plant this lousy tree in our sect, how will my senior sisters train? Won't their spiritual energy and spiritual conscious also get blocked? Kyukiu, heavens! Little Master is too dumb. Kyukiu's mouth is going dry from explaining. Master, Master, since it is in our hands, it naturally has to listen to Kyukiu's orders. It'll block when I want it. Would it dare refuse? Kiyamu got the point now, and her eyes lit up. She summoned the little treant from Paradise Planet with a wave. She held it in her hands and asked delightedly, you're saying that it can act as the protector tree of the sect in the future, right? Kyukiu nodded emphatically. Furthermore, we only need to break off its main branch to transplant it. Once it grows up, it will be definitely be able to block everything in its vicinity. Then how do we make it distinguish between friend and foe? Kiyamu asked doubtfully. It's pretty simple actually. You just need to cut a small piece of its root and brew it in tea. Drinking a small cup will make the concealing primordial tree treat you as one of its own for a month. It's as simple as drinking one cup every month. It's that simple. P1 knees visit EN0 of 1B in. Niti. Kiyamu promptly nodded in delight. That's awesome. Quickly move it then. Kyukiu danced about in her palms. Afterwards, it hopped down and emitted a lustrous green glow from its small body. It took no effort at all. In a matter of moments, the colossal tree started shaking. Swish. Chapter 2236 Food Seeking Medicinal Cauldron. With a flash of green light. The sapling Kukiu had sucked the old tree into Paradise Planet, only leaving behind. Ah, Guan Zotang fell to the ground head first after falling from the vanishing tree. This fall truly shook up Guan Zotang. His head hit the ground, instantly producing a bloody injury. He looked up while screeching. He was in a very sorry state. More blood flowed out from his heavily injured eyes. Kiyamu simply did not pay attention to Guan Zotang's howls. Her gaze was on the pit revealed by the absence of the tree. It was not an exaggeration to say that it was wealth that smacked her out of nowhere. After Kukiu moved the concealing primordial tree into Paradise Planet, this left behind an extremely deep pit. The blinding glow of magnificence dazzled Kiyamu's eyes. Molian flitted to Kiyamu's side. The young couple looked over into the tree pit at once. Their gazes fixed on the gemstones that were scattered inside the pit. There were all sorts of gemstones for forging and refining. They were in all colors of the rainbow, with different tints and lusters, and made from various types of material. Moreover, there were a lot of mystic beast cores and spiritual beast cores of various sizes. They were thrown inside the tree pit and gave off a shimmering glow. Swish. Kiyamu blinked and looked up. She saw a small copper cauldron dart out in front of them. It spun in midair without warning, just like. It was an excited child that was happily performing somersaults at the sight of so many snacks. Kiyamu silently looked up to look at Molian. Crown Prince Mo could not help but say with a smile. It is rare to see the nine stars mirroring the moon cauldron so energetic. It looks like this large amount of food has stirred its interest. That's right. Kiyamu looked at Molian in exasperation. She waved her hand and caught the small copper cauldron without room for objection. Two of the cauldron's stars had lit up by this time, and the copper cauldron had turned translucent like colored crystal. It was spinning in Kiyamu's palm like an anxious child waiting for its little master to feed it. Kiyamu just jumped into this tree pit while holding the small copper cauldron and fed it a random red-colored mystic beast core. The cauldron fire inside the nine stars mirroring the moon cauldron lit up by itself. The cauldron fire promptly melted that mystic beast core into a tonic and absorbed it up completely. Kiyamu continued to feed the small cauldron some more cores including a dozen different gemstones and forging stones. The small cauldron absorbed it all quickly, 
turning them into tonics in less than a second and absorbing them all. Kiyamu couldn't help but sigh at this sight. She mumbled to herself, how much does it have to eat before the third star will light up? The little fellow squatted down and fed the small cauldron for several more minutes until the color of the fire turned from a crimson to a colored glaze. She then stopped in astonishment. Lian, Lian, hurry and come look. Mo Lian also jumped into the pit that was piled with various cores and gemstones. He came to Kiao Mu's side and helplessly pulled her up. What is it, my Kiao Kiao? Do you see? This fire's color actually changed. Mo Lian nodded. Didn't you say that when the second star lit up, this medicinal cauldron's refining speed had doubled? Kiao Mu nodded vigorously. That's right. Chapter 2237, Ignorant. Then perhaps once its third or fourth star lights up, this medicinal cauldron's cauldron fire might undergo a qualitative change. Kiao Mu cheered and then suddenly hopped next to Mo Lian. She hugged him and exclaimed, the cauldron fire will become even purer in the future right? In that case, I'll be able to effortlessly refine pills of excellent quality. She would not have to constantly control the fire like when she was using the small stewing pot to refine medicine. In the future, Refining medicine would only be faster and more convenient. When she thought of this, Kiao Mu's petite face was filled with excitement. She grabbed a handful of forging materials and tossed it into the small cauldron. She urged the small cauldron benevolently, hurry and eat. Mo Lian couldn't help but want to laugh. This little fellow had just been disdaining the medicinal cauldron's big appetite. After finding out that the cauldron fire would improve as it gained more stars, she was now urging the medicinal cauldron to eat more. She was truly a realist, all right. Mo Lian helplessly lifted up this little one. Pack this all up into Paradise Planet and have Kukiu slowly feed the nine stars mirroring the moon cauldron. This small cauldron can't eat too much at once. What if it has indigestion after eating too much? Won't that just be a waste? Kiao Mu instantly thought that made sense. Consequently, she collected all the various forging materials inside the tree pit. What is that? Kiao Mu stood at the edge of the pit and probed into the bottom. An oval bead around the size of a pigeon egg was emitting a faint purple glow. Mo Lian sucked the oval bead into his palm. The two of them looked down and studied it. Kiao Mu even poked at this faint purple bead. When she poked the surface, it would sink in. The two of them exchanged glances, both having no idea what it was. This might be. An egg. Mo Lian said hesitantly after some pondering. Crown Prince Mo wanted to laugh at Kiao Mu's expression, which looked like she was asking whether it could be eaten. How was this little fellow's expression so hilarious? We still don't know what it is, so we shouldn't just randomly eat it. Woof, 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 woof. Three puppies suddenly bounded out from Paradise Planet. They drooled at the egg in Kiao Mu's hands and circled around her with their tails between their legs. What is this? Kiao Mu deadpanned. Woof, 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 woof my SS. Kiao Mu gruffly nudged one of the jumping little doggies to the side. Woof, 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 woof. Woof! The three little doggies circled around Kiao Mu non-stop. The three of them looked at her pitifully with pleading eyes. Their drooling expressions were simply. Kiao Mu squatted down again and picked up one of the little doggies to ask, What is this, dummy? That is the egg of the sacred beast Tuo One. You want to feed it to three dogs? What is that? Kiao Mu couldn't resist summoning the blood fire phoenix when she heard his flustered and exasperated shout. The small fire phoenix glared at her in a huff while flapping his wings. He looked contemptibly at Crown Prince Mo, who got shot while lying down. Ignorant. Crown Prince Mo, did Kiao Kiao not recognize what it was I there? How come only he was scolded? What egg? Kiao Mu pressed curiously. The blood fire phoenix had the urge to vomit blood and shouted, Quickly search inside the pit again. This zero appear in pairs. There should be two eggs inside the pit. Chapter 2238 Nearly squandering a precious treasure. Woof, it's underneath that doggy's paw. The bloodfire phoenix screamed, quickly. Kiao Mu's scalp tingled from his flustered scream. She hastily darted over and brushed aside a little doggy. Sure enough. She saw it under its paw. She rescued the black pigeon egg. She put the two eggs together. One shimmered faint purple, 
while the other was black. The blood fire phoenix flapped his small wings and hovered over the two eggs for a while. Only then did he land firmly on Kiao Mu's shoulder and look at his little master like he expected better from her. You nearly lost two sacred beast eggs, Kiao Mu. How would she know that these two things that looked like pigeon eggs were sacred beast eggs? Truthfully speaking, she had just been thinking whether she should roast that faint purple egg and see if she could eat it. You're thinking of roasting phoenixes again. This utterly heartless little fellow. She had also wanted to roast him back when she first saw him. The little fire phoenix's accusatory expression unfathomably made Kiao Mu feel a bit guilty, yet she stubbornly refuted, nonsense. When did I say I wanted to roast it? I can't even finish the chicken and duck eggs in the paradise. Why would I eat such a tiny pigeon egg? This is a pair of phoenix eggs, you know? Kiao Mu. Phoenix eggs are the size of pigeon eggs. You're kidding. Mo Lian coughed lightly and put his arm around Kiao Kiao's shoulder. He nodded and said, we naturally know. The blood fire phoenix looked at them in contempt. Fui, from their expressions just now, it was obvious that they had no idea what these two eggs were. Our Phoenix clan has many branches, like King Luan. You know about the King Luan, right? They are also considered a branch of our Phoenix clan, just that their bloodline is a bit more distant. They have yet to meet the standard of sacred beasts. This pair of Zuo is also a branch bloodline of our Phoenix clan. Pure blooded Zuo have a pristine bloodline. You were just about to feed them to little doggies. Kiao Mu, cough. Kiao Mu was practically unable to meet the fire phoenix's accusatory gaze. The little fellow immediately looked up and glared at her hubby in a huff. Hubby is so learned and talented possessing knowledge rare to even the most erudite man. How could you not even recognize a phoenix egg? Molian got shot while lying down again. He looked at his wife aggrievedly, please, he had only seen the beautiful figure of an adult zero phoenix in ancient books. Which ancient book would depict the egg? Woof, woof. Seeing that they were about to lose the phoenix eggs, the three puppies paced around Kiao Mu anxiously. Scram. Kiao Mu was filled with anger. When she saw the little doggies drooling and gluttonous expressions just now, she had really just nearly. Cough. Apologies, apologies. However, speaking of which, these three little doggies were also strange. They had been scampering to eat the double-headed flood dragon's sacred beast core previously. Now, they wanted to eat two sacred beast phoenixes. They were freaking focused on eating sacred beasts. Wasn't this preference too exotic? Kiao Mu silently put the eggs in her own inner world. When she looked back, she couldn't help but yelp. Ah, Guan Zotang ran off. Just now, everyone's attention was on the tree pit. They had been gathering forging materials and also fumbling around with the phoenix eggs. She didn't expect Guan Zotang to take this chance to escape. Mo Lian curled his lips. Ran off. He won't. Just as he said this, they heard the sound of hasty footsteps approaching. Chapter 2239 had made preparations. Guan Zotang, who had disheveled hair and bloody eyes, had rushed back over with several thousand Dani prefecture guards. He gave a furious shout. Capture them alive. Guan Zotang's hands were still tied with the spirit binding rope. His face was flushed red from chagrin. He was absolutely livid right now. He had mobilized everyone he could inside the Ani prefecture. The guards swarmed toward the Tower of Wondrous Treasures in large numbers. Their shining blades looked even more bright in the night. Young uns will suffer when they are so arrogant. Guan Zotang raised up his tied hands and hollered. Mo Lian pulled Kiao Mu to his side and raised his eyebrow at Guan Zotang. Are you too overconfident? You plan to keep us with just this bit of people? The crown prince couldn't help but scoff. He raised his hand and waved. In a split second, Tung rushed over with several thousand well-equipped men from all directions. This area soon became congested. Even the rooftops were filled with archers at the ready. Guan Zotang gaped. He suddenly felt like his voice was trapped inside his throat. He was momentarily unable to respond. You, you people. These deed fellows had actually assembled troops. They were planning to raise his official mansion. Guan Zotang was unable to mobilize more manpower at such short notice. In reality, given enough time, 
he could assemble tens and even hundreds of thousands of men, but right now, everything was a bit too late. Guan Zhaotang's sight had turned blurry from overusing his spiritual conscious. The last thing he saw seemed to be that man apathetically waving his hand. The young men in black surged over and started fighting with the Annie Prefecture guards. Guan Zhaotang was dizzy. His body teetered as the sound of clashing blades entered his ears. He suddenly heard the roar of a beast. He reflexively spread open his hand and summoned his own contract beast. Unfortunately, the moment his spiritual beast came out, a snow white ball tackled it and bit its throat before it could even catch sight of the other party. Guan Zhaotang had collapsed to the ground, his spiritual beast's severe injury had caused his body a serious backlash. At this moment, his eyes had become completely blind. He could only sense something humongous pressing down on his body. He struggled to get up and howled at the top of his lungs. Someone, before he could even say come. He felt his head getting smacked by a forceful paw. He spewed blood on the spot, and his body became limp. The snow leopard that was pressing down on Guan Zhaotang's body disdainfully wiped away the blood on its paws on Guan Zhaotang's clothes. Kiao Mu walked over slowly. Tung and the others who were currently engaged in fierce fights couldn't help but lift up their opponents and retreat to both sides to make a path for her. Annie Prefecture's guards felt more shocked the more they fought. These young men in black who had seemingly descended like heavenly soldiers all had agile movements and got fiercer the more they fought. Their contract beasts were also mostly spiritual beasts. A lot of their equipment was even better than theirs from the Annie Prefecture. How could they continue fighting? Those who surrender can live. Chapter 2240 Who dares resist? Those who put up a desperate struggle will be executed on the spot. At Tung's order, the group of young men in black raised their weapons and callously started eliminating foes. As the number of people dying inside the official mansion increased, more Annie Prefecture guards chose to set down their blades and curled up like shrimp. Guan Yibo, who was hiding behind a column in the corridor, covered her mouth tightly. She abruptly leaned back and softly took several breaths before swiftly heading back to her courtyard. Guan Yaiba ran back to their housing compound and suddenly laughed loudly at the sky. Concubine Jiang walked out and saw her daughter acting like this. She could not help but ask in astonishment, what's happening outside, Boa? Mom, let's go. We're leaving right now. Guan Yaiba helped her mother up and started walking outside. Don't bother so much. This clan has offended a formidable power. It's completely over for the clan. What? Concubine Jiang yelped in shock and hastily gripped her daughter's arm. What happened? Boa, quickly tell mom. There's no time, mom. We have to leave this hellhole first. Guan Yaiba had completely lost all hope in this clan. Even if she had to give up all of this and leave alone with her mom. She had nothing to hesitate about. Everyone in this clan was a stranger. Besides her mom, no one had truly treated her sincerely. In that case, bang! A staggering figure crashed open the door to their room. Madame Hua looked in terror at them. Sixth, sixth young lady, sixth young lady, please, bring me away with you. Sixth young lady, the forces outside had turned into a jumbled mess. Those young concubines in the official mansion without the strength to trust a chicken lived in Comfton had never encountered such an issue. Each of them would only cry when they encountered an incident. Her boy servant and maid servant had swept away a lot of wealth. They had no time to care about their master's escape, only caring about finding a place to escape. Madame Hua's two personal maid servants had also fled with a lot of wealth. Madame Hua was only a delicate beauty. She promptly panicked and had no idea what to do. Sister Jiang, B. R. Bring me with you. Please, I beg you. Madame Hua carried a bundle and called out repeatedly. Guan Yaiba looked at her. Suddenly, a knife hand strike hit the back of Madame Hua's neck. Madame Hua's eyes turned round from shock. She limply slid down the wall. Guan Yaiba snatched away the bundle in her hands and opened it. When she saw the large number of cores and spirit currency inside, she quickly put it away in her inner world. Boa. Concubine Jiang cowered and asked, Won't, won't it be bad for? for you to do that? The strong prey on the weak, with survival of the fittest. Guan Zhaotang waved her fist and looked coldly at Madame Hua. This woman made trouble for you because she had Guan Zhaotang's favor. I'm only taking revenge right now. Mom, 
you cannot be soft-hearted. Let's go. Concubine Jiang sighed. She nodded and walked out with her daughter. She subconsciously looked back at Madame Hua who had collapsed inside the doors. One's fate really could not be controlled. Mom, don't worry. We will live much better after leaving the Guan clan. Chapter 2241 Copycat Punishment Tower Guan Yibo looked resolutely into the distance. She supported her mom as they ran out the rear door among the ruckus. When they looked back, the entire Guan clan was enveloped in the dark night. Several horrified screams would occasionally be heard from within. Both good and evil had to be repaid. It was not that it didn't happen. It was just that it was not time. Guan Yibo looked back coldly and then quickly disappeared into the night with her mother. The fire in the official mansion raged on. It burned for most of the night. It wasn't until the heavy rain in the later part of the night finally extinguished it. Kiao Mu held her dear hubby's hand as they walked into the paradise. The moment they did, she couldn't help furrowing her brows. Are you still smelling the scent of blood? Mo Lian naturally noticed the minute change in her facial expression. He quickly pulled her over and fanned the air before her nose. Miss Giao puffed out her cheeks in displeasure. I shouldn't have brought that stinky rat into the paradise. The fish orchid planet was a vast sea, and time inside flowed twelve times slower than the outside world. It naturally couldn't take scum. As for the Chuan planet, that was Long Chuan's last pure land. Kiao Mu was unwilling to contaminate it. Therefore, she could only detain Guan Zodang and his men on Paradise Planet for the moment. Luckily, Kyuki tactfully constructed a 12-story prison tower in the most remote part of Paradise Planet. It was more than sufficient to detain these people. Guan Zodang and them would only think that they were locked up in a dungeon. They would not know that they were inside Miss Kiao's personal spiritual domain dimension. This prison tower was extremely tall and large. Green killer vines blanketed the exterior while Little Earth had also reinforced the foundation multiple times, let alone detaining Guan Zotang, who was just a mere level 14 spiritual cultivator, even primary rank divine cultivators would not be able to escape. Moreover, strictly speaking, Kyuki U was the god inside Paradise Planet. A single thought was all that was needed to exterminate them all without a trace. When Kiao Mu went inside, Big Treasure and two other glums were whipping the unconscious Guan Zotang. Oh, my beautiful little master. You are the sun and clouds in the sky. My goddess. Kiao Mu. Mo Lian couldn't resist shortling. When you made it, it was already so talkative. MHM, as long as it has spirit stones, it can keep talking like this without repeating its words of praise. Mo Lian nodded with a smile. Right now. Kiao Mu had good reason to suspect that Crown Prince Mo had taught these cheesy words of praise to the Glum when he was constructing it. The two of them stood on the first floor of the prison tower. Upon walking inside, they felt a yin energy assault them. The sapling's image appeared on the opposite wall. After cackling sinisterly, he flailed his branches on the wall, crafting a horrifying atmosphere. Welcome to the Punishment Tower. Oh oh ho ho. Once you enter the Punishment Tower, only those who continuously reform can obtain freedom. Mo Lian felt like a coin crow just flew over his head. Kiao Mu. The punishment tower consists of the first to the twelfth floor. The higher the floor, the heavier the punishment. If you get to the twelfth floor, congratulations. You will get boiled in oil and ascend mountains of blades. Various punishments that will leave an indelible impression will all be at your service. You're welcome. Chapter 2242 Servant Kiao Mu Mo Lian couldn't he resist wanting to laugh. He gestured to Kiao Mu with his eyes. My Kiao Kiao, I didn't he realize you had such a sense of humor. Did you arrange this? It was even called the Punishment Tower, the same name as the one Heavenly Law created. It was an entire copycat. Kiao Mu, thank you. But I don't he have the time to do all this weird stuff. This Kyuki who really was too idle. Wake him up. Kiao Mu inexplicably felt sorry for Guan Zotang when she saw that he did not have a single piece of intact flesh. Alrighty, my beautiful little master. Your wish is my command. Big Treasure's black metal face showed a wide smile. Splash. The fellow scooped up a ladle of salt water and just poured it on him. From its skilled and practiced movements. This was definitely not the first time it did this. Guan Zotang woke up while screaming. After getting all his injuries soaked in salt water, 
All the muscles in his body were quivering. He gritted his teeth and withstood the immense pain. Kiao Mu shrunk her petite body. Mo Lian brusquely glared at the golem. You scared my Kiao Kiao. Big treasure back two steps away and hung its head. It played with its fingers and said timidly, Master, next time I will treat them more gently. After quivering for a while, Guan Zhoutang's body finally calmed down, only then did Kiao Mu hold out a lustrous purple medicinal bottle. Surrender a thread of your spiritual conscious and eat this medicine. You will then become my servant. Don't he, don't he, don't he even think about it. Guan Zhoutang gritted his teeth as his body quivered. Don't he think about what? Kiao Mu glanced at him coldly. Do you know what is scarier than death? Guan Zhoutang's heart trembled inexplicably. He stood there, dazed. It is the pain of not being able to die even when you want to. Kiao Mu said coldly as she looked gloomily at Guan Zhoutang with her pitch black eyes. I am giving you one more chance to decide. Guan Zhoutang was not the iron willed man he thought he was. In reality, he had long yielded in his heart. After getting scared by Kiao Mu, he hastily lowered his head. He soon procured a thread of spiritual conscious from his conscious pool and handed it to Kiao Mu. Kiao Mu put it inside a storage talisman. She then had Big Treasure remove a poison pill from the medicinal bottle and made Guan Zhoutang take it. She finally nodded her head at ease. Mo Lian looked down at her. He couldn't he resist caressing her petite head. His little fellow was so cautious, she felt that just controlling his spiritual conscious was not enough insurance. So she added another layer of poison control on his body. He admired her methods very much. As expected of his wife, her black believedness conformed to his Mo Clan's tradition. Within ten days, make a report of all your troops in the Ani Prefecture to Shunshan Prefecture's Prefecture Lord. Kiao Mu left after giving this order. She went to the second floor. The three thousand remaining Ani Prefecture guards had been stuffed here, as a for them. Kiao Mu didn't he have to go through such hassle. She directly had each of them give her a thread of their spiritual conscious. Kiao Mu then went back down to the first floor and threw Guan Zhoutang the storage talisman with the spiritual conscious of the 3000 Ani Prefecture guards. Give this item to Shunshan Prefecture's Prefecture Lord for safekeeping. In the future, you will be following his orders. Dunzi has to properly manage the affairs of the six prefectures. You must not disappoint me. Kiao Mu murmured to herself, Chapter 2243 Swallow Your Grievances. Kiao Mu and Mo Lian picked some fresh oranges, bears, and other fruit before leaving Paradise Planet. Kiao Mu smacked her head, Wait for me. She then went back into Paradise Planet and handed the pair of Zuo eggs to the water child. She patted its head and said, Help me find a place with dense spiritual energy and take good care of them, okay? The water child enveloped the two phoenix eggs with mist and bobbed its head. Kiao Mu ignored the three little doggies protesting barks and berated, You cannot eat them, woo, new woo. The three little doggies were actually rolling around in a tantrum. Their behavior was too human-like. Kiao Mu couldn't help but look at them in both amusement and exasperation. She flipped her hand and took out three bottles of medicinal solution from her inner world. She shook them in front of the three little doggies. You're not allowed to eat the sacred beast eggs. This you can eat. Woof, 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 woof. The three puppies circled around her and hugged the medicinal solution with their paws before running away happily. Kiao Mu shook her head speechlessly. She beckoned Kyukyu over and left several instructions. It was mainly for Kyukyu to keep watch over the little doggies and make sure they didn't secretly eat the phoenix eggs. When she went out again, she saw that Feng Chen, the little despot, and the others had already returned. Dao Wuji waved his hand at Kiao Mu and said with a smile. Little sister-in-law, the people in the official mansion have pretty much fled. Kiao Mu nodded. She had Kyukyu knock out Guan Zhoutang and the 3000 Dani Prefecture guards before throwing them out again. The little despot furrowed his brows as he looked up at the sky. There are two rather strong presences heading over here. Everybody put up their guard. Two white-haired elders were swiftly moving under the cover of night. The next moment, they arrived before Kiao Mu and company. Kyukyu waved its small branches and whipped Guan Zhoutang 
Guangzhou's body with a chuckle. Guangzhou Tang woke up with a start when he looked up and saw Annie Prefecture's two pundits, one dot an expert in a particular subject or field who is frequently called upon to give their opinions to the public, arrive. He nearly cried tears of joy and called out for help, but at that moment, he felt a sharp pain in his brain. When he looked up and saw the ebony talisman Kiao Mu was holding, Guan Zhoutang immediately turned clear-headed. He lunged at the two pundits' feet and wept. The two seniors have come just in time. These friends have already chased away the enemies. Will the two seniors please pursue in that direction? The two Anna Prefecture pundits creased their brows and looked in the direction that Guan Zhoutang was pointing. How come they didn't sense anyone over there? Their hearts jolted when they surveyed Kiao Mu and company. There were several people in this group of young men and women whose cultivation they could not see through. The two pundits nodded toward Guan Zhoutang and pursued in the direction he had pointed without a word. Only after seeing them leave did Kiao Mu and company slowly put down their guard. Kiao Mu looked at Guan Zhoutang. Tang coldly, do what I have told you. Yes, Guan Zhoutang hung his head. From what this miss said, Shunshan Prefecture's Prefecture Lord should also be one of her people. It was truly unexpected that the two strongest territories in the six prefectures were actually under the control of an obscure little lady. What a powerful personage. Guan Zhoutang took a deep breath and slowly closed his eyes. Now that things had gotten to this point, he could only take one step at a time. Chapter 2244 Second Kin's Wrath, The Divine Province A long meandering corridor connected to the Kin Estates Xiang Xin Lake. The glazed tiles on the roof of the long corridor sparkled with different colors in the sunlight. When looking out the small windows lined along the corridor, it was like each of them showed different scenery. There were solitary branches that peeked out from the eaves and lichen-covered stone walls laden with snow. The pavilions and parlors formed multiple groups in this flowing scene. At a glance, they were all situated in picturesque disorder. A woman was holding an exquisite red cypress tray with a smile. She crossed through that dazzling corridor with light footsteps into the huizy gazebo in the center of the Xiang Xin Lake. She wore a pinkish silver upper garment that accentuated her waist. Paired with a sheer magenta skirt, her waist ribbon of the same color scheme was fastened to a jade gourd bell. The sound of tinkling bells could be heard in the wind as she walked. The pearl hairpins in her hair shook, complementing the other jade and pearl accessories she was wearing. The most eye-catching piece was a five fortune Rui hairpin that gave off a dazzling luster in the sunlight. Shi Yong Qin deliberately slowed her footsteps when she entered Huizy Gazebo. The smile on her lips also gradually deepened as her pretty eyes landed on the young man in the gazebo. She took a deep breath and walked over with two maid servants. Inside the Huizy Gazebo, a tall man in purple was sitting against one of the pillars. A book lay open on his lap as he propped his elbow on the curb banister to support his forehead. His other arm hung leisurely by his side. This man's brows were still furrowed even while asleep. Shi Yong Qin walked over with small steps. She reached over and was about to massage away the sorrow between his brows. Yet the man had already opened his eyes with a flash. A dark green glint flitted through his eyes as he looked coldly at her. Ah! Shi Yong Qin's hands shook and the tray she was holding dropped to the floor. The white jade porcelain cup on it shattered into pieces. Ah, my lady. The two maid servants hastily ran up and supported Shi Yong Qin, who was toppling backwards. The man sheathed his dagger and placed it back into his wide sleeve. His abnormally frigid eyes glanced at Shi Yong Qin without a hint of warmth. Impatience showed through his brows. Huang Chong. He spoke coldly. A black figure instantly landed next to him and kneeled on one knee. Huang Chong is here. Go and kill those traitorous things outside. The man spoke coldly. Don't let me see them again in the future. Yes. The wails of several men and women were soon heard outside the Huizy gazebo. Someone dropped to his knees and kept shouting spare our lives, young sir. Ah, with the sounds of several screams, the energy from the blades disappeared into the air. Afterwards, the noisy commotion outside was no more. Shi Yong Qin bit her lip and shook all over. You, you, second young sir. You are being too unreasonable. One of the maid servants couldn't resist chastising. 
Her ladyship came to give you lotus seed custard with good intentions, it, it's fine if you do not appreciate the gesture, but how can you humiliate her ladyship like this, you, you, she yong kin covered her face and sobbed, ah sin, what happened to you, ever since you came back six months ago, there, the way you treat me is just, second young sir kin's whole body shook, Chapter 2245 Instantly Murderess That memory clearly surfaced in his mind again, Ark Sin, you haven't really fallen in love with that woman and want to marry her, right, Ark Sin, at least state your position, DSK, she's just a little pet of mine, if it were you, would you marry your pet, don't talk, stop talking, don't call me, don't call me Ark Sin, disgusting. It was disgusting just hearing it. Second young sir's picturesque brows had completely contorted. He suddenly stretched out his hand and swung forcefully. Slap. Ah. She yong kin widened her eyes as she covered her red and swollen left cheek with one hand. She stared at second young sir kin in disbelief. Second young sir. What was with second young sir? How come it was like he was a completely different person? He had such a vicious aura about him. Scram, scram right now. Ginxin shouted angrily. He flung away the hand that the maidservant had grabbed his sleeve with. The two maidservants felt their hearts breaking when they saw their lady suffering such humiliation. They sobbed, second young sir. How, how can you treat her ladyship like this? Have. Have you completely forgotten that you and her ladyship have a marriage engagement? Scram. Ginxin bellowed. The vicious aura surrounding him erupted like the sea tide. Ah. His vicious aura flung Shi Yongki into the ground. She turned around to look at him and called out plaintively, Ark Sin, Ark Sin, what has happened to you? You beach. It's all because of you. It's all because you tormented her so terribly that she wants to flee from me at all costs. Killing intent flitted across Ginxin's eyes. He raised his hand, and purple electricity crackled between his fingers. Spiritual thunder. The maidservants screamed, and their faces turned ghastly pale. Kill her. Kill her and it'll all be over. A ruthless glint flashed through Kinxin's eyes. She Yong Kin was dumbstruck by this gaze. She sat on the ground in a daze and just looked up like this at the man she loved with tears streaming from her eyes. Was he going to kill her? Stop. The patriarch of the Kin estate flew into Huey's gazebo after getting informed. He slapped his son's handsome face and berated furiously, You bastard, have you gone crazy? Hurry up and recollect yourself. Apologize to Lady Shi. Second young Sir Kin held the back of his hand to his stinging cheek and looked sullenly at his father. Ha ha. There was a low laugh outside the Huey's gazebo. Second young Sir Kin looked up and saw his elder brother leaning against a pillar and grinning at him. Gings you on that guy had never conducted himself according to propriety. It was the depth of winter, yet he was merely wearing a thin spring garment that revealed most of his chest. The spot of vermilion between his brows was even more beautiful when complemented by his snow white complexion. His bewitching eyes were setting off sparks as he looked amorously at Lady Shay, who was sitting limply on the floor. Oh my, my younger brother, how can you treat the ladies this way? Ah, Lady Shay. Let me see if you have gotten hurt anywhere. Eldest young Sir Kin walked over with his clothes afloat. His exquisite features enchanted the two unseasoned maidservants, and their faces turned bright red. The eldest young Sir bent over and helped up Lady Shi from the floor with a grin. Shi Yong Kin felt her cheeks burn up unfathomably. She glanced at this devilish man quickly before averting her gaze. How pitiable that such a pretty face has been slapped red. Chapter 2246 Laughable The eldest young sir took it further and lifted Shi Yong Kin's face with his finger. He leaned in and blew gently on her cheek. Does it hurt? Shi Yong Kin's heart started pounding uncontrollably. Sigh. Eldest young sir Kin let go of Lady Shi's chin and turned around with a smile. He muttered, I had thought I lost my charm, but it turns out I didn't. Look. Which woman didn't get enchanted by him? Even this Shi Yong Kin, who was enamored with only his second brother, got her heart shaken and her mind swayed with just a hook of his finger. Except for the little stoic. It seemed like other than the little stoic, he was able to snatch away anything else from his second brother as he wished. So not fun. Moreover, 
Did the little stoic really belong to his second brother? That didn't seem like the case. It really was troubling. How come he had a headache when he thought about that stoic face? The eldest young sir instantly lost his interest in playing around. He walked away and sat down on the side. He crossed his long legs and watched this father-son quarrel disinterestedly. My son has been discourteous. The Kin family patriarch cupped his hands toward Shi Yongkian. The Kin family patriarch looked to be in his fifties. Compared to Kin Gilu, he had a more solemn and inflexible. Shi Yongkian wiped her tears and peered at the expressionless second young Sir Kin. She couldn't help be stifled from anger. Even though second Kin had treated her with indifference in the past, he had at least maintained a gentlemanly conduct. It was completely unlike today when he was treating her as his enemy. Just now when he flared up, it was like, it was like he really was going to kill her. Lady Shay, I truly apologize. My son has still yet to completely recover from a serious injury he sustained six months ago. Sometimes, his mind will get confused. Please do not blame him, Lady Shi. Shi Yong Kin cried plaintively while wiping her tears. Uncle Kin. I won't blame the second young sir. I know, know that he only, only has some mis misunderstanding toward me, that's why. There is no misunderstanding. Second young sir Kin cut her off. Shi Yong Kin, you had best not appear in front of me in the future. Otherwise, I really might not be able to restrain myself from killing you. The Kin family patriarch. Shi Yong Kin, what? Uncle Kin, you unfilial son. The Kin family patriarch shouted, what are you saying? You and Kinga have had a marriage engagement from young. You, you bastard, apologize to Kinga right now. You'll marry in three months, PFFT. Eldest young Sir Kin laughed gracefully. I say, second brother, look at how your antics pushed up this marriage that was originally in half a year by three months. Congratulations, congratulations. Congrats to second brother for bringing home the bell. As the eldest young Sir was saying this, he did not forget to wink at his sister-in-law to be. Shi Yongkin's maiden heart started beating as she mused. Could it be that the eldest young sir also fancied her? Ah, what to do? There was only one king, uh, and she had already given her heart to the second young sir. Sh she could not be involved with the eldest young sir. The eldest young sir, what should he do? It was so hilarious. Ha 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 ha. He just felt overjoyed when he saw his second brother suffering. If eldest Kin heard Shi Yong Kin's fanciful thoughts right now, he would definitely be laughing wildly. Heavens, this lady she truly was a drama queen and a narcissist. He had merely been teasing this woman casually. He could only scoff at her delusion to think that he liked her. What a laughable woman. Chapter 2247 Heartache Second young Sir Kin cast Shi Yong Kin a cold glance. He then turned to bow to his father before walking out of the Huizy Gazebo. The Kin family patriarch felt like he was about to explode from anger as he watched his unruly son go. He pointed at the direction the second young Sir was leaving in and roared, Unfilial son, you, stand right there. Unfilial son, dad, second brother is only in a bad mood. Don't be angry with him. The eldest young sir walked up with a grin. He took out a small fan traced in gold and fanned his dad obsequiously. The kin family patriarch. The sight of these two sons just infuriated him. They were clearly both so excellent, yet the elder one frequented the pleasure quarters and was never home, often missing. The second one was being even more unreasonable right now. Previously, he had been rather steady and reliable. But who knew that he would be so against this marriage with the Shi family this time? The Kin family patriarch glanced at the broken plates and cups on the floor before looking at Shi Yong Kin, who was standing timidly on the side. He explained apologetically, Lady Shay, I hope that you do not mind. Xino was injured heavily six months ago, and he is still recuperating, so he is probably not in a good mood either. He was not purposely targeting you, Uncle Kin. What happened? Who injured the second young sir? A hint of anger flashed through the Kin family patriarch's eyes at this point. This old man asked him, yet he was unwilling to say. However, this old man will not let this matter go at that. Unless that person never ascends to the divine province in their lifetime, otherwise, there would be a day they would meet. Second Kin returned to his courtyard with a vicious aura. Before he entered his room, 
He heard a light laugh behind him. Second brother. The second young sir turned around and looked at eldest young sir Kin. Do you need something? The eldest young sir gave a profound smile. What's with the huge temper? He had heard that this guy had just ordered several maid servants and boy servants to be dealt with. He had to say that this vicious aura really was rather heavy. What's the use of keeping them? Second young sir Kin spoke coldly, they can't even do such a simple thing as watching the door. These traitorous people actually acted on their own to let Shi Yong Kin into the Hu Izzy gazebo and approach him. Just seeing her made him annoyed. Second young Sir Kin turned around and walked into his room. He did not want to continue talking with his elder brother. The eldest young Sir did not stop him. He merely leaned against the wall and watched him go. He naturally knew about the incident with Second Kin getting injured six months ago. According to the reports when he came back. The situation was rather catastrophic. His Doppelg. Ja had been completely destroyed. However, Second Kin did not divulge anything all this time. He was also extremely curious. Considering Kin Xin's temper, who could approach him and hurt him to this extent? Eldest young Sir Kin rubbed his chin and looked back again at Second Kin's courtyard before departing quietly. The low ranked maid servants in charge of menial chores in the courtyard all kept their head and eyes down. They were afraid of chatting casually. You've got to be kidding. The moody second young sir had ordered for some of their companions to be towed away because the latter had failed to speak and act prudently. They still wanted to live on. Only by listening to the second young sir's instructions and not acting on their own would they be able to live. Second kin kicked the door to his room shut and sat down frustratedly at the table. He held his porcelain cup and relived the scene of that icy arrow stabbing into his heart. The porcelain cup in his hand abruptly shattered. Chapter 2248 That is the crown prince of the divine province, the nether province, in the outskirts 15 kilometers away from Great Harmony City. Night had fallen, a hawk cry pierced through the sky. The vigorous hawk king carried a group of people as it flew speedily from afar. They had already flown non-stop for one day and night. So everyone was already quite exhausted. After some discussion, they directed the hawk downward and dismounted. Fourteen people came down from the hawk. They found a clean place and made a small campfire. So tired. After this long journey, Wicca's face had practically lost its glow. At this moment, she was bending her waist and pounding her aching legs and shoulders with her fist. Ali was also in the same situation, but Zero he was a prideful man. No matter how tired he was. He wouldn't be complaining non-stop and pounding here and there without regard to anyone else. Don't worry, my lady, we will reach the capital city in another four to six hours. The elder who spoke smiled as he poked at the campfire. We will rest here for one night and leave tomorrow at dawn. As he spoke sternly, understood. Everyone took out rice and vegetables from their inner worlds and they started cooking dinner. Asu did not say anything else. He just left the group by himself and looked up at the curved moon in the night sky. Brother Asu here. Aka walked up to him happily and handed him a rabbit drumstick. Asu glanced at her before taking it. He sat down on the spot under a tree. Brother Asu, what are you thinking about? Aka sat down beside him and asked with smile. Nothing. Asu did not feel like talking with her. So he responded curtly as he tore the rabbit meat. Since brother Asi has returned to the nether province now, you can naturally avenge all your past grievances. Uka chattered, especially when brother Asi returned to the tribe not long ago and was pursued by the northern Mo crown prince's assassins. You had nearly lost your life. Uka was furious talking about this. At that time, the three of them were hurrying back to the Akdo tribe with several hundred personal guards. The people the northern Mo crown prince dispatched surrounded them halfway in hot pursuit. When Aaka thought about how she had nearly lost her life on their way back, she gnashed her teeth in anger. Now that we have already returned to the nether province, we can deal with that conceited man. Dispatch more people there. It's fine if they end up eradicating his tiny northern Mo kingdom. Asi glanced at her and snorted. The sky above northern Mo is encircled by talisman matrices. Ordinary people can't go back at all. Then we'll just take this lying down. Aka clenched her fists in anger. Back then, 
that Northern Mo Crown Prince truly had sent people to assassinate them the entire way. It started from when they left the capital of Northern Mo all the way back to the Akdo tribe. This dogged persistence was simply commendable. What do you understand? Asi ruffled his hair in frustration. If those dual star immortal spirit cuffs didn't aggravate Crown Prince Mo back then, it probably wouldn't have caused everything that happened afterwards. The Northern Mo Crown Prince isn't that simple. What is the for Brother Arisa to fear about the Crown Prince of a tiny kingdom in a lower star domain? Aako harumphed. He isn't the Crown Prince of some tiny Northern Mo kingdom. Asi leaned against the tree and looked up at the overhanging clouds. He said coldly, that is the Crown Prince of the Divine Province. Aako, you're too ill-informed. Aako widened her eyes in disbelief. Chapter 2249 J Tablet After stirring awake, Kiao Mu was informed by Mo Lian that her 10,000 jade tablets had arrived. The little fellow naturally ran outside excitedly to look at her blank jade tablets. She picked one up and inspected it. It was thin and the jade was extremely translucent. It was perfect for crafting jade talismans. Crown Prince Mo stood beside her with a smile and asked, How are these blank jade tablets? If you think that they are still too thick. I can have them work on it some more. It's very good. Kiao Mu nodded emphatically and put the cases of uniformly sized jade tablets into her inner world. I am very satisfied. At this moment, they were standing in front of the residence that they had just bought. Even though the small residence only consisted of two consecutive courtyards, it was more than sufficient for the two of them to live here discreetly for a short while. It did not take much effort to move from the into this small residence. The two black-hearted fellows both tacitly left the groups of women Mo Kun had sent over at the inn to continue serving as menial servants. They proclaimed that the owner of the inn had taken good care of them during this period of time, so they had left behind several beauties as a small token of their regard. Thus, those delicate beauties pitifully remained at the inn performing menial tasks all day. They had cursed this crown prince to no end and regretted coming here. If they had known that this person was such a black-hearted character, how would they have fought to come over? After putting away the several dozen cases of blank jade tablets, Kiao Mu retrieved 100 and returned to her room to draw talismans. Among the several types of talismans she had grasped last time, other than the doppelgate tilde current Sinja talisman that left a deep impression, she had also learned to draw the ghost inviting curse. At this time, she perused the remaining demonstration talismans. She grabbed something called a soul separation talisman and examined it. This was. It was so miraculous. This soul separation talisman allowed one to extract one's soul, which could speed up the cultivation of the spiritual conscious or the divine conscious. This method was simply unheard of. According to the manual of this talisman though, Cultivating one's extracted spiritual conscious would be very fast. However, she recalled how her master had previously said that her soul was not stable. She couldn't help but feel hesitant. It was better to be prudent about using this soul separation talisman. The little fellow put away that soul separation demonstration talisman. She bent over and carved around a dozen doppelgate tilde currency ninja talismans to her satisfaction before putting away the remaining blank jade tablets. She looked happily at the dozen doppelgate tilde currency ninja talismans she had just carved. She touched the runes on the talismans before running out enthusiastically to share her joy with with Molian. She was now a black level grand talisman practitioner. She was able to carve jade talismans, and the quality of the finished item looked fantastic. Molian saw her running over with many jade talismans in her hands. He took one and examined it curiously before asking with a nod, how about I try it out? Okay. Kiao Mu nodded and gave him a doppelgate tilde current Sinja talisman. Molian skillfully activated the talisman and used it on himself. A wave of talisman energy abruptly entered his body, and he felt like his body had become lighter. Two illusory afterimages popped up beside him. Molian moved, and the two afterimages raised their arms with him. They smoothly followed the main body in doing a set of punches. After he thrust his palm at the stone stool in front of him, the two afterimages also mimicked him. The three shallow bursts of energy landing simultaneously on the stone stool naturally split it into pieces. Molian nodded and asked, How long can this stop El Gatilda current Sinja talisman last? Chapter 2250 Really too beautiful.
It doesn't last too long, the little fellow's head drooped, she said glumly, only two minutes. That's already very good. Crown Prince Mo poked her forehead gently. The course of battle changes instantly. The time that two doppelgay tilde currency injures can buy you is more than enough. Besides, you can double up on this doppelgay tilde currency injure talisman of yours, right? Kiao Mu's eyes lit up as she looked up at him. How did you know? Crown Prince Mo chortled and walked to the living room while holding her petite hand. How can I not know your tendencies? With how you would directly throw out a pile of Doppel Gate Tilda Currency in your talismans, does that two minute restriction even limit you? It doesn't at all. At that time during battle, the little fellow would probably make a resplendent show while throwing out Doppel Gate Tilda Currency in your talismans non stop. Kiao Mu cracked a grin. She felt that her dear hubby truly was too smart. She had indeed stored a lot of doppelgay tilde currency and your talismans in her inner world. She planned to carve some more when she was free. Once she carved around a thousand or so, she just double up several dozen doppelgay tilde currency and your talismans once the first one's time limit ran out. Mischievous. Molian caressed her head with a smile. Kiao Mu docilely held his hand as they walked into the living room. They sat down at the table to eat breakfast. After subduing the Ani Prefecture and Shunshan Prefecture, they had basically dealt with mostly everything they needed to in the six prefectures. Kiao Mu did not want to deal with the remaining trivial matters. She just tossed everything to Dunzu to take care of. After we finish eating, Let's go out on the streets for a stroll, okay? Molian naturally agreed with pleasure. It had been some time since they had arrived in the Ani Prefecture, yet he hadn't been able to walk around with his Kiao Kiao. The little fellow must have been feeling bored. Kiao Mu was in a very good mood. After quickly finishing her kanji and pastries, she scooted away and declared, I'm going to go change. Molian couldn't help chuckling and nodding at her back silhouette. Kiao Kiao. You already look very nice. No need to dress up more. Miss Giao still returned to her room and wiped her face. She also changed into a crimson dress. When she appeared before Molian, the little lady was like a ball of fire. Her fair and rosy skin looked so delicate in the sunlight. She looked very lovely. The crown prince's heart throbbed. He couldn't resist lifting her up and kissed her rosy forehead. My darling, have you specially changed into this red outfit? Molian teased. Because hubby is wearing dark red today? This remark was only meant to tease her, yet who knew that Kiao Mu would look up at him and nod affirmatively, MHM, to match. Molian was taken by surprise. He then put his forehead against hers and started laughing in a low voice. What should he do? There were ripples going through his heart. He felt like he was falling more in love by the day. The little lady was too adorable. We really are a perfect match. Crown Prince Mo lifted his Kiao Kiao up high and kissed her with a tight hug. My Kiao Kiao is so beautiful that I don't want anyone else to see. Kiao Mu blinked and suddenly took out a small mirror from her inner world. She checked herself out in the mirror and sighed with emotion. Sigh, I really am too beautiful. PFFT. Crown Prince Mo couldn't resist laughing out loud. He walked to the door while holding her petite hand. My heavens. His Kiao Kiao was too amusing. It was so adorable every time this little fellow acted cutely. Chapter 2251 Life's But a Stay. According to plan, Dunzu should be getting here today. Molian and Kiao Mu strolled leisurely along the street while holding hands. It really was quite cold outside. Because it had snowed lightly, the tips of the tree branches still had traces of white. Molian bent over to straighten the fire sable fur collar for her. He bundled her cloak more tightly around her. I'm not cold at all. Kiao Mu raised her head and told him. However, it couldn't be helped that Crown Prince Mo thought that she was cold. He even used a dim fire spirit to warm her up while holding her petite hand. Even though the winter wind was cold, the little fellow was feeling hot as they walked. She even wanted to take off her cloak. It's cold. Molian drew her collar together again. He reached out to carry her. I had better carry you. It's very cold. Kiao Mu evaded his hug with a reddened face and gave him a glare. Cold my SS. Would she feel cold at her cultivation level? You've got to be joking. Molian blinked. He did not feel that he was taking liberties with his wifey at all. He gave her an aggrieved look when she refused to let him carry her. He held her petite hand and said, 
I'm afraid that you'll be cold. I'm not cold. Kiao Mu cast him an indignant look. She was already wrapped up in a thick fire sable fur cloak. How could she be cold? Frankly speaking, even if she was merely wearing a thin spring garment, it was impossible for her to be cold at her cultivation level. Crown Prince Mo pulled back his hand dejectedly with a no. He stole a glance at his wifey. Kiao Kiao. What has Second Aunt Master been busy with these two days? Second Aunt Master is preparing supplies for the Divine Province. Molian, what is there to prepare? After we finish taking care of the matters here in the Ani Prefecture, we still need to return to the Shanshan Prefecture to pick up Xiao Huang. Kiao Mu lowered her head and mused. Molian did not comment. There was no problem for Kiao Kia to bring all her friends and family to the Divine Province. The problem was. What was there for Second Dant Master to prepare? Everyone had in the worlds. There was nothing that the Divine Province did not have that they needed to replenish here. Second Dant Master heard that the prices in the Divine Province were particularly high. That's why she was thinking of buying any necessities here in any prefecture if possible. Crown Prince Mo was confused. Were the prices in the Divine Province very high? He didn't think so. Kiao Kiao. Tell Aunt Master that she doesn't need to worry. I'll guarantee that she will not want for anything in the Divine Province. There is nothing for her to think over. Kiao Mu looked at him. Since Aunt Master wants to prepare more, just let her. Molian nodded helplessly. Just as they were chatting, shrieks could be heard from the front of the street. My heavens, this ghost spirit is truly ferocious. How dare it appear in broad daylight. This Taoist priest, Watch out. Kiao Mu and Molian looked at each other before hurrying over. They made their way through the crowd and took a look. They saw a familiar Taoist priest darting here and there, up and down. He was wielding a beechwood sword and acted like he was in a desperate battle with a ghost. At first glance, his flushed red face looked more like he was constipated. Kiao Mu silently twitched her lips. She recognized this guy at once as the swindler Taoist priest she had seen in Kieta village. He really had put his life on the line, journeying everywhere and kicking up a fuss all the way here in the Ani prefecture. Kiao Mu looked at this Taoist priest with a loss for words. She did not know how to respond to his embarrassing acting. It truly was a small world. She had run into this crackpot Taoist priest again. Chapter 2252 Gift Everybody quickly get away. This ghost spirit is particularly powerful. Don't let him bump into you at all costs. The Taoist priest cried out. He gave a shout, and then he started spinning his flying sword. As if it had a mind of its own, it battled agilely in the air with a cloud of black smoke. The spectacle mystified everyone, but that didn't stop them from clapping their hands and cheering. Kiao Mu. She had already made out the fact that the Taoist priest was manipulating the flying sword's dancing movements with sky cicada silk which was mostly imperceptible to normal people. From the looks of it, he seemed to be someone with great abilities to be able to control the sword from a distance. The embarrassing performance made even Molian find it shameful to watch. Yet who knew that the Taoist priest would actually jump up at the last moment and grab that cloud of black smoke. He was so involved in his theatrics and shouted, Where do you think you're running? Kiao Mu. Ah. She really wanted to crush this fraud of a Taoist priest. Bah! The Taoist priest spat out saliva and then gave another grunt. He acted like he was falling down while clutching to that cloud of black smoke. He crashed to the ground and then wiped out the rising black smoke with his fists. After watching the Taoist priest's brilliant show of subduing a ghost spirit, the spectators cheered and clapped. Kiao Mu looked speechlessly at her dear hubby. Molian couldn't resist shortling. He squeezed her petite hand and whispered, Life isn't easy, so just let him be. This was also the other person's way of earning a living, so Kiao Mu naturally wouldn't recklessly expose him. At any rate, this drama queen had been darting about throughout his performance. His physical efforts deserved some tips, but in reality, there really weren't that many tips. After going around, the Taoist priest only received a paltry two-spirit currency. It looked to Kiao Mu like he was about to cry. Glang! Kiao Mu threw ten-spirit currency into the Taoist priest's arms bowl. The Taoist priest quickly turned around to look. A little lady in red clothes who was as dazzling as the brightest pearl, and as fiery as their hottest fire, was looking expressionlessly at him. 
It would be more perfect if she showed the slightest bit of expression. The Taoist priest mused. He rubbed his hands together and walked over to her with a chuckle. He bowed with cupped hands and asked, Little, little lady, is it you? The little lady from Kieta village. The last time they met had been on the streets of the Shunshan prefecture. He naturally could not forget the little lady's exquisite stoic face. Kiao Mu eyed him. You have some foundation in drawing talismans? Th Taoist priest explained dejectedly, not much. My late master had taught me for some time when I was young, but I don't know whether it was because I did not have the talent for it, I wasn't able to grasp most of them. Kiao Mu shook her head. The reason you weren't able to grasp them was that your late master did not teach you all of the talismans. You only learned incomplete talisman techniques. We have run into each other three times since I was young, so consider it fate. Kiao Mu waved her slender hand, and a thin booklet landed in the Taoist priest's hands. This is a portion of the basic talisman drawing methods of defensive talismans, attack talismans, and mobilization talismans. After learning them, you shouldn't have much problem dealing with normal intermediate level ghost spirits. In the future, you won't have to put on such an embarrassing performance anymore. The Taoist priest gingerly flipped open the booklet with a palpitating heart. By the time he looked up again, the little stoic and that red clothed man had already walked far away while hand in hand. The Taoist priest ran several steps after them and cried out, Miss! Master, thank you. At this time, the Taoist priest was unaware how this thin booklet would completely transform his future. Chapter 2253 Difference It looks like it's starting to snow again. Kiamu caught a glistening snowflake and looked up at Molian. MHM. He took her petite hand and took out an oil paper umbrella from his inner world with his other hand. He put it up above them and looked down at her with a smile. Are you feeling cold? I'm not cold at all. Okay, okay, okay. My Kiyoki I was in the peak of health. Molian squeezed her petite hand and stopped in front of a shop. Do you want to go inside and check it out? Kiao Mu looked up and saw the gold lettered signboard indicating that this was a talisman shop. There was a bustling crowd inside. MHM. The little fellow's interest was piqued. She had always wanted to gauge the talisman crafting skill in each domain. Back on Saikong Planet, only the talismans that the talisman patrician family's Mu Jingrui had crafted caught her fancy. The others were me. The little fellow walked in front excitedly while still holding tightly to Molian. The crown prince followed along. He turned his head slowly, and his phoenix eyes flashed sharply when he glanced at the end of the street. There was a busy flow of people inside the talisman shop. All the customers who passed by Kiao Mu and Molian were happily holding small exquisite boxes. Molian removed the little fellow's hood and took off her cloak. This revealed a delicate and fair face. She was looking straight at him with round eyes. Sigh, she was getting prettier and prettier. He remembered that the first time they met, the seven-year-old child was so malnourished that she looked like a five-year-old. With the sunlight's nurturing, this small flower was now blossoming gracefully. He caressed her petite face, and his phoenix eyes curved into a smile. For a moment, the bustling customers in the shop were drawn by the couple's graceful bearing. Until, a yellow rank defensive talisman matrix, everybody come and look. A shout came from the second floor railing. The customers on the first floor all looked up. In front of the shop assistant who had shouted for everyone's attention was an array of 128 yellow talismans that formed a circular defensive talisman matrix. This type of defensive talisman matrix can block the attacks of a level 4 spiritual cultivator and below for at least 5 minutes. This defensive talisman matrix set can be reused 3 times and more until all the talisman energy is used up. What is everyone still hesitating for? The starting bid is 8000 spirit currency and each bid increases 100 spirit currency. Those who want to buy can start now. 8100, 8200, 8500. Everybody was looking up and pointing as they discussed with each other in low voices. They were all exhilarated. Kiao Mu was at a loss for words as she looked at that defensive talisman matrix formed by yellow talismans. She mused. Was this the difference? These talismans circulating on the market were basically crafted from talisman paper. Even ebony talismans were not often seen. No, 
she had yet to see them, actually, even though jade talismans were said to be rare, she had at least seen those before. Could it be that people simply didn't know Ebony to be a suitable material? Kiyamu found it a bit absurd watching them fighting for this lousy defensive talisman matrix. A yellow rank defensive talisman matrix formed from 128 yellow talismans could only defend for 5 minutes. What kind of joke was this? This talisman matrix was crafted by Master Jiang Hong. Too incredible. I heard that the master took infinite pains to draw this talisman matrix over 3 months time. Kiao Mu only felt a boulder crushing down on her petite head. Chapter 2254 It's over. 3, 3, 3 months. Just to draw this defensive talisman matrix. Oh my heavens. Moli Ann looked down at the little lady's flabbergasted expression and could not help but want to laugh. What's wrong? Th they spent three months just to draw a defensive talisman matrix? She couldn't imagine it. Yeo Kiao, you're stuttering from shock. Moli Ann twitched his mouth. You didn't drink or eat for three months just to draw a defensive talisman matrix. You, you, how can you even earn money? You'd starve to death. This should be a normal talisman practitioner's actual speed. Molian pulled her to him and caressed her petite hand comfortingly. He sent her a look, darling, you must not divulge your speed at crafting talismans. He really was afraid that this tactless child would thoughtlessly let the cat out of the bag. Even if the talisman practitioners didn't beat her to death, she would certainly drown in their spit. The scariest thing was that there were originally few talisman practitioners. Everybody did not help for them to die from anger. Even though Miss Gia was expressionless, her inner mind was grumbling. Heavens, these people need three months to spew out to 128 talisman talisman matrix. Everything would be over if they were relying on the talisman matrix to fight. 10,000. 10,000 spirit currency. This esteemed customer is bidding 10,000 spirit currency. Is there a higher bidder? 10,000 spirit currency. 10,000 is the current bid. The defensive talisman matrix wouldn't sell for too much, most likely due to its lousy 5 minute defense. Moreover, it could only be used 3 times. After doing the math, ordinary people couldn't afford to spend 3000 spirit currency for each use. The majority showed signs of retreat with the high bid of 10,000. Most of the people were there to watch the excitement. Only a few people were actually making bids. I went 1000. I request to see Master Jiang Hong. This voice was accompanied by an intruding cold presence. Everybody turned around and saw a tall and large person in a black cloak blocking the sunlight at the entrance. I went 1000. The seller's eyes lit up, he said with a smile, you must be GA King Academy's fire spirit specialty instructor. The show persistent smiled obsequiously after identifying the blaze insignia on his chest. Does anyone wish to bid higher than GA King Academy's instructor? I went a thousand once, I went a thousand twice, I went a thousand three times. Everyone let out gasps, Jie King Academy really was prominent. One of its fire spirit specialty instructors could buy a defensive talisman matrix for 20,000 without batting an eyelid. In contrast, it was considered excellent for normal people like them to earn 4 to 5,000 spirit currency in their lifetime, let alone 20,000 spirit currency. They didn't even have to dream about it. I hear that someone wants to see me. A middle-aged but still attractive woman appeared at the second floor railing. The woman's brows were smiling as she leaned against the railing. You are the talisman master? The burly man asked with a smile. Is this master interested in joining our academy? We can discuss all conditions with our dean. Oh, does Jie King Academy want to establish the lead talisman academy branch of the six prefectures continent? The fire spirit specialty instructor just smiled. He said. If the master is willing to come with me, all your queries will be answered. She isn't some master. She's a fraud. A shout came from the entrance. There was a flurry of footsteps. A youth covered in injuries, with his face disfigured, stumbled in from the back. How dare you punks still run? Chapter 2255 Fraud She's a fraud. She isn't some talisman master at all. She is a freaking DMN fraud. She was not the one who drew this talisman matrix. As the youth yelled at the top of his lungs, several burly men chasing after him restrained his arms. Get away from me. 
The youth hollered, he reflexively flung two mid-rank yellow attack talismans at the men. The two men who got hit by the attack talismans without warning wobbled and backed away. This DMN punk. One man who had black cloth wrapped around his head lunged at the youth with gleaming eyes. You're seeking death, you bunch of accomplices. The short youth howled furiously. This so-called master Jiang Hong tricked six talisman practitioners into her private compound. She proclaimed that she had a fragmentary defensive talisman scroll to share with us and would teach us how to draw yellow rank defensive talismans for free. In reality, she imprisoned us in that compound, so that we could draw defensive talismans for her for free. She confiscated all the defensive talismans we drew as her own. Ha! Huh. Jiang Hong crossed her arms as she stood in front of the second floor railing, looking down loftily at that tattered clothed youth. What kind of joke is this? I need to rely on you to create a defensive talisman matrix? Ahahaha. <laughs> Jiang Hong looked at him coldly and jabbed his heart with every word. You yourself are merely just a lowly intermediate level talisman practitioner. How can you accuse someone else and say that you can draw yellow rank talismans? You think just anybody in this world can draw or yellow rank defensive talismans? Ahahaha. <laughs> Jiang Hong spoke mockingly and started laughing maliciously. Other people nodded at her logic. They started chiming. Yeah? You can't just accuse someone randomly like that. Might you have some evidence saying all this? The youth was in a mess, and his face bruised. He clenched his fists at these words. Everything I am saying is true. I, this woman, sh she used a secret technique to temporarily advance our abilities but but that secret technique is extremely harmful to our bodies one month later we will all momentarily lose the ability to draw talismans yes i am an intermediate level talisman practitioner but but in the six prefectures how many true yellow level talisman practitioners can there be? This woman isn't a yellow level talisman practitioner either. Everybody looked at each other in bewilderment as they mulled over what the youth said. However, Jiang Hong shouted in chagrin, you're spouting nonsense. Quickly take down this guy. If you have the guts, draw a yellow rank talisman right here and now. Don't pull me. You evil people. You will pay for this. That fire spirit specialty mentor from Mani Prefecture's Jiaking Academy couldn't help knitting his brows. Just as the burly man was about to roughly drag that youth out the door, Kiao Mu stuck out her leg and forcefully kicked one of the burly men from behind. Everybody watched as that man whizzed out the door like a balloon. The remaining men abruptly turned around and gave a start when they saw Kiao Mu. This miss. What are you doing? Before they could finish speaking. The little lady kicked another person's leg. Everybody heard a crisp cracking sound. Chapter 2256 Turtle Speed. That towering man's leg broke from the little lady's flying kick. Ow! That man yowled and collapsed to the floor. The little lady looked at him expressionlessly. She knitted her brows and made a grab through the air, bringing that bewildered and nervous youth to her. You, what do you want? That youth looked to be only 13 or 14. Because his face was beaten black and blue, she wasn't able to make out his features clearly from far away. She didn't realize he was actually so young. Kiam Yu felt that this lad had some potential being an intermediate level talisman practitioner at this age. A talisman practitioner primarily had to rely on their own talisman energy when crafting talismans. The strength of their talisman energy would affect the level at which they crafted talismans. For example, Kiam you could make out from the talisman energy flowing through his body that he was indeed an intermediate level talisman practitioner, but at this moment, Kiam you furrowed her brow when she saw the black and turbid cloud at the area between his brows. Could it be that this so-called master Jiang Hong had used a curse to forcefully advance their talisman energy levels? The energy from this curse had now disappeared, but the remnant energy was harmful to their bodies. If it was not removed in time, it would greatly affect their future talisman energy advancement. These clueless dummies had thought their advancement was due to a secret technique. It was merely due to a curse. Kiam Yu stealthily took out a purifying talisman and waved it while sandwiching it between her fingers. A streak of talisman energy with purifying properties darted into the area between the youth's brows and swallowed up the black cloud. The youth jolted, even though he didn't know what had happened. 
He felt that his spiritual conscious had cleared up in an instant. He felt like there were several wisps of talisman energy suddenly flowing through his body. Hey! What are you still gawking for? Kiao Mu tilted her head and looked at the youth. Draw an intermediate level defensive talisman for me to see. Jiang Hong's face turned green from anger. She pointed at Kiao Mu and shouted, What are you all still standing there for? Chase both of them out. Just anyone could stomp all over her. Was that it? She was a rare yellow level grand talisman practitioner. It was only natural that she received everyone's respect not their accusations and abuses. At Jiang Hong's order, the show persistents also ran aggressively toward Kiao Mu and them. However, Mo Lian flicked them away with several bursts of energy before they could get close. The show persistents tumbled to the floor, unable to get back up. On the other hand, Kiao Mu looked leisurely at that shocked youth. Hey, why are you still blanking out? Hurry up and draw. Ah, yes, yes. The youth quickly nodded. He turned around and saw the short table at the foot of the stairs. He jogged up to that short table, which had a talisman pen and blank talisman paper. He started drawing with devout concentration. From his stance, it was evident that he was someone who could draw talismans. After 15 minutes, the shop was silent. Kiao Mu looked exasperatedly at the youth who was still completely focused on drawing the talisman. After another half hour, that lad had still not finished drawing a simple mid-rank defensive talisman. Kiao Mu was totally speechless. She was shocked to no end. With his speed, let alone going out right now to battle other people, even three days preparation wouldn't give him enough time to produce a handful of attack talismans. Chapter 2257 Who's Kicking Out Whom? Let alone Kiao Mu, any random person probably wouldn't think much of this lousy speed. Right. A round of applause suddenly broke out in the hall. This young brother is extraordinary. He can actually concentrate on drawing a talisman in front of us. My heavens. Look at how steady this young brother's hand is. I'm guessing that he will complete the talisman in a bit. Incredible. Incredible. Such a high success rate. Apparently it is very difficult to succeed in drawing a talisman with one try. All this lively chatter of praises poured into Kiao Mu's ears. She had a strange expression and didn't even know what to say. This. Wasn't this just normal talisman drawing? What was that to praise? Mo Lian looked down at his wifey's confused expression, and he couldn't help but be amused. He squeezed her petite hand and asked in a low voice, Kiao Kiao thinks that this lad is rather good at drawing talismans? Kiao Mu nodded. With proper training, he will definitely become accomplished in the future. The most important thing was that she had never seen anyone who could draw talismans well. Once she grew up, she needed people to back her too. For instance, if she had a bunch of pill alchemists, and then a bunch of talisman practitioners, everybody could then fight together right? How tiring would it be if she had to handle everything herself? Crown Prince Mo instantly understood what the little fellow was thinking, he nodded as he caressed her head with smiling phoenix eyes. My Kiao Kiao is quickly growing up. This little fellow has started thinking about training her own forces. How nice. Kiao Mu's eyes lit up. You also think that it's a good idea to keep this lad? Crown Prince Mo looked at the youth in distaste before nodding reluctantly. Even though he's a greenhorn. He could be useful with proper training. Kiao Mu nodded repeatedly. She turned to look at the youth who was still drawing the talisman at the table. Even though this fellow's speed at drawing talismans was not on the same level as hers, he had a rather serious and careful attitude when drawing them. He had potential. Kiao Mu trotted up next to the youth with her hands behind her back and closely watched him draw the talisman. On the other hand, Jiang Hong, who was standing on the second floor was nearly exploding from anger. She turned around and exerted pressure on the talisman shop's shopkeeper. You'll just let these people continue with this nonsense here? If you don't kick them out, careful that I cut off your supply. The shopkeeper couldn't sit still anymore when he heard this. How could he let Jiang Hong cut their supply? The defensive talismans and attack talismans Jiang Hong produced were all high rank and even yellow rank talismans. They usually sold very well. But if Jiang Hong truly got irked and refused to sell them at his shop in the future, that would be a huge loss. After making his decision, the shopkeeper hastily waved his hand and shouted, 
quickly kick out those loiterers, who allowed them to use my talisman pen and blank talisman paper and start drawing talismans on the spot, throw out that conceited punk, and also them. When the shopkeeper pointed at Kiyamu and Molian, he was clearly taken aback by their outstanding appearance. Afterwards, he still gritted his teeth and declared, kick out any troublemakers too. Even after the shopkeeper gave his order, the shop assistants did not move. Rather, the people lying on the ground continued to groan as they pressed their hands against their waists and backs, rolling back and forth on the floor. The shopkeeper's eyes were about to pop out. This, chapter 2258 shock. So who the freak is kicking out whom? The shop assistants that could fight were all lying on the floor right now, let alone kicking someone out. It was a question whether they could take care of themselves right now. The shopkeeper cursed when he saw the shop assistants lying on the floor. His heart ached terribly. Who was the unlucky one if a shop assistant got injured? It would be him, the shopkeeper. At that time, he would have to pay for this and do that. If he didn't take care of it well, the shop assistant's family might even come and make a fuss. Just thinking about it gave the shopkeeper a headache. However, he couldn't just ignore Jiang Hong. The shopkeeper swiftly went down the stairs and walked up to Kiao Mu and Mo Lian while rubbing his hands and giving an apologetic smile. How should I refer to these two customers? Mo Lian raised his head pridefully. Kiao Mu naturally wouldn't respond to his nonsense either. Seeing that they weren't paying him any attention, the shopkeeper could only continue smiling apologetically. This humble shop conducts business with little capital. It cannot take any disturbance. If you did not come with the intent to purchase talismans, then slap. Kiao Mu slapped the old geezer's face with a blue talisman. How dare this ignorant old geezer chase her hubby out. He truly had eaten the guts of a leopard. She had originally come to watch the fun and did not intend to sell talismans. But she changed her mind now. Why was this lot acting so arrogantly in front of her? Wasn't it just a lousy yellow rank defensive talisman matrix? What was that to fuss about? She directly used jade talismans to craft defensive talisman matrices now, and not talisman paper. The shopkeeper dumbfoundedly caught the blue defensive talisman that drifted down. His hands couldn't help but start to tremble. It, it was a yellow rank talisman and at the fine grade too, a fine grade blue talisman. He had been at this shop for so many years but had rarely seen this kind of fine grade blue talisman. Usual grand talisman practitioners would keep any fine grade blue talismans they produced for their own or their clan's use. They wouldn't be selling them. It took great effort to produce a talisman, and the success rate was also exceedingly low. It would take at least several days time to successfully produce a blue talisman. Miss. I is there a reason for this blue defensive talisman? The shopkeeper's voice trembled from emotion. I'm selling. Kiao Mu also took out two blue storage talismans and slapped them all on the shopkeeper's face. Also selling these two storage talismans. 10,000 spirit currency each without an upper bid limit. Auction them. Molian stepped close to his wifey with a grin. Kiao Kiao was so amazing. It was clear that she was getting back at them for him. The talisman shop turned silent for a moment moment before everyone heaved deep gasps, they could not control their excitement. Everybody started discussing excitedly. Storage talismans? Is it that storage talisman of legends? My heavens, this is the first time I've seen a storage talisman on the market. Ah, this miss. What miss? She's a master. Ah right, right, master. Master, can you tell us? How much ST storage space does this storage talisman have? Everybody was fixated on the storage talismans and looked fervently at Kiao Mu. Kiao Mu deadpanned, each blue yellow rank storage talismans can store 30 cubic meters, including living things. You can store and withdraw 1000 times. Everyone was shocked. Chapter 2259 Don't overthink, I just happened to pass by. TH 30 cubic meters and could even store and withdraw living things, with 1000 uses, wasn't this too exaggerating, this kind of storage talisman with practical usage naturally made everyone's eyes gleam, they couldn't resist trying their hand at bidding, if that defensive talisman matrix previously was basically useless, this storage talisman the little lady took out was too useful. That fire spirit specialty mentor from GA King Academy couldn't resist either and stepped forward. 11,000, 
I want a storage talisman. The shopkeeper couldn't stop his surging excitement and hastily asked Miss Kiao, young master, what might the effects of th this defensive talisman? It can withstand the all-out attacks of two spiritual cultivators level 7 and below for one hour. It can be used for at least 10 times. Kiao Mu spoke nonchalantly, everybody immediately turned stupefied. That fire spirit specialty mentor from GA King Academy who had just purchased the defensive talisman matrix for 20,000, especially, couldn't help but be embarrassed. He had taken out so much money in an effort to recruit Master Jiang Hong for the academy, yet, yet the latter couldn't even hold a candle to the young master. It was only a single yellow rank defensive talisman, yet the effects lasted for an hour, while the talisman matrix consisting of 128 defensive talismans he had purchased earlier only freaking lasted for 5 minutes, and merely against spiritual cultivators level 4 and below. The amount of uses was also tripled. There was truly no competition between the two. Although this little lady was young. Her ability had reached a masterful level. It was truly too astounding. Kiao Mu cast a glance at the dumbstruck shopkeeper and barked impatiently, Are you auctioning or not? The shopkeeper immediately recovered his wits and nodded repeatedly. Yes, yes. We're all auctioning. Everybody heard right. Th these three talismans each have starting bids of 10,000. If everybody start making your offers. The shopkeeper was stammering from his turbulent emotions. He was not disappointed, as sure enough, everybody started bidding with fear or the first to auction was a blue storage talisman. In the end, it was auctioned off at 100,000 spirit currency snatched up by the fire spirit specialty mentor from GA King Academy. The bidding for the second storage talisman became even more intense. It was at last bought by a rich family at the price of 150,000 spirit currency. Additionally, the defensive talisman was sold at the price of 90,000. By practice, the talisman shop would take a commission of 2%, which meant the shopkeeper would earn several thousand spirit currency from just the commission alone. Moreover, after word gets out about this storage talisman, the talisman shop's reputation would naturally soar. By this time, the shopkeeper was treating Kiao Mu completely differently. He smiled obsequiously and said amiably, Young master, might you be interested in making a business deal? Kiao Mu glanced at him and took the spirit currency card with 333,000 spirit currency from him stuffing it into her inner world. I just happened to pass by. Don't think too much. She had merely wanted to take him down a notch after his disrespectful attitude to them earlier. Don't think that she didn't have a temper. The shopkeeper immediately became crestfallen. He trailed behind Kiao Mu and said, this one was blind earlier for not recognizing the young master's abilities. If the young master is willing to provide the shop with one blue storage talisman every three months, we can discuss the price. You can also make any other requests. Chapter 2260 No Competition Kiao Mu walked over to the youth while holding Crown Prince Mo's hand. At this time, the youth had finally finished drawing a mid-rank defensive talisman. Kiao Mu picked it up and examined it. This child had a good foundation, but his hand was too stiff when drawing. The critical point was his speed. He was too slow. This kind of speed spelled certain defeat in battle. Kiao Mu looked at him. What's your name? By now, the youth had already learned that Kiao Mu had just sold storage talismans. He looked at her full of reverence and stuttered. My my name is Zihuan. Kiao Mu nodded. She said directly, you have a good foundation in talisman techniques. You should be able to become a true yellow level talisman practitioner with proper training. Are you willing? MHM, MHM, MHM. I am, I am, I am willing. Kiao Mu was speechless. She hadn't finished talking, yet the youth had already agreed eagerly to her request. How should she deal with this? Molian cast that child a glance and harumphed. Lad, practice restraint. Zihuan, could restraint feed him? He had such a great opportunity in front of him right now, and he even had the chance to learn from a true yellow level grand talisman practitioner in the future. Why shouldn't he agree, master? Zihuan stammered, are you a yellow level grand talisman practitioner? When Kiao Mu shook her head, the sound of ridiculing laughter came from the second floor railing. Ha ha ha, 
she's the fraud. She's just casually selling her own master's talismans. How could she be a yellow level talisman practitioner at her age? At most, she's just an intermediate level talisman practitioner like you. Zihuan was startled. Was it like that? Kiao Mu expressionlessly looked up to the second floor railing at Jiang Hong, whose face had contorted. She spoke evenly. I indeed am not a yellow level talisman practitioner. Jiang Hong smirked. I am a black level talisman practitioner. Jiang Hong's smile froze. She practically screeched on reflex. Impossible. How is it impossible? Kiao Mu looked at her indifferently. You're not me. How do you know that I haven't fulfilled the requirements of a black level talisman practitioner? In contrast, Zihuan's heart started beating wildly. He shouted, Master. You are a black level talisman practitioner, in other words, the yellow rank talismans this master took out to sell were just things that she no longer wanted. She could already produce black rank storage talismans now, all right, to her, that yellow rank talisman was simply useless. Jiang Hong's face alternated between red, green, and white. She felt like her heart was spasming from overload. She, she had trained for 44 years but had only just barely reached the proficient class as an advanced level talisman practitioner. Only by using a curse that increased her talisman energy could she barely produce several yellow rank talismans, yet this little lady in front of her was brazenly proclaiming that she was a black level talisman practitioner. Ha, ha 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 ha. Wasn't that the biggest joke in the world? She was already talking so big at such a young age. Jiang Hong sneered. Will you die if you don't talk big? Jiang Hong snickered. Do you have proof that you are a black level grand talisman practitioner? Unless you can draw a black rank talisman right now. Don't be so full of hot air. Chapter 2261 Total Waste of Time Kiao Mu spoke indifferently to this woman whose expression had completely changed. I do not need to prove anything to you. This was the truth, and Kiao Mu was merely speaking this truth. Whether other people believed it had nothing to do with her, she did not need to produce a black rank talisman in front of other people just to prove herself either. Stand right there. Jiang Hong's face flushed red from anger when the little lady ignored her. You're afraid to accept this challenge? Or perhaps you really are a fraud? Jiang Hong smirked, seeing that you are so young, I might as well advise you not to talk too big. Otherwise, you might find yourself in a sticky situation. Kiao Mu swept her a look and asked expressionlessly, What? You want to challenge me? Jiang Hong was naturally unwilling to challenge this kind of opponent with unknown ability. But for some reason, she could not get rid of the anger stifled in her chest when she looked at the girl's calm and stoic face. So what if I challenge you? Jiang Hong hollered, do you dare accept? Accept. Kiao Mu shook her head. You aren't qualified to challenge me yet. If you really wanted to compete, I can give you some pointers. Everyone, Crown Prince Mo, who was holding the little fellow's hand couldn't resist smiling when he heard this. He knew the little fellow's ability in drawing talismans. Hence, in his eyes, his Kiao Kiao was too amusing. Yet in Jiang Hong's point of view, Kiao Mu's attitude could simply be said to be domineering. This young little lady actually said that she was not qualified to challenge her, and even wanted to give her pointers. Ha ha ha. Jiang Hong scoffed with a sullen expression. Okay, alright, fine. I'll give you an opportunity to give me pointers. At that time, let's see who will be giving whom pointers. Kiao Mu furrowed her brows when she saw Jiang Hong's suppressed anger. How do you want to compete? This woman was being super weird. Everything she said was clearly the truth, but to that woman, it seemed like she was lying. With her ability at drawing talismans, did she need to lie? Kiao Mu was a bit irritated. She lowered her head. By the time she looked back up, her eyes had returned to calm. With two hours as the limit, whoever can draw a yellow rank immobilization talisman first is the winner. That's too long, Kiao Mu said coldly. What? The time is too long. I don't have that much time to waste with you. You. Jiang Hong was about to explode from anger. She was so incensed that she was losing her balance. Her eyes were nearly popping out from her sockets as she glared at Kiao Mu like her enemy. 
Her attitude was too arrogant. She actually said that drawing a yellow rank immobilization talisman in two hours was a waste of time. It was already lucky to draw a yellow rank immobilization talisman in two hours. There was a success rate in drawing talismans. Someone who had a success rate of 30% was already extremely talented. Those who were less proficient might only have a success rate of 20%, depending on the type. The success rate of fine grade blue talismans was much lower. Probably only a tenth of yellow talismans. Kiao Mu was confused. I read that normal people can draw around 10 fine grade blue talismans in one day. In other words, how come you can only draw one yellow talisman in two hours? Chapter 2262 Prepare for face slapping. Seriously? If you needed two hours to draw a yellow talisman, wouldn't it take you several days to draw blue talisman? Jiang Hong's face flushed red from anger, and her expression had contorted completely. You, you're boasting shamelessly. She berated. Have you never read a proper talisman book? Let me ask you, have you tested at the Talisman Practitioner Association before? Kiao Mu had never heard of the Talisman Practitioner Association before. After the little fellow grew up, she hadn't even gone to test at the pill house let alone the Talisman Practitioner Association. It felt like she was listening to a fantasy story now as she asked confusedly, Talisman Practitioner Association? Ha 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 ha. Jiang Hong smiled triumphantly, then how are you still calling yourself a black level Talisman Practitioner? It can't be self-proclaimed, right? She pointed at a round emblem on her chest. Do you see? This is the Talisman Practitioner Association's emblem. It's symbolized by an attack talisman and a defensive talisman. The yellow character on this emblem indicates that I am a yellow level talisman practitioner. You? Jiang Hong did feel like she was being a bit immature by getting angry with a little lady at her older age, but she just did not want to let go of this matter today. It was too aggravating. Anyone who was looked down on by a young gun without any talisman practitioner level indication and on top of that, told that she was not qualified as a challenger, wouldn't be able to take it either. She just wanted to face slap her in front of everyone. She wanted to let everyone see that this little lass was the true fraud. Kiao Mu looked at her chest puzzledly. Jiang Hong puffed out her chest proudly showing off that exquisite round emblem in front of everyone. The people in the hall all looked at each other questioningly before turning back to Kiao Mu. That's right, this master Jiang Hong was indeed a yellow level talisman practitioner. This emblem was authentic and issued by the Talisman Practitioner Association. There was definitely no mistake, rather, this little lady declared that she was a black level talisman practitioner, but she did not have any proof not even an emblem from the Talisman Practitioner Association. She had Yvonne. Possibly never heard of the Talisman Practitioner Association. Where in the countryside did this little lady come from? The Golden Talisman Jade Tome had said that a normal person could produce around 10 blue talismans in a day. That's why she was already especially outstanding for being able to produce 400 or so blue talismans in one night. Could it be that the normal person the Golden Talisman Jade Tome was referring to wasn't an actual normal person? but someone whose talent surpassed 95% of all other talisman practitioners. There was about 8 hours in one night. In other words, Miss Giao's average drawing speed allowed her to draw a hundred or so talismans every two hours. To her, this speed was very normal. If she retreated to Fish Orchid Planet and counted the 12 times difference in the flow of time there, as well as summoned two Doppelgay tilde current singers so she could slack off. Her production could possibly reach 4,000 or so talismans per every two hours. That's why Kiyam Yu thought that personally drawing talismans was better for cultivating her mind. There was no need to summon Doppelgay tilde current Sinja when out of battle. Drawing a dozen or two talismans each day would keep her in practice. If she finished drawing all 10,000 jade talismans in one go. What would she do in the future? No wonder hubby exhorted earnestly all day long that she should not tell other people her speed at crafting talismans. Chapter 2263 Switch Your Wager Kiao Mu glanced at Jiang Hong, not understanding why the latter was fuming mad. Didn't she just say that drawing a yellow talisman in two hours wasted too much time? Did she jab this great master Jiang Hong's sore spot? All right. Kiyam Yu reluctantly said, two hours it is. She could just draw faster. In any case, 
The contest would be decided whenever someone finished drawing. There was no need to be nitpicking with her, Jiang Hong said solemnly, since it is a contest, we naturally should be wagering something. After saying this, she took out 24 jade talismans from her sleeve. She injected them with spiritual energy, making them light up. Everybody let out surprised gasps. Jiang Hong dismissed everyone's fervent gazes and explained. This yellow rank defensive talisman matrix consisting of 24 jade talismans is worlds apart from the previous defensive talisman matrix, which was formed with paper talismans. They're jade talismans. Everybody's gazes were burning up as they stared at the jade talisman matrix. Jade talismans can be used for the entirety of one's lifetime as long as they are not destroyed. If you go to the Talisman Practitioner Association regularly and request for them to be injected with talisman energy, you can use them long term. The whole place let out surprised gasps at this statement. Jie King Academy's Fire Spirit Specialty Mentor also stared at the Jade Talismans fervently. Are you selling this Jade Talisman Matrix? This is my wager. Jiang Hong proudly proclaimed. Yet Kiam Yu waved her petite hand vigorously in distaste. I don't want that. Switch your wager, everyone. They suddenly really wanted to thrash this little lady to death. Mo Lian chortled as he looked at his wifey with a smile. His gaze was so devoted, as if the land and time had stopped at that moment. The fire spirit specialty mentor suddenly took out a pair of crimson rocks from his inner world and placed them in front of Kiao Mu. How about I exchange this pair of dragon fang souls for this talisman matrix? Even though dragon fang souls are a type of divine rank material and can greatly improve a divine weapon's attack speed, two pieces won't accomplish much. Mo Yu shook his head and deadpanned, their total value doesn't measure up to the jade talisman matrix. This deal would be a total loss. You have to add something more. The fire spirit specialty mentor was obviously taken aback. He naturally did not expect that to be an expert here. However, he truly coveted that jade talisman matrix. Thus, he could only grit his teeth and say, fine. I'll add two pieces of this. What do you think? This fire spirit specialty mentor took out another two palm-sized jade pieces that were shining. Everybody looked at each other, unclear on what these objects were. Mo Yu raised an eyebrow and then spoke evenly. These two pieces of jade look to be all right, but since we don't know what they are, we will only find out after using them. Fine, they can count. The fire spirit specialty mentor had been paying attention to Mo Lian's expression the whole time after he took out these two pieces of jade. Seeing that Mo Lian's expression didn't falter and hearing his analysis, he couldn't help but feel a bit disappointed. He had obtained these two pieces of jade many years ago when he was undergoing practical training deep inside a nameless mountain range. It had been so dangerous that besides himself, everyone else had gotten wiped out. However, he had just been holding on to these two pieces for so many years, unable to sell them. Everyone who saw these two jade pieces at first would be mesmerized by its appearance, but after the dazzling light on the jade disappeared, everyone had no idea what these two things were. Hence, no one had been willing to buy them off him all this time. Chapter 2264 Two Lousy Rocks This fire spirit specialty mentor from GA King Academy hesitated. But he still asked, you really don't know what this is? Mo Lian examined it questioningly for some time. It looks like a high rank material, but looking at it closely, it doesn't seem like it either. Look, the light on it has disappeared. Someone interjected. After the light disappeared, these two pieces of jade seemed no different from the most common jade that could be found on the market. They looked just like stall goods. Everybody chattered as they pointed at those two pieces of jade. Mo Lian creased his brows and asked, Do you have something else to substitute? Looking at them now, these two lousy rocks don't seem to be high rank materials at all. Nonsense. The fire spirit specialty mentor rebutted. I dug these two pieces of jade out from the depths of the nameless mountain range. That won't do. We don't know what these rocks are. Mo Lian shook his head and said, we'll be losing out with this exchange. You have to include more items. The fire spirit specialty mentor was a bit stifled, 
But that talisman matrix was truly too enticing. He gritted his teeth and took out a black stone from his inner world. Then how about including this myriad glazed stone too? Molian nodded. He furrowed his brows slightly and analyzed. The myriad glazed stone is just a heaven rank material. After polishing it and embedding it in a spiritual weapon, it can quicken the absorption of spiritual energy, but it is a bit lacking for forging divine weapons. Fine. We'll do the exchange like this. Crown Prince Mo's expression that said you got a real bargain really aggravated the fire spirit specialty mentor. On the side, Jiang Hong couldn't resist chortling from anger. She stared at Mo Lian and Kiao Mu aggressively and snarked. Sounds like you're definitely winning my wager. They were actually exchanging her wager with someone else in front of her, the past owner. Wasn't that just absurd? Mo Lian glanced at Jiang Hong nonchalantly and declared confidently, if you had my wife's talisman drawing ability, you would also be this confident. Jiang Hong wished for nothing more than for this young couple to drown in her spit. Both of them were just so hateful. Yet while Jiang Hong was there fuming in anger, more perceptive people already had their eyes on Crown Prince Mo. This young brother was so knowledgeable about forging weapons. It was obvious that he knew his stuff. From what he was saying, he seemed to be an engineer. Some people were hoping to go associate with him while other people were already squeezing their way toward the young couple. If they could connect with an engineer with a boundless future, it would be greatly beneficial to them and their clan. All right, stop speaking nonsense. Jiang Hong beckoned to Kiao Mu, who was downstairs. Come up to compete. Kiao Mu glanced at her. We'll do it here. In any case, it wasn't going to take much time. It was too troublesome to go up and down the stairs. Kiao Mu's disparaging attitude completely infuriated Jiang Hong. All the blood rushed to her head, and she stormed down to the first floor. She opened her arms and declared to the spectating customers, everyone. Today, I, Jiang Hong, will be competing with this young, great master. Here, I hope everyone can serve as witnesses. Jiang Hong purposely emphasized Jiang Great Master. Anyone could tell the sarcasm from her tone of voice. Chapter 2265 Faces Lapping Proceedings The young Great Master, Kiao Mu, stood in front of Jiang Hong with her hands behind her back. She remained expressionless as she watched this fuming woman's antics. Allow me to serve as referee. At this time, a white-bearded elder walked up with a smile. He cupped his hands toward everyone. Goodness, isn't this Annie Prefecture's famed old talisman practitioner song? Yes, yes. The old talisman practitioner is over 70 years old. His talisman drawing technique is second to none in our Annie Prefecture. I heard that the old talisman practitioner has already reached the peak of the black level perfected rank. He's only one small step from breaking through to become that what talisman practitioner, earth level? Ah, right, right, right. He's nearly about to break through to become an earth level talisman practitioner. Everybody looked at this old talisman practitioner with reverence. The elder was also very amiable and nodded with a benevolent smile at everyone who saluted him. Even Jiang Hong dared not make a fuss after seeing the old talisman practitioner. She saluted the old talisman practitioner respectfully. I have troubled you, old talisman practitioner Song. Kiao Mu also said thank you for the trouble. Then, she and Jiang Hong each sat down at two short tables. All talisman practitioners brought their own talisman pens, cinnabar, and the like. It was no exception for Kiao Mu and Jiang Hong either. They each took out their own talisman pen and started drawing on a talisman paper. To not stand out that much, Kiao Mu specially prepared cinnabar and pretended to dip her pen in it. In actuality, her talisman pen never required anything like cinnabar. After they started drawing, Everybody held their breaths as they watched these two competing talisman practitioners with shining eyes. Jiang Hong was over 40 years old and had drawn countless talismans. There was naturally no need to question her proficiency at drawing talismans. On the other hand, the little lady in red clothes sitting on the left side was even more incredible. She was so young, yet she stayed unruffled the entire time. Drawing a talisman in front of everyone did not perturb her at all. From the moment she picked up her talisman pen, her strokes flowed smoothly and speedily. 
and she completed drawing in a single breath. Everybody was dumbstruck when they saw this young great master put away her talisman pen. They all looked at each other and saw everyone else's flabbergasted expressions. What was the situation? The young great master had finished drawing, had three minutes even passed since the young great master sat down and picked up her pen to the completion of the talisman. To Kiao Mu, since there was no requirement that the grade had to be a blue talisman, how long could it take? Besides, the talisman was not jade or ebony, merely paper. She had already dipped her pen in cinnabar and dawdled for a bit. Once she started drawing, though, even she herself couldn't control the speed. It probably took less than one minute from the moment she moved her pen to when the talisman was completed. Old talisman practitioner Song was also dumbfounded. He hastily walked over while trembling, and picked up the yellow rank immobilization talisman that Kiao Mu had drawn. After inspecting it, he shouted excitedly, one yellow rank immobilization talisman. Wow! The entire hall was in an uproar. In contrast, Jiang Hong, who had just sat down and dipped her talisman pen in cinnabar, had only just drawn her first stroke. She gripped her talisman pen and yelled with a contorted expression, impossible. How was this possible? Mo Lian couldn't help but face palm. Look, this matter has definitely blown up. By the end of the day, the news that a grand talisman practitioner with a three-minute drawing speed had appeared would circulate through the entire Annie prefecture. Kiao Mu had already stood up and glanced in Jiang Hong's direction, I've won. Bring over your wager, Chapter 2266 Faces Lapping Proceedings, 2. Wasn't this person just begging to give up her wager? Impossible. Jiang Hong screeched. For a moment, her voice covered up everybody's excited clamors, and the atmosphere quieted down. Jiang Hong rushed up to the old talisman practitioner with two steps in place of three and snatched the yellow rank immobilization talisman that he was holding. She held it up in the air and shouted, Everybody look closely. In these 44 years, I have never seen a talisman practitioner who could draw a yellow rank immobilization talisman in three minutes. Think about it, everyone. This is simply an impossible feat. Jiang Hong shouted, as if to rouse everyone from their fantasies. She screamed at the top of her lungs. She clearly cheated. She cheated, Jiang Hong shouted, she must have hid a completed talismans in her sleeve beforehand and then made a switch. Kiao Mu looked at her puzzledly for a moment before asking, so many people were watching me draw the talisman. How could I switch out the talisman in my sleeve under everyone's watchful eyes? You couldn't be saying a joke, right? Jiang Hong looked at her coldly. Stop pretending. Everybody can search her sleeves. She must have hidden a lot of immobilization talismans, defensive talismans, and the like inside. Insolence. Seeing that there really were people approaching Kiao Mu and sleazily wanting to conduct a search, Crown Prince Mo shouted angrily. He flicked his sleeve, knocking those two men with ulterior motives flying. Kiao Mu patted Mo Lian to calm him down. She looked at Jiang Hong and said evenly, what you cannot accomplish in this lifetime does not mean other people cannot do so. The youth, Zihuan, nodded vigorously. That's right. Just now, I didn't even blink my eyes and watched the young great master draw the talisman. She simply completed it in a single breath from the moment her talisman pen touched the paper. She did not halt for a single moment, nor did she make any suspicious movements like reaching for her sleeve. This is clearly slander. You are envious of her amazing talisman drawing speed so you're framing her for cheating. Everyone agreed with Zhu Huan's logical argument. Even the referee, old talisman practitioner Song, nodded. Zhu Huan was extremely emotional. He had never seen someone drawing so smoothly without stopping in all these 14 years. Sure enough, this black level grand talisman practitioner was very formidable. He definitely had to learn from her. After making up his mind, Zihuan did not say anything during this chaos. He merely stood beside Kiao Mu and Mo Lian, berating Jiang Hong. Look, Kiao Mu took out a blank talisman paper and waved it in front of Jiang Hong. She then took out her talisman pen and just casually drew several strokes. This time, it truly took less than three minutes for a yellow rank immobilization talisman to appear before everyone. The old talisman practitioner held it emotionally in both hands. He examined it over and over again like a treasure. He shouted, 
a yellow rank immobilization talisman. Jiang Hong's eyes promptly turned round. She could feel her head sizzling with smoke. She froze on the spot and kept repeating deliriously, impossible, this is impossible. Jiang Hong felt like she was about to go mad. This time, she had personally watched the little lady draw a yellow rank immobilization talisman in minutes. Those strokes were so fluid and unrestrained, and a venomous snake had reared its head in her heart from envy. She could only repeat impossible like a broken recording stone. Chapter 2267 Face Lapping Proceedings 3. Impossible, impossible, impossible. How could the little lady have completed this yellow rank immobilization talisman with such extraordinary speed? Her gaze landed on Kiao Mu's hand, and she screeched. Her pen, her talisman pen, there's something fishy with her talisman pen. This talisman pen must be able to increase her speed and success rate. Kiao Mu had already put the talisman pen away in her inner world. She looked up and said nonchalantly, how laughable. You didn't say before the competition to bar personal equipment. Jiang Hong felt her brain buzz, like she was about to faint. You cheated, you cheated with your talisman pen. Are you dumb? Kiao Mu glanced at her and said, Good equipment equates cheating, don't be pestering me with your nonsense and bring over the wager. You can scram now. After all this babbling, Kiao Mu was already very annoyed. She grunted and looked at the shopkeeper. The latter immediately took the hint and picked up the brocade box with the jade talisman matrix. He walked quickly over to Kiao Mu. Just as Kiao Mu reached for it, Jiang Hong flew over in a frenzy and shouted, No. No, you cannot take away my jade talisman matrix. I'm not wagering this jade talisman matrix. Scram. Kiao Mu was infuriated, and promptly kicked away the pouncing Jiang Hong. Jiang Hong tumbled on the ground twice and crashed into a nearby cabinet. She pounded the ground angrily while lying there pitifully. Beach, how dare you snatch away my jade talisman matrix. My Jiang clan won't let you off. I will also file a report with the Talisman Practitioner Association and inform the president of all your wrongdoing. Ah, before she could finish talking, a streak of fire had already swept her out the door. Jiang Hong crashed outside heavily. Her innards shook, and she even vomited blood. However, it was unknown whether this was because of Mo Lian's attack or because of her anger. Mo Lian shook his head as he swept a look of contempt at the woman whom he had swept out the door with the fire spirit. You're already so old, yet you still don't understand what it means to accept a loss graciously. She was simply stupid and petty. She had thought that she would win as a matter of course. Yet who knew that she would lose so easily? She's just unconvinced. Don't bother with her. No one had the nerve to go back on their words after losing to her. Kiao Mu pursed her lips and carried that brocade box over to the smiling fire spirit specialty mentor from Jie King Academy. Here, thank you. The fire spirit specialty mentor then handed over the two dragon fang souls, the nameless jade, and the myriad glaze stone to Kiao Mu. Kiao Mu nodded and had Molian put them away. She then turned around and prepared to leave with Molian. Old talisman practitioner Song called out to her and asked with a smile, This young great master. Please wait. Has the young great master joined the Talisman Practitioner Association? Annie Prefecture's Talisman Practitioner Association may just be a small branch, but, but after joining, you can learn talisman techniques systematically. This is a valuable opportunity. Additionally, joining will give you discounts when purchasing blank talisman paper in talisman shops. If the young great master is interested, Kiam Yu waved her hand. I do not need to at the moment. Thank you for your kindness. A crowd of people surged forth and surrounded the young couple, talking all at once. Chapter 2268 The Rocks That They Con Some were asking when the young great master was going to come again to sell talismans, while others were inquiring whether this young sir beside her was a spiritual weapon engineer and if he could forge a weapon for them, etc. The babble gave Kiao Mu a big headache. Zihuan, who finally squeezed his way to the two of them, shouted anxiously, Great, great master, does what we talked about earlier, about me learning from you, still still count? This humble one is willing to follow the great master. I I just hope for pointers from the great master. Do you still have companions in that woman's private compound? We'll go rescue them in a bit. 
Kiyam Yu waved her hand at him. You go out first. I'll go find you later. The two of them were stuck in the middle of the crowd. Mo Lian hastily shielded her in his arms against the surging crowd. Great master, great master, when will you come to sell storage talismans again? Great master, great master, I am willing to offer a handsome sum to buy another storage talisman. Please agree to this humble one's request. This young sir, young sir, are you a spiritual weapon engineer? You are so knowledgeable about the specifics. Could you forge a weapon for this humble one? I am willing to offer a high price. Great master, young sir, while everyone was shouting, Molian scooped up his wifey and flew up to the roof. After several leaps, he left the rambunctious crowd in the dust. Everyone called out wistfully after him, young sir, young sir please wait. Great master, great master. When will you come to sell your storage talismans again? A, there is no doubt that this person is a spiritual weapon engineer. Everybody sighed and looked up in the direction they had departed. They all hung their heads dejectedly. After Molian circled around with Kiyamu to throw off any pursuers, he returned to find the youth, Zihuan. Seeing that they had indeed come back to find him, Zihuan beamed from ear to ear his face suffusing with joy. Jia great master, you really came to find me? Come find me at this residence at night, and we'll go rescue your companions. Okay, okay. Zihuan nodded cheerily. That compound was only locked up for the time being, so there shouldn't be much danger. After getting beaten up, Jiang Hong wouldn't be able to stir up any trouble for the time being either. After Kiao Mu bid farewell to the youth, she returned with Mo Lian to their residence. The moment they entered, the little fellow started pawing at Mo Lian. Lian, Lian, what are those two pieces of nameless jade? They must be some good stuff, right? The moment she saw Mo Lian raise his eyebrow, Kiao Mu knew that those two nameless rocks were definitely rare items. When she watched him dupe that fire spirit specialty mentor from GA King Academy with a straight face, the little fellow had been resisting a smile. Molian glanced down at her and then lifted her up to peck her on the cheek. You want to know? MHM, MHM, MHM. Then, give me a kiss. Kiao Mu glanced around sheepishly before quickly smooching him on the cheek. Quickly tell me. This little fellow's kiss was a bit perfunctory. Even though the crown prince wasn't satisfied, he still took out those two ordinary jades with a flip of his hand. He put her petite hand over one of them. Try injecting a bit of spiritual conscious. Swish. A crimson spiritual energy glow promptly erupted from one of the jades. A ball of fire shot up from the rock and engulfed both of them in an instant. Chapter 2269 Heavenly Fire Mithril This is Heavenly Fire Mithril. It is an extremely rare sacred rank forging material. Molian said in a low voice into her ear, Gyeo Kiao, what to do? You made a fortune. As expected, the little fellow's eyes lit up when she heard the words made a fortune. I had been searching for a material to make your Ferula divine weapon. This heavenly fire mithril is truly out of my expectations. It will do nicely. Kiao Mu now understood what he was getting at. She hugged his neck and asked joyfully, my Inkeek in advance right? Molian nodded in both amusement and exasperation. MHM, but can we give it another name? You can call it Heavenly Fire for rule in the future. Since Inkey was basically pronounced Momo, one Molian might accidentally think that she was calling him. Inky sounds more intimate. The little fellow blinked her eyes. Molian put his hand behind her head and kissed her on the lips. Miss Gia was caught off guard. Her lips were being caressed tenderly and she couldn't control her beating heart, bar dump, bar dump, she could practically hear her thumping heart nearly jump out of her chest, this guy actually sneak attacked her, Kiao Mu bit him, he chuckled and murmured, Kiao Kiao, it hurts, he then deepened this sudden kiss, Kiao Mu felt like something was pulling her from the depths of her soul, and she was slowly sinking down, she opened her eyes, and her heart thudded when she saw his misted eyes. This person's phoenix eyes were so beautiful, it was like they were filled with star fragments. When they were staring at her in a trance, it was like they were about to pull her in bit by bit. His head of raven hair cascaded down and brushed against her ears. She heard him murmuring, I'm punishing you for your half-hearted kiss earlier. Kiao Mu blinked. She suddenly pulled down his head forcefully and kissed him fiercely. 
not to be outdone. Crown Prince Mo chuckled and scooped her up with a flick of his sleeve. In the blink of an eye, they were sitting on the edge of the bed. Kiao Mu tilted her head at him and struggled to get out from his arms. Don't think of running away. Mo Lian sat her down on his knees. He circled her slim waist with his arms and nuzzled the hair beside her temples. You can't just run away after kissing me. Who's running away? Her petite face was clearly burning up, yet the little fellow still raised her chin and barked stubbornly. What, you don't admit it? He smiled and twirled a lock of hair beside her cheek with his finger. He whispered into her ear, if I didn't grab you just now, you would have definitely vanished by now. How could I not know how you like to run away after teasing me? Kiao Mu couldn't resist wanting to laugh, but she looked at him while maintaining a poker face. However, when she saw his spurious smile, she couldn't hold it in anymore and laughed out loud. She pounded him in a huff. You're in trouble. You've offended your little emperor. The smile in the crown prince's eyes deepened, and he rocked her to and fro. All right, I won't tease you anymore. Look, these two pieces of heavenly fire mithril are quite large. There should be extra left after I finish forging your ferul. At that time, Hubby will help you upgrade big treasure. Chapter 2270 Secret Art Kiao Mu touched those two chilly rocks. She injected another wisp of spiritual conscious into it again. She watched as a layer of firelight surfaced and enveloped both of them inside a fire boundary. Why is there such a change when you inject your spiritual conscious? Did you know that there is a secret cultivation art in the upper three provinces? Some larger clans will use a pan long stone to test the younger generation's potential at birth. They will select disciples with extraordinary potential and allow them to cultivate on their own to nurse their divine meridians and accumulate energy. Once they reach adulthood, they will utilize a secret art to advance them directly to the entry rank of divine realm cultivation. In the future, their cultivation speed will be much faster than ordinary people. Molian played with her petite hands. It is common knowledge that only if you sense a wisp of the origin elemental power of the five spirits will you be able to advance to the spiritual realm. On our Sikong planet, a large amount number of people are unable to advance to the spiritual realm because of the scarcity of spiritual energy, so they are unable to sense the energy of the five spirits. Kiao Mu nodded and mused, once I establish myself in the divine province. I'll bring Xiao Liner and them over. Her young brother and sister had excellent aptitude. Leaving them on Saikong planet was just burying their talent. This secret art must be be utilized with a five spirit mithril. Which is this? Kiao Mu was shocked. She gaped and was suddenly enlightened. Oh, I understand. Those people who advance using the secret art use this kind of heavenly fire mithril to substitute sensing for the five elemental spirits. MHM. Molian nodded. He pecked her petite lips with a smile. This is because they have skipped past the spiritual realm. However, you cannot lack this step of sensing the five spirits. In order to quickly sense the five spirits, they can only take a shortcut. The large patrician families of the upper three provinces are just that rich. In reality, this rock has great uses when added to divine weapons and even sacred weapons. It's too low level just to substitute it for sensing the five spirits. After all, how can you say that people who cannot even sense the five elemental spirits to have excellent aptitudes? Molian scoffed. You can test for that at birth. That doesn't mean that their aptitudes will stay the same for the next 10 plus years. Idiots will stay idiots. He smiled tenderly at Kiao Mu. How can they be like my Kiao Kiao who had sensed the five elemental spirits in the lower star domain? Not even that. They also happen to be sacred water, sacred wood, and sacred earth. Even though she was quite excited by his praise. She was a bit embarrassed. Actually, the sacred water was her sect's inheritance. That sacred wood, she still didn't understand why it had been inside her body since she was a child. As for the sacred earth, it was quite hilarious. It had totally come barging through her doors. Kiao Kiao, how are you so smart? Molian cuddled her with a smile. Kiao Mu's face had turned pink from his praise. Actually, I'm not that amazing. Nonsense. You're definitely amazing. Molian tossed those two mithrils into his inner world and beckoned to her. Give me the frule and big treasure for now. I'll need around half a month to forge them this time. 
Is that fine? Kiao Mu shook her head. What problem could there be? In any case, she had her hubby with her. She didn't even need to fight personally. Okay, then I'll keep them with me for this period of time. Ah, my beautiful little master, what instructions do you have for me? The small glum hopped out and started flattering her as usual. Molian put away Kiao Mu's frule and also the chattering glum, big treasure. Chapter 2271 Grade 7 Spiritual Fire Can you make Big Treasure less talkative when you upgrade him? That won't do. This fellow's talkativeness is what's special about him. Molian poked her forehead with a grin. He mimicked Big Treasure's tone of voice. Ah, my beautiful little master. Kiyam you simply rolled her eyes at him. She was 200% sure that Molian had taught him to say that. Molian hugged her tightly. Kiyo Kiyao. This heavenly fire ferule will get upgraded into a divine weapon in a couple of days. Since you and the ferule have always had a mental connection, you can fuse with it in battle and perform human weapon fusion. Molian paused and explained. At that time, you'll be able to use this heavenly fire mithril's fire spirit. I just checked. After the ferule assimilates this heavenly fire mithril, it should be able to generate a spiritual fire grade 7 or higher. Kiao Mu was thoroughly alert now. She turned and asked him, You mean that as long as I fuse with it in the future, I can wield this grade 7 spiritual fire? MHM. Molian nodded. Yes. Heavens. She'd be able to wield spiritual fire after assimilating with the Ferul. Kiao Mu immediately got excited after hearing this news. The greatest difference between a divine weapon and a spiritual weapon is that once you perform human weapon fusion, the divine weapon will become more powerful. Human weapon fusion isn't that easy either. Molian smiled at her. But I believe that Kiao Kiao will have no trouble at all. What happens if the fusion fails? The person will suffer injuries, while the divine weapon will get destroyed. Kiao Mu was startled. The consequences are that severe. MHM. Molian nodded. Divine weapons all have their own sense of perception. If it is unwilling to fuse with the person, it will usually self-detonate, harming both sides. But Kiao Kiao does not need to worry at all. You and the Ferul have worked together for so many years. You have long formed a mental connection with it, so it definitely won't self-detonate and hurt you. Kiao Mu nodded. She naturally knew that her Inki was the best. This grade 7 spiritual fire is simply not on the same level as your sacred water and sacred wood. Its grade is rather low now, but once we find a heavenly fire mithril with an even higher grade, I'll reforge the ferule for you again to advance the spiritual fire's grade. Yet Kiao Mu was already extremely satisfied. As someone who had not sensed fire spiritual energy, it was already immense luck for her to be able to wield grade 7 spiritual fear through human weapon fusion. How could she be even more picky? All right, go to sleep early. I'll start forging it early tomorrow morning. The little fellow promptly hopped off his legs and darted into the inner room. She stuttered. I I, I'm going to bathe. Don't you come in. Molian sat obediently on the edge of the bed. Kiao Kiao. Do you need more hot water? That night, Zihuan came to find them as arranged. Before he could greet them properly, Kiao Mu had already summoned King Liuan. She had the dumbfounded youth sit with them, and they flew toward Jiang Hong's private compound with his guidance. When they reached Jiang Hong's private compound, they found the doors locked tightly. Kiao Mu and Mo Lian slunk in through the back door with Zhu Huan. Zhu Huan guided them to the woodshed in the back. The door to the woodshed door was reinforced with two extra defensive restriction barriers, but it was completely useless against Kiao Mu. Mo Lian broke the woodshed's restriction barriers with a burst of spiritual fire. The three of them kicked open the door to the woodshed and they saw seven young men who were twenty years old and younger sitting against the wall. Zihuan, Chapter 2272 Combination Talisman One of them shouted in surprise when they saw the people who had barged into the woodshed. MHM, quick, get up and follow us. Zihuan, you've come to rescue us. Another person exclaimed emotionally, these two people are, Hey, ask the questions after we get out of here. Someone's coming. Kiao Mu said while furrowing her brows, 
The young man who had called out Zihuan's name earlier couldn't help but shudder and back away. Th there are a dozen servants guarding this compound. Kiao Mu glanced at him. Aren't you all talisman practitioners? How come all of them looked like scaredy cats? That woman robbed us of all our defensive talismans. The group of young men couldn't help but feel indignant when talking about this. That woman had tricked them here to be her talisman drawing tools. That greedy woman confiscated all the talismans they drew and sold them to the talisman shop. You're all level 13 and level 14 mystic cultivators. How come you're all acting like weaklings without any means of resisting? Kiaomu swept them over with her gaze. The young man who had spoken first couldn't help but protest. Who, who's a weakling? It's only that the enemy is stronger than us. They're all level 3 spiritual cultivators. How can we be their match? Don't deny that you are weaklings. Kiao Mu glanced at them gruffly and told Zhu Huan, if your companions all have such weak character, you'd be better off not following me. Sorry, her money didn't just come out of nowhere. She wasn't going to support useless people with weak temperaments. After saying this, she grasped Mo Lian's hand and walked to the door without looking back. Those young men couldn't help but be a bit irritated. They asked Zhu Huan, who is she? Zhu Huan, Aya. Just stop talking for now, Chi Hua. When Zihuan rushed out the door with his companions, he saw a dozen servants shouting as they rushed over to surround them. It's fine if your cultivation is not on par. Remember that you are talisman practitioners. Kiao Mu stated coldly, the talisman practitioners rely on talismans to claim victory. You use talismans to slay the enemy. You must always guarantee that you have talismans to use and talisman paper to draw with. Practice your drawing speed if that's holding you back. Don't dawdle and not even be able to draw a single talisman in an hour. Kiao Mu squinted coldly at the dozen servants that surged over. She waved her fair hand and a dozen talismans drifted out. They were like fluttering butterflies that rapidly approached the group of servants. All the talismans activated at once, and streaks of light poured out from the talismans. When they reached the group of servants, they transformed into eight trigram rays that bound all the servants. Those eight trigram talismans tightly bound all the servants like spider webs. Group binding, Zihuan, Chihua and the others all goggled in disbelief at this grand talisman practitioner. These really were binding talismans? How come this binding talisman was so powerful? Talisman practitioners do not stay stagnant, and you should master all the talismans you learn. While immobilizing someone, you can also bind and make them dizzy or something like that. You think one talisman can only produce one effect? I combined mobilization and binding effects in one talisman to produce the eight trigram binding talisman. Kiao Mu felt like she hadn't shocked them enough and added, no one taught me to draw this way. After you draw more and achieve mastery, you'll realize that anything is possible. It was indeed a moment of enlightenment when she created this kind of combination talisman. Chapter 2273 Go beat them up. Furthermore, it was easy to fail when drawing combination talismans on talisman paper. This was because talisman paper was too thin and could not sustain the talisman energy of both talismans. That's why she was so anxious for Moyu to prepare those 10,000 blank white jade talismans. As talisman energy could seep through the jade talisman, the latter naturally could not be compared to talisman paper. The 8 trigram binding talisman Kiao Mu was using now had combined mobilization and binding effects, which ended up forming arrays reminiscent of the 8 trigrams diagram. This could be considered an original creation. Chi Hua was beside himself with excitement, unable to turn his eyes away. Next to him, Zihuan was even more emotional than he was. He clenched his fists tightly and could not stop shuddering from excitement. It felt like he had instantly found a sense of belonging. In the past, he could only study talisman drawing on his own. It was not easy for him to even find a talisman book that introduced the basics. It was extremely difficult for itinerant talisman practitioners like them who were not affiliated with talisman patrician families to study talismans and make a living. Talisman practitioners passed down knowledge by word of mouth and by inheritance. It was better for people like Zhu Huan whose father was a talisman practitioner. That way, he was able to learn from his father's experience. However, 
It was unimaginably difficult for people like Chi Hua who became talisman practitioners later on. The little lady was too incredible. All the talisman practitioners present were thinking. They could barely restrain their excitement. If you want to learn from me, you should at least first learn to develop a strong character and face difficulties head on without shrinking back. Kiao Mu declared as she looked at Zihuan and them. What are you still standing there for? Go and beat them up. Alrighty. Zihuan was the first to react. He rolled up his sleeves and charged forward. He directly picked up a brick as his weapon and started smashing it at one of the servants, who was still bound. Kiao Mu's expression eased. If these guys didn't even have the courage to beat back the people she had already bound, there was no need for them to follow her. What could these lads accomplish if they were so timid and had no fighting spirit? How dare you guys lock us up and exploit us? How dare you snatch our talismans and profit from them? How dare you help the villain do evil? I'm gonna beat you to death. The seven talisman practitioners surged over and beat the dozen servants up. The latter ended up with bloodied heads and were at their last gasp as they laid on the ground. They were still bound by the eight trigram binding talisman. They couldn't even glower at them and could only feel frustrated on the inside. Kiao Mu glanced over them and then removed their eight trigram binding talismans with a snap of her fingers. The leader of the servants roared and summoned a sword from his conscious pool. He was accompanied by a tiger's roar. He and his mystic beast charged toward Kiao Mu with a vengeance. Yet Kiao Mu did not even look at them and merely told the young people present, Talisman practitioners do not need to fight with brute strength. You only need to use talismans at the right time for an easy victory. I don't understand how you people think. There's seven of you talisman practitioners, yet you let yourselves get bullied like this. As Kiao Mu spoke, a talisman lit up in front of her. Defensive talisman, activate. The tiger crashed straight into her defensive talisman boundary and shook its head with a roar. Kiao Mu instantly reinforced her hand with a diamond talisman and stretched it out from inside the defensive talisman boundary. She punched point blank at the tiger's left eye. Roar. The stupid tiger roared pitifully. Chapter 2274 A Talisman Practitioner's Elegance Everybody saw the little fellow's punch knock the tiger's head back sideways, with saliva streaming from its mouth. That string of saliva drifted out with the breeze. The tiger's expression also looked extremely bewitching as its furry face distorted. Everyone watched blankly as the vicious little lady clobbered the stupid tiger flying. Yet, everybody's heart trembled when they discovered that this was not the end of it. That tiger had clearly been clobbered flying, right? But who knew that the little lady would activate an adsorption talisman? drawing this stupid tiger back in front of the defensive talisman boundary. She then punched the stupid tiger in its other eye. It was the same expression, the same streaming saliva, the same motion, the same speed. Everybody felt as if this scene had just been replayed. They stared blankly as the little lady once again clobbered this ferocious tiger's eye and sent it flying. Everybody felt deep pity for this stupid tiger and offered their condolences. R.I.P. Buddy. New woo, woo. The tiger hugged its head and then fled with its tail between its legs without heed for its master. Everyone. Were you still a tiger? You were acting worse than a cat. Talisman practitioners only need to draw talismans quickly and activate talismans quickly. You must have a nimble mind and switch talismans quickly. Then you will easily achieve victory. Kiao Mu expressionlessly punched the leader of the servants who was charging at her with a sword. Of course because you do not have a large selection of talisman types in your arsenal yet, you won't know how to switch between talismans in battle at the moment. You just need to learn in the future. As the leader of the servants was flying out, Kiao Mu flung another eight trigram binding talisman on him again, which completely bound him to a tree in the backyard. His neck and mouth were askew, unable to budge at all. Being a talisman practitioner is an elegant job. Kiao Mu recalled her defensive talisman boundary and explained to the flabbergasted lads, you should be able to destroy cities with a snap of your fingers and slaughter with a smile. Is that not so? If you want to learn from me, you have to listen to me in the future. Those who cannot endure hardship can beat it right now. My lady, Zihuan genuflected and emotionally cupped his hands to the sky. Zihuan is willing to follow your ladyship. Chihua is also willing to follow your ladyship until death. 
Fang Wen Yao, Fang Wen Dong. We will follow your ladyship. Kiao Mu glanced at them expressionlessly and then declared with a nod, Ah, everyone must adhere to my rules if you want to follow me. I only have one rule. Since you are teammates, you must support each other in the future. Remember this. Do not stab each other in the back. I believe that none of you would like to experience how I treat traitors. Kiao Mu's voice was chilly. Yes, we will follow your ladyship's order. Kiao Mu swept them a glance and said, All right, you can get up now. Search through this private compound and take everything of value. Treat this as your first pot of gold. Don't be so stupid in the future and help other people earn money after they exploit you. You couldn't even protect your own talismans. Yes. Mo Lian curved his lips as he stood behind Kiao Kiao, looking at her dotingly. The little fellow turned around and trotted to him. She murmured in displeasure, I bathed for nothing. I feel hot again. Chapter 2275 Keeping Watch Mo Lian couldn't resist laughing out loud as he hugged his wifey. He whispered into her ear, No worries, hubby will help you bathe when we get back. Kiao Mu eyed this fellow who never had the guts to carry out his impure thoughts. She raised her chin pridefully, Go on then. You're a puppy if you don't. Mo Lian, the little fellow was getting more mischievous teasing him at the drop of a hat, he nearly couldn't take it anymore, when I finish forging your inky, we'll immediately head back to the divine province, Mo Lian caressed the little fellow's head helplessly, second aunt master will probably have finished her shopping spree in half a month, right, Kiao Mu wanted to laugh, but she deadpanned, MHM, why don't you just go to Fish Orchid Planet to forge it? Find a secluded area to avoid bothering my senior sisters from cultivating. Mo Lian gave a start and then laughed. That's right. That way, I don't need to rush so much. I can even thoroughly examine if I can first improve the quality of this heavenly fire mithril. Perhaps I can first forge it in a level 8 fire spirit before embedding it. The gap in one level created a world of difference. The little fellow's eyes lit up. Okay, you go forge it while I return to the Shunshan prefecture. We'll work separately. Mo Lian hummed in agreement. Don't forget to tell Dun Tzu. After they finished making a clean sweep of Jiang Hong's compound, the sky had almost brightened by the time they returned to their own residence. Kiao Mu sent Zihuan, Chi Hua, and the others off to rest for four hours. After she settled them down, there was pounding on the door. She opened the door for a peep and saw Duns leaning against the door. He wiped his sweat and panted, What is so urgent that you have to call me non-stop through a jade messenger talisman from hundreds of kilometers away? He chattered mindlessly as he walked into the court. Do you have tea? I'm nearly dying of thirst. Kiao Mu raised her petite fist and motioned it at the back of his head. For some reason, she just wanted to beat up Dunzu whenever she saw the face of Geng Bengqing on him. Mo Lian grasped her petite hand with a chuckle and looked back at Guan Zotang, who had nervously come inside. The moment he glanced outside the door, he instantly saw a black figure flit away from a corner. Mo Lian hostilely retracted his gaze and snickered. Kiao Mu kicked the door shut with her foot. She pulled her hubby along to the stone table where Dunzu was sitting. In the future, you will be in charge of Guan Zotang. Kiao Mu watched as Dunza grabbed the water kettle and drank several cups in a row. She couldn't help but glare. You hear that? I did. I heard it, my young great aunt. Dunza nodded repeatedly and giggled. Little master, then do I have to stay here for a while to organize any prefecture's affairs? Of course. Kiao Mu rolled her eyes at him. We will return to Shunshan Prefecture in the afternoon. We'll set out for Divine Province once we pick up Xiao Huang. Ah, so quick. Dunzu asked bitterly, Little Master, you're planning to be a hands off leader? Kiao Mu harumphed and smacked Dunzu's shoulders. She turned around and called for Mo Lian, hubby. Mo Lian couldn't help but chortle. He knew that the little fellow had run out of patience to chit chat with Dunzu so he beckoned to Dunzu. Come over so that I can tell you some things. Keep this storage talisman safe. Mo Lian handed him a blue talisman. In the future, you'll stay here and look after the affairs of the six prefectures. You, you all are leaving. Chapter 2276 Intimidation Dunzu's face instantly fell. Peony, the little despot, 
Fang Chen, and the rest are all leaving too, MHM. Molian nodded and patted his shoulder. Thank you for your hard work. Once we get to the Divine Province, we'll keep a lookout for a more suitable body for you. Re really? Dunzu was ecstatic. Of course, Molian nodded. We'll be leaving the six prefectures affairs in your hands. Even though Guan Zhaotang surrendered a wisp of his soul to Kiao Kiao and is thus under our control, there are still many things that you cannot overly trust him. Guan Zhaotang's antidote is in the storage talisman I gave you. You only need to give him one pill on the first day of each month. Keep him in control for your use. Mo Lian looked at him profoundly. Do you understand? Yes, yes, I understand. Dunzi nodded repeatedly. You have to continue with the selection of elites and their training. Do not fall behind in this project. Yes. Yes, I will properly train the Shunshin defense. After giving Dunzu several more instructions, Mo Lian walked back to Kiao Mu and Guan Zotang. Guan Zotang was a bit fearful and backed away when he saw Mo Lian. All right, there's nothing else. You two can leave now. Dunzu stood up and cupped his hands. Then we will take our leave. Little master, I wish you safe travels. Kiao Mu nodded and looked at Guan Zotang frostily. If I find out that you mean to betray me and refuse to listen to Prefecture Lord Geng's orders, you will be like this rock. A surging wave suddenly shot out from her palm and smashed a large rock at Guan Zotang's feet into crumbling bits with a bam. Guan Zotang's heart jolted. He turned and saluted to Kiao Mu repeatedly saying, I don't dare, before quickly leaving with Dunzu. Kiao Mu gazed after him coldly. Once Dunzu has taken charge of any prefecture, there is no need for Guan Zotang to exist, the little fellow stated icily. I'm afraid it's not that easy. Mo Lian smiled. Guan Zotang isn't stupid, so he should understand what you mean. He will guard against you. Humphrey. Kiao Mu grasped her dear hubby's palm. Who cares about him? The six prefectures isn't my goal anyway. The place she was going to go was the divine province. What she was going to trample was also the divine province. I wonder if those people who owe me a debt are prepared yet after all their schemes of stopping me from stepping onto the divine province. Molian chuckled. I guess that they are prepared. They had probably already scrubbed their necks for the chopping block. Kiao Kiao. Go bathe and then rest a while. Later I'll have the sapling bring me into Fish Orchid Planet. Kiao Mu nodded on the surface, but she didn't let go of his waist. She was staring at him with her large eyes. The crown prince's heart was nearly melting from her gaze. He lowered his head and kissed her on the forehead. He cooed, Kiao Kiao, look, I'm not going anywhere. I'm here together with you. If you miss me, you can just enter Fish Orchid Planet to see me. After contemplating about it, Kiao Mu nodded and released his waist. All right, quickly go and wash up. Aren't you hot? Mo Lian caressed her petite head and shooed her to her room. Once her figure disappeared from sight, his gentle demeanor slowly cooled. It was as if his handsome face had frosted over. Chapter 2277 A Horrifying Man, Tongue. Present. Are you ready? Mo Lian asked coldly. Yes. All preparations have been completed. With a creak. A gust opened the small residence's main doors outward. Tongue flew out with a group of people. Soon after, they forced out the people hiding in the corners with arrows and spiritual energy. After revealing themselves, those people simultaneously flung out several talismans from their talismans. A sinister energy pressed forward. Molian slowly observed from the sidelines. Tongue rushed out with a group of young men in black. They threw a large net coursing with an electric current into the air. Each of them were grabbing a corner of the net and trapped both the outsiders and the talismans within. After several pops, the talismans exploded beside the people who had activated them. A layer of black energy instantly assaulted the people inside the net. They all groaned and collapsed to the ground. Their bodies were enveloped in a black and sinister death aura. Evidently, they would not live. Molian lifted his cold gaze and stared at a fleeing figure in the distance. At the wave of his hand, Tongue swiftly chased after the fleeing figure with his group of young men. Molian shut the main doors to the residence again with a wave of his hand and his figure vanished from the spot. By the time he reappeared, he was already fifty kilometers away. His chilling gaze landed on a small, black, 
and skinny person trying to break out of tongue and his group's net. Where do you still want to escape to? Molian raised his hand with this statement. The net that originally encased the person flew upwards instantly. Once the small and skinny man discovered that he was freed from the net, he immediately wanted to run. Yet to his dismay, a tremendous force was controlling him. He was completely unable to move and had frozen on the spot. You! What are you doing? He shouted indignantly. You, you people are winning in numbers, it's unfair. Molian scoffed. He lifted the tremendous force pressing down on the person and snickered, you won't yield? Of course I don't. Th there's more of you. Even if you win, it doesn't count. The small and skinny man turned around. His eyes were squished near his nose bridge, with a short distance in between them. Hence, his face looked extremely abnormal. Molian sniggered. He waved his hand releasing a golem. It landed on the ground, causing a cloud of fine dust. If you win my number one, I'll let you off, but if you lose, you'll have to obediently bring us to see your master. The small and skinny man was taken aback. Then, he started focusing on that golem that had suddenly appeared and started chanting. He also drew a talisman seal with his finger and flung it out. Boom, boom, boom. Boom. Several Mystician curses simultaneously exploded at the Golem's feet. Unfortunately, Mystician curses were simply useless against the Golem. That Golem was three times larger than the small and skinny man. It created a faint impression in the ground when it took a step forward. Even though the Golem was large, it was astonishingly agile. It could leap and jump. With a roundhouse kick, it hit the small man's abdomen and sent him flying. Bam. The abnormal looking man clutched his chest and barely got up from the ground. He had abandoned all thoughts of battle and quickly turned to flee. However, just as he moved, he heard the whistling sound of wind closing in from above. Chapter 2278 A Horrifying Man, 2 When he looked up, his eyeballs nearly popped out. He saw that the glum called number one was swiftly plummeting from the air aiming straight at his head. Even if he could survive this hit, he would end up better off dead than alive. The small and skinny man yelped and dropped to the ground with the roll to dodge. Boom! The glum landed heavily. That black and chiseled face gleamed metallic in the sunlight. It extended its large arm and slapped at his face. The small and skinny man jerked and hastily rolled on the ground again. However, he was not as lucky this time. The glum rapidly leapt in front of him and stepped down on his left leg. He heard a crisp crack, and tears streamed out from pain. Ah, ah, you, stop, stop. Ah, a malicious glint surfaced in his eyes, and he abruptly flung out two talismans from his sleeve. They pounced toward Molian at extremely tricky angles. Deem it, as long as he dealt with this man controlling the glum he would definitely be able to win. After observing for a while, Molian scoffed when he saw two talismans flying toward him. It was just a mere insignificant Mystician curse. How dare he show off in front of an expert? A pitch black lotus seal appeared in front of him and smacked down the two Mystician curses at the speed of light. At the same time, a purple flame flared up and bashed that person's chest. The power of this flame was extremely terrifying. It knocked him tumbling backwards and his head got smashed into the compressed dirt. He spewed out a mouthful of fresh blood. If you don't talk, I'll be searching your soul. Molian had lost his patience. He extended his fingers from his sleeve and was about to suck that man into his palm. The small and skinny man caved in first. Your Excellency, SP spare me. I I'll talk. I will definitely tell you everything I know without reservation. Lead the way to your master. After a moment, the small and skinny man pointed at a solitary wood cabin on a nearby slope in shock. He screeched, it's there, master he. The cabin has burned down. It's burning. Molian sneered and ordered number one, go check it out. The gillum, number one, received its order and charged into the blazing cabin on the slope. Yet after several minutes, another world-shaking boom came from the slope. The entire cabin had collapsed from the fire. The gillum, number one was also charging over from the slope while cloaked in flames. It rolled its way over and rubbed itself against tree bark. Useless. Molian berated icily. He shot out a stream of black fire and absorbed all the fire from the Glum's body. At this time, the metal on the Glum's face seemed to have melted from the fire, 
revealing several cracks. Molian glanced over its face icily and then turned to the small and skinny man. How dare you trick me? The small and skinny man's eyes contracted in terror and waved his hands repeatedly. He shouted, No, no I didn't. My master, great master Chu, in indeed lives here. He, Molian stretched out his hand, and that small and skinny man flew over uncontrollably. The latter's head landed in Molian's palm. Chapter 2279 A Horrifying Man, 3 No, don't. Everything I said is the truth. I I'm not lying at all. This man in front of him was truly horrifying. Would he dare to hide anything from him? Don't search my soul. I I can tell your excellency everything I know. My master, great master Chu, and I have stayed here for nearly seven days. At my master's orders, I, I have been keep watch over that Miss Giao there the entire time. He really didn't know whether this horrifying young sir had known of his presence from the beginning, or whether he had found out only now. Thinking about it, it was impossible for him to only find out now. The small and skinny man shook his head in terror. I, I also know some things about master. My, my master had once seh schemed against that Miss Giao when he was in Shunshan Prefecture. Molian raised his eyebrow and indicated for him to continue. That small and skinny man quickly divulged everything he knew. Before the academy competition, Master put poison and forbidden curses on several students from River Horse Academy. He had planned for them to kill Miss Giao during the competition, yet who knew? They were saved instead. Afterwards, Master sent several people to investigate, but none of them returned. Hence, Master stopped for a while, and until you all came to any prefecture, Master then chased after you all with me, waiting for an opportunity to strike. Your Master is from the Clear Sky faction? He didn't expect that to still be surviving members from the Clear Sky faction who had pursued his Kiyokiao all the way here. The small and skinny man hastily shook his head and said, I I don't know master's identity. But everyone calls him GR Great Master Chu. He is masterful at using poison, and he has already reached the perfected rank of mystic realm cultivation in the forbidden curse technique. When he saw Molian's expression turn cold, the small and skinny man screeched, everything I say is the truth. I I indeed do not know master's identity. I I am only a mere apprentice learning from him. Look. I am not too skilled in using talismans either. Molian sniggered. Number one, kill him. With that order, the small and skinny man immediately found his neck in the glum's icy grasp. He wanted to beg for mercy again, but unfortunately, that icy palm did not give him this chance. His neck broke with a snap. Molian's gaze when he looked at the glum was devoid of warmth. He reached out and recalled it without a word. Tung looked up at His Highness the Crown Prince who was cloaked in an oppressive atmosphere. He knelt on one knee and lowered his head. This subordinate has failed and allowed that great master Chu to escape. A black lotus flower started smoldering in Molian's hand. He flicked it at the small and skinny man's corpse, which subsequently got burnt away completely. Since someone wants to play, we can humor him till the end. What is this? What are you doing? A clamor came from behind Tung and his group. Molian turned around and looked at the detained royal guards that were being brought over. The leader had a square and inflexible face. His expression stayed stern. Kneel, thud. A kick forced the square-faced leader to the dirt on one knee. Fook. The royal guards beside him subsequently all got kicked to the ground, and started hurling curses. Chapter 2280 His Capricious Highness You are the captain of the Greenwood Guard, Fang Su? Molian looked coldly at the person kneeling in front of him. Yes. Fang Su stiffened his spine and answered. You can't accept this. Molian swept him a glance and raised his hand, gesturing for the two young men in black to release their grip on him. I cannot. Fang Su shouted as he struggled to get up. This subordinate has come on the Emperor's orders to request for your highness the Crown Prince to come back. Neil Tung was going to kick Fang Su again, but Molian stopped him. Who are we? Fang Su was startled. He then braced himself and answered, You are the Emperor's son, the Crown Prince of the Divine Province that His Majesty personally conferred. Who are you? This subordinate is the Captain of the Greenwood Guard, 
Fang Su, a mere captain of the Greenwood Guard has grossly disrespected his superior. Punish him with thirty military canes before saying anything else. Two young men in black walked out from beside Tung and pulled Fang Su away without another word for the flogging. Fang Su's subordinates promptly wilted at this. They shrunk their necks and were afraid to say anything. The crown prince was already flogging their captain. If they continued to step out of place, they definitely would not escape the misfortune of getting beaten. After a while, the two young men in black dragged back the big blockhead after administering his thirty military canes. They threw him at Molian's feet. Do you know why we beat you? You think I'm a nice or? Tongue twitched his mouth. Molian also couldn't resist snarking, since you don't understand. Go take thirty more military canes. Everyone, after another thirty military canes, even the tough-skinned big blockhead couldn't stomach it anymore. The two young men in black who were beating him were also sly foxes. Their strikes looked light as a feather, but each hit burst blood vessels under his skin. They were evidently black-bellied fellows who had used inner energy. Do you know now why we are beating you? Fang Su gritted his teeth and did not utter a word. You still don't know? Then another thirty military canes. Everyone, your highness the crown prince, you're being so capricious. Please, not everyone has your level of intelligence. How would Fang Su, this big blockhead, understand your meaning? Cough. A young man in black walked out from next to tongue. He was fair and handsome, with an indolent air about him. He couldn't look on and commented, Your Highness, even if you give him three hundred military canes, he might still not be able to understand what you mean. There is quite a distance between his intelligence, cough, and yours. This flattery was well directed. Everybody clapped in their minds. The Crown Prince's frosty expression clearly eased up somewhat. Third Fu, when the hell did you get back? Just today. The indolent young man walked to him with a chuckle and saluted. Your Highness, you had best be direct and straight to the point with this kind of simpleton. Fang Su stiffened his spine and shouted loudly, Your Highness the Crown Prince finds Fang Su an or The indolent young man couldn't resist face palming. He glanced at Fang Su and said, Wrong, wrong, totally wrong. His Highness doesn't find you a nice or he just finds your master a nice or Fang Su was stunned, and a hint of surprise showed on his inflexible face. There, there, the Emperor, that's right. His Highness just finds the Emperor a nice or if you had just substituted two other words in find me a nice or his Highness might have been pleased and not beat you. Chapter 2281 Temperamental Find the Emperor an I saw, Fang Su gaped in surprise. The rest of the Greenwood Guard were unable to look at his doltish expression. Fang Su, Mo Lian raised his hand, and the two young men in black who had been pressing down on Fang Su's shoulders released their grip. Fang Su quickly lowered his head and said in resignation, Fang Su has only come on orders. Since Fang Su is unable to request your highness the Crown Prince's return, Fang Su can only report to the Emperor for him to send. Shut up. A cold glint flashed through Mo Lian's eyes. He raised his hand, but Third Fu pressed it down. Your Highness. Third Fu shook his head at him, curbing Mo Lian's sudden killing intent. Mo Lian coldly put down his head and gave Fang Su an indifferent glance. Go back and tell your master that this crown prince will definitely return within ten days. Fang Su's inflexible face abruptly showed surprise. He had reckoned that he would fail his mission this time. He didn't expect that to be light at the end of the tunnel. Since the crown prince had given the word, he would definitely keep his promise. Fang Su saluted respectfully, yes. This subordinate will now be returning to inform his majesty. Also, tell him to get rid of all those nonsensical women that he stuffed into the eastern palace, make them go back to where they came from, otherwise, this crown prince doesn't mind sending the officials home's corpses to celebrate. Fang Su, his highness the crown prince actually knew, from the looks of it, his Highness the Crown Prince really disdained those women in the Eastern Palace, but Madame Guilin was, was the one who specially chose those ladies from prominent families. Don't wait until the situation gets out of control to regret. Mo Lian warned Fang Su, this Crown Prince will say this here. If we find any loitering women in the Eastern Palace after going back, we will kill each and every one. He spoke apathetically, if they don't take them back in time. They can await corpses. Also, make that old hag you and stop. If we find out that she's up to her antics again, 
Don't blame us for not giving her any respect. Don't think that the old man can protect her. Even we are scared of ourselves when we go crazy. All of you scram. Molian got angrier the more he talked, and his cold tone changed into a furious shout. A gust instantly sent Fang Su somersaulting backwards. The groups of Greenwood guards retreated like silent cicadas in winter. They dared not trigger this temperamental crown prince anymore. Why did His Highness the crown prince seem so terrifying? Molian bent his finger slightly. He only barely restrained his killing intent when he turned and saw Third Fu shaking his head at him. DM an old man. Molian cursed icily. If his wife was still going to suffer grievances after they returned, he'd just kill them all for some peace and quiet. Third Fu involuntarily sighed, knowing that there was an intricate knot between this guy and his father's hearts. He could only change the topic. Your Highness, then should we be heading back immediately? Molian nodded. You guys go back first. At the same time, Kiao Mu, who had just bathed herself squeaky clean, lay down and hugged her covers. She turned over and happily went to sleep. The night's activities had been so tiring. Kiao Kiao planned to first catch up on sleep, yet the moment she shut her eyes, the entire golden talisman jade tome turned into gold lights that roamed about in front of her eyes. Chapter 2282 Advancing in Proficiency What the hell was this golden talisman jade tome up to again? It had suddenly gotten so excited, and the lights were making her dizzy. Kiao Mu wanted to sit up, yet she found out that she could not even move a single finger. The golden talisman jade tome was up to its shenanigans again. Kiao Mu lay on the bed helplessly and mustered up a thread of spiritual conscious, controlling her spiritual conscious apparition into her conscious pool to investigate. She saw one of the twelve jade slips fly out and transform into a glowing golden tome. Kiao Mu's heart leapt, and she rushed up excitedly. She had thought that the golden talisman jade tome was going to give her another advancement so that she could learn earth rank talismans. However, it was the previous eighth jade slip that had come flying out. Kiao Mu couldn't help but roll her eyes. She had already perused through this eighth jade slip from beginning to end. She even remembered the words in the corners. So why was it flying out now and forcing her to look it over? A. Eh? Could it be that after she improved her proficiency in these talismans, it triggered some kind of hidden talisman learning? Kiao Mu doubtfully manipulated her spiritual conscious apparition and made it climb onto the tome to see. This small spiritual conscious apparition was only seven inches tall. She put her hands on her hips and stomped to and fro to examine the tome. She suddenly brushed her finger in the air and a string of trembling gold runes surfaced in front of her eyes, forming large characters. Flying Talisman Black Rank Talisman, Flying Talisman Effect, Assist in Flying Time Length, 1 Hour A string of words jumped out at the bottom. The Flying Talisman is the only Black Rank Talisman that does not require injecting mystic energy nor spiritual energy for activation and use. With Flying Talismans, it is no longer a dream for normal people to fly. Do you want to soar the skies? Do you want an invisible pair of wings? Come craft flying talismans then. Kiao Mu. She didn't expect the golden talisman Jetome to have such a sense of humor, but are you sure the fine print wasn't toying with her? Kiao Mu manipulated her spiritual conscious apparition and sat down cross-legged on the golden tome. She held the gold beaded talisman pen and drew the flying talisman over and over again. Nearly an hour had passed. The golden tome slowly dissipated and reverted into the form of a jade slip. Kiao Mu silently opened her eyes. She moved her finger, and a flying talisman appeared in her palm. She had reached the perfected rank as a black level talisman practitioner. Her drawing speed had also gotten faster. With a thought, the little fellow appeared on her fish orchid planet. After sensing Molian's location, Kiao Mu's body promptly appeared beside him. She looked and saw the crown prince sitting upright with closed eyes in a corner of the beach. A small bronze cauldron floated in front of him, and a flow of energy surrounded it as it bobbed up and down. The man had exquisite eyes and long flowing hair. Even closing his eyes could not hide his beauty and elegance. Kiao Mu ran around her dear hubby and reached out to probe the faint black fire boundary surrounding him. A thread of black fire promptly sucked her finger instead. She could feel his slightly chilly face. The little fellow pulled back her hand guiltily. She peeked at him, but seeing that he wasn't responding at all, 
she squatted in front of him while propping up her chin, her gaze wandered as she watched him through the faint fire boundary, was sacred fire. This cold, Miss Giao blinked her eyes, she decided to poke her head in and climbed into the fire boundary, once she got close to him, her heart started thumping uncontrollably, so handsome, the little fellow curved her eyes and couldn't help herself from giving his thin lips a smooch, chapter 2283 it burns everything except you, no matter how busy she was in the future, she would come peek at him and give him kisses, Kiyam Yu joyfully decided to not bother his concentration in forging, she then quietly disappeared from fish orchid planet, after some time, a small crab popped out on the beach and waved its claws as it shuffled blindly toward where Molian was sitting, yet just ten feet away from the sacred fire, it sensed a horrifying heat surge over, however, before it could turn around and flee, there was a sizzle, this pitiful, blind crab had burnt into a crisp, the fine white sand at Molian's feet billowed outward and turned into white smoke, disappearing into the air, sacred fire was the supreme yang fire in the world, it had always been known to burn all evil things in the world, as long as the sacred fire was unwilling, no living things could get close to it, when Kiyamu found her second aunt master at the market, she was currently in a heated bargaining battle, in the end, she bought a cartload of quality cotton cloth at an extremely discounted price, Kiyamu, aunt master, why are you buying so many daily necessities? Kiyoki Ao had all these, child, you won't know how expensive daily necessities are until you're the one managing household affairs, I'm telling you, we have so many people, with your 200 senior sisters, once we get to the divine province, that greedy and unforgiving place, if we don't accumulate these things first, it's possible we won't even have enough money to buy cloth and make clothes. I have long heard that even common goods in the divine province are so freaking expensive, apparently, spirit currency is considered low end currency, it's a place that truly uses spirit stones for money, spirit stones, gosh, if we had spirit stones, we would have used them for our own cultivation, would we even use them as currency? Yang Xirong rambled non-stop as she walked beside the shop assistant pushing the cart, Kiao Mu blindly followed suit behind her with her hands behind her back, as she watched her nagging second aunt master walking in front of her, Kiao Mu felt like those beautiful memories from the past seemed to have returned, yes, 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 second aunt master is the best at budgeting, isn't that so, I'm telling you, Spirit stones aren't even the highest end currency, I heard that some big shots who purchase pills, talismans, weapons, and other dharma treasures, etc., use divine stones or level 14 spiritual beast cores and above, oh my goodness, isn't this just cutting our flesh? Second aunt master continued to prattle, Kiao Mu skipped to catch up to her second aunt master, Yang Xirong turned around and beamed at her, she grasped Kiao Mu's petite hand and exhorted, second aunt master has to save up money for you and your senior sister's dowry, think about it, if we buy items here at a low cost then sell them in the divine province, we would earn a fortune, Kiao Mu's eyes curved as she nodded repeatedly, as long as you're happy, Second Aunt Master, my lady. When the cart reached the residence, eight young men streamed out. Yang Xirong reflexively grabbed Kiao Mu's hand and took a step back. Who are you people? How come you're in our house? Come and greet my second Aunt Master, Peak Master Yang. Kiao Mu beckoned to the eight people. This disciple is Zihuan, Chi Hua. Dot. Greetings to Peak Master Yang they chanted in unison, Yang Xirong walked around the lads and nodded solemnly, chapter 2284 a glorious future, so to say, these lads are all talisman practitioners, second aunt master sized the eight of them up with a judging gaze before nodding, you're bringing them up to the divine province with us, but their cultivation is a bit low, the lads clamored in response to second aunt master's disdain, we, we will work hard, mhm, we definitely will not disappoint her ladyship, Yang Xirong hummed in agreement, to be sure, the most important thing for talisman practitioners is to know how to draw talismans, since Kiyoki Ao is willing to take you in, it means that you have talent for drawing talismans, do well to assist Kiyoki Ao, and you will definitely have a glorious future, yes, 
The lads nodded enthusiastically. Aunt Master. Kiao Mutug yanked Sarong's sleeve. Put away these items first. We'll be returning to Shunshan Prefecture after eating. Second Aunt Master could have put everything in her inner world, yet she just had to have someone deliver them. Okay, okay, okay. Yang Xirong had the lads carry everything inside and close the doors. Afterwards, she whispered into her youngest martial niece's ear with a smile, Take all of this into the paradise. Second Aunt Master. Kiao Mu looked at her helplessly. She didn't need these supplies. It would be better if Second Aunt Master kept them for herself. Yang Xirong glanced at her. Don't refuse. Aunt Master bought them for you. Hurry up. You are supporting so many senior sisters. How could Aunt Master not be contributing? Kiao Mu waved her hand helplessly and put them all into the storehouses on Paradise Planet. She turned to look at Zihuan and them. What do you want to eat? Zihuan and the others look at each other in bewilderment. Could it be that they could eat anything they wanted? He wanted to eat braised pork. It had been several months since he last had it. Aya, the sesame oil chicken from last time was rather good. Yang Xirong prattled behind Kiao Mu with a smile. I'll also have crispy peanuts, mapo tofu, ha ha ha, plus a pot of jade flower wine. My heavens, that's simply my favorite. Okay, okay, okay. Kiao Mu muttered under her breath, Aunt Master, you've been eating oily dishes recently, so let's include several lighter veggie dishes. I don't eat veggies. Your aunt master isn't an insect. You must. You unfilial rascal. Zihuan and the others looked at each other in astonishment. They turned around and saw Kiao Mu pop her head out from the drawing room. She beckoned to them. What are you all standing there for? Come in and eat. How is braised pork? Or do you want pork shoulder instead? Everyone. Wasn't that too sumptuous? They truly didn't imagine that they could eat such a lavish lunch. Kiao Mu looked confusedly at Zihuan and the others who were eating with silent tears. It was so strange. Why were they the same type as Cheeks Yu Anxuan and them? They were also crying from happiness during the first meal. As expected, second aunt master, being a lightweight, Knocked out after three pots of wine, Kiao Mu had the sapling pull her into the paradise in exasperation. Afterwards, she told everyone, you all go outside and wait for me, okay? After shutting the door, Kiao Mu quickly bathed and changed into clean clothes. Just as she finished changing, a white round figure climbed in from the window. The white snake hullet flung its tail and slithered to her side. It raised its head to look at her master. Chapter 2285 I am saving your life. Master, master, master. Noisy. Kiao Mu irritably straightened her belt and hung a small and exquisite purple gold perfume pouch at her waist. She turned around and lowered her fine and smooth petite hand for the white snake hullet to climb up onto her wrist. Master, what's been happening these two days? You've been bailing three times a day because its master would throw it out the window every time she bathed. The snake hullet felt so busy from getting thrown around so much. Master, I won't peek. Can you not throw me out the window? Kiyam you rolled her eyes and pulled open the door. She patted the snake hullet's head. I am saving your life. The snake hullet's body shuddered as the dazzling gold crown on its head also slid down lopsidedly, revealing the summon character on its forehead. Kiao Mu couldn't help herself from touching the summon character on its forehead. The white snake on its cute eyes gazed at her happily and rolled about on her wrist. Master, master, can you just not bathe? This darling isn't happy that you are throwing me out every time. Instead of throwing it out the window, it thought that master not bailing was even better. Kiao Mu, she loathed to talk to this dumb snake on it. If she hadn't been obediently throwing it out the window every time, how would it still be alive now? Molian would have killed it soon enough. Kiao Mu yanked open the room door. There was wintry afternoon sunlight, and a warm breeze brushing past her face caused her damp long hair to flutter behind her. The eight young men were standing at the ready in the courtyard. They turned their heads and were met with the scene of this graceful young girl dressed in plain clothes. She had put a hand on the door frame for support as she used her other hand to shield her eyes from the glaring sun. It was exactly this scene that impressed deeply in these young men's hearts, even when they were in positions of power many years later. When other people asked them, they would proudly say without any hesitation, 
On a wintry afternoon, in an ordinary courtyard, we made our most correct decision. We followed our little master without looking back and tread upon the divine province continent. At this time, these eight young men were unaware that their fates had long changed drastically. Outside that G palace of ultramarine province is Phoenix Imperial City. Duan, who was cloaked in a white marten cape, collected his sleeves as he sat on the edge of the carriage. Yuanzen was directing people to carry the necessary furniture and foodstuff into the heavily curtained carriage. She paced quickly toward Duan and saluted, Your Highness, you can board the carriage now. We must hurry to the Fenian Gate in two hours to meet up with the Crown Prince and the others. Each year, the ultramarine province emperor's winter hunt required large amounts of people and resources to prepare. The palace needed a full three months for the whole operation, from the time they started preparing to sending off the emperor to escorting him back. They would stay in the icebound snow territory for around a month and a half. Just that G Palace alone had prepared for two weeks to escort His Highness the Chen Prince on this trip. Everyone inside the palace had been put to work. Duan listlessly tugged at the Martin cloak that was about to slip off his shoulder. He leapt onto the carriage and darted inside the heavy curtains. Shadow, your highness. A pitch black figure appeared noiselessly in front of the carriage. Chapter 2286 The Troublemaking Fourth Duan, Harness Swallowing Wolves. They'll be more steady. Yes. Your Highness. Everyone watched flabbergasted at the three black wolves the size of calves that were bearing their fangs. Using them to pull the carriage, Duan darted out from the carriage and stroked one of the swallowing wolves' black glossy fur. He said with a grin, do your job well. If you jolt the carriage, watch out for your skin. The three depressed swallowing wolves shook their bodies at these words and promptly pumped themselves up. Such a terrifying human. Your Your Highness. Yuanzen stammered, you really have to go to Fenyuan Gate like this, why can't I? Duan furrowed his brows, aren't we going to hunt spiritual beasts? If they're afraid of three swallowing wolves which are mere mystic beasts, they might as well stay as aristocrats at home. Yuanzen exchanged glances with an elderly nanny next to her and sighed. His Highness was raring to stir up trouble. Duan sat back inside the carriage and his chilly voice was transmitted through the thick curtains. Let's set out. Rumble, rumble. The carriage wheels made muffled noises under the rising sun. Besides this, there was also the sound of silent footsteps trailing behind the carriage in the thick snow. The close attendants of His Highness the Chen Prince were all feeling a bit crushed right now. His Highness was totally intending to stir up trouble. When they got to the Fenyuan Gate later, wouldn't it cause a panic? Zongting Guard's young General Anuo is reporting for duty. A bright and peppy voice announced under the morning sun. Your Highness, Anuo will be fully in charge of your safety during this winter hunt. Stay away from me. An icy voice instantly stunned Anuo, whose merry mood turned into confusion. A stink of powder and makeup. Duan commented in distaste. The young soldier called Anuo froze and hastily sniffed. What smell of powder and makeup? Don't think that this prince can't do anything to you just because you are one of the minister of the left, Wu Yong's people. After so many tries to approach me, this prince will take your life if it happens again. The young soldier's face fell. Anuo caught up to the carriage and asked loudly, Your Highness, when did you find out? Duan did not say anything. Anuo chased after him and shouted, Anuo does not think I showed flaws. Throw them out. Yes, master. Shadow appeared next to Wu Nuo. Oh my. He picked her up and threw her out. Duan felt his mood turn better after things returned to quiet again. This fool. He had already seen through her identity the time she crossed dressed as a man and stood alongside her father Wu Yong outside the imperial ancestral temple. Was she sure she wasn't making a joke by thinking she had revealed no flaws? Wu Nuomai, who had been thrown flying, hung from the wall. After flipping up and sitting at the top of the wall with great difficulty, she waved her hand at Duan's entourage. Your Highness, Your Highness, I truly did receive orders to protect you. His Highness does not need a woman to protect him. What's wrong with women? Wu Nuomai jumped off the wall indignantly and chased after the junior eunuch Xiaoxi. She barked, if you have the guts, 
come and compete with a woman? Xiaox immediately shrunk behind Yuan Zun. Don't be kidding. You want him, a normal person without the strength to truss a chicken, to fight with eldest young lady Wu. Chapter 2287 The Capricious Fourth Duan Your Highness, I really do have a token for my orders. When Wu knew oh my was rummaging about her clothes, she heard the sound of wind blowing past her ears. Shadow had kicked her up onto the wall again without warning. Her face flushed red from anger, and she beat the wall while shouting, Don't kick me if you have the guts. Duan's carriage arrived at the Fenyuan gate after half an hour. By this time, the carriages parked they had already formed a long line. The emperor was not only bringing his favored consorts on this winter hunt. The talented sons and daughters of aristocrats, court officials, and patrician families were also coming along. The minister of the left, Wu Yong, was searching for his troublemaking daughter among the crowd. When he saw that his highness the Chen prince's carriage had arrived, he hastily dismounted his horse to greet him. Everybody followed suit after Minister Wu. They bowed to greet His Highness the Chen Prince. This Chen Prince, who had just returned, was not to be underestimated. He had soared to the skies in one move and had overturned everyone's views of him. The Demon Emperor's blood that no one had inherited for so many years had actually chosen him. It could not be denied that this prince had heaven-defying fortune. Ah, a female scream came from the crowd. One of the young ladies had gotten spooked by the three swallowing wolves who were snorting furiously, and fainted. That family's servants fell into chaos at once. One person pinched her philtrum to bring her back to consciousness while another scrambled to feed a young lady medicine. A cold snigger could be heard through the thick carriage curtain. The daughter of Ultramarine Province's Li Clan, which is known as one of Phoenix Imperial City's three great patrician families, actually fainted from the sight of a mystic beast. Truly an eye-opener for this prince. Some low sniggers could be heard among the crowd. A manager of the Li Clan protested with a flushed face. This, this naturally is not, this. How could he say that this girl who fainted was merely a normal daughter who was born of a concubine in their clan? Daughters of concubines like these who were quite pretty would usually be offered up to nobles to warm their beds. They were naturally not the talented girls that the clan focused on nurturing. Their Lee clan had brought along this daughter of a concubine on this winter hunt to hopefully charm someone in power, and especially royalty, with her looks. Yet who knew that this would happen? There was a reason that these people were unpresentable. She had fainted from the scare of His Highness the Chen Prince's swallowing wolf before they had set out. This truly disgraced the family clan. Fourth brother. A superficially smiling voice came from beside them. The ladies of the Li clan are delicate, so you shouldn't be reprimanding them. Even though these swallowing wolves are low-tier mystic beasts, they still are scary to girls. The crown prince, the second prince, and the third prince alighted from their carriages and walked up. They were accompanied by a chilly young man on a horse. Duan glanced over at the other person and recognized him as the king vassal prince Rong King. Duan also alighted from his carriage and cupped his hands insincerely toward the crown prince. Brother, I feel that since imperial father has decreed this winter hunt, those who are going should have at least passable cultivation. I have no interest in joining a hunt with rotten apples. If they are all weaklings like this, this prince will be returning to his estate. Duan's bored expression made everyone's mouth twitch. The crown prince wrongly hastily called after him. Fourth brother. His majesty the emperor is here. Her majesty the empress is here. Noble consort Duan is here. Chapter 2288 Unfair Victory the ultramarine province emperor on Yuan alighted from his carriage and immediately identified his troublemaking fourth son. This child was wearing a pure white cape, even though he had handsome peach blossom eyes. His tall and straight back was akin to bamboo erected on a Chilean steep cliff. He was looking at the mycelae. He was currently leaning against a huge swallowing wolf. His slender fingers ruffled the long fur on the swallowing wolf's head. His amorous speech blossom eyes were now filled with callousness as he looked at them. Devoid of warmth, it was as if all this commotion had no bearing on him. The people standing here were not his brothers and relatives but fake people with false pretenses. Ah. Ha, ha ha. Awkward laughter came from behind Rong Yuan. A skinny middle-aged man commented with a smile, the fourth prince must be annoyed by the weight. Your Majesty, 
Everybody is basically here already. Please give the order to set out. The Ultramarine Province Emperor. You useless sky. You just know to act according to the situation. The Emperor glared at this official. Everybody was whispering among themselves in private. How blind was the Marquis of Anxing? Didn't you see those three scary swallowing wolves harnessed to the fourth prince's carriage? Wouldn't these big fellows spook the horses and stop them from pulling their carriages? This Marquis of Anxing was quite adept at papering over things. Quickly come and take away this useless speech lest she pollute his highness's sight. A beauty dressed splendidly in a red dress arrogantly kicked Lee Clan's daughter of a concubine and glanced at the palace servants behind her. Another round of discussion broke out in the crowd. Everybody recognized this red-clothed beauty with well-done makeup and lavish accessories as the renowned advanced level pill alchemist, Commandery Princess Xiang Chen. Even though she was young, her skill in pill alchemy was not to be underestimated. She was only 20 years old and about to become a yellow level pill alchemist. Yellow level pill alchemists were not rare in their ultramarine province but there were few yellow level pill alchemists who were so young. Usually people who became yellow level pill alchemists were mostly 70 or 80 years old. On the other hand, this commandery princess had started learning pill alchemy from young. Because of her extraordinary talent, she became the most outstanding personal disciple of the medicine sect's senior elder. Her identity was not to be belittled. Rong Yuan waved his hand and beckoned for the servants to carry out the Li clan's young lady. The Li clan's patriarch, Li Yuanqian, squinted his eyes. He stepped out and bowed in embarrassment. This young daughter has just returned from growing up in the countryside. Please be magnanimous for her lack of composure in the palace, family head Li. You had best not bring along such an unpresentable daughter of a concubine with you to show off all day long. Good looks is all she has. Family head Li has a lot of ideas. Her. Several family heads who were at odds with Li Yuanqian naturally belittled him without holding back at such an opportunity. The things they said made the veins on Li Yuanqian's forehead bulge. Imperial father, Du An Yu impatiently cut off everybody's criticizing and deadpanned. I heard that there is a competition during every hunt. If the people in the hunt are all weaklings like this, this son will not be participating. Even if I win, it wouldn't be a fair victory. The ultramarine province emperor's eyelid jerked. He was his son, but he had no idea where he got his temper from. His mother, noble consort Du An, was such a gentle woman. Chapter 2289 Don't go then. Noble consort Du An walked up to her son with a helpless expression, and raised her sleeve to brush away the fine snow clinging to the hair at his temples. She exhorted tenderly, son, there's nothing for you to do staying inside the palace all the time. If you go out and walk around, you might encounter something interesting. Du An's icy gaze only then softened as he looked down at his mother. He nodded reluctantly, then I won't compete with them. Fine, fine, fine. Whatever you want. Beside them was the Empress, who was wearing red formal attire that was inlaid with black. Her eyes flashed, and she chuckled while covering her face. Your Majesty. Look, the fourth prince has already given his word, no matter what, you should select some young elites to compete against the fourth prince once we reach the icebound snow territory. The crown prince's body has become weak again recently, otherwise, he would be able to compete against his younger brother on the hunt. The second prince and third prince were silently standing behind the crown prince, Rong Li. Their eyelids jerked. Please, Old Fourth had a seven-tailed heavenly fox with him, who wanted to compete against him. Anyone who did would definitely despair from the shock. They would be bloody unfortunate to have to do so. The ultramarine province emperor contemplated for a moment and turned to his second and third sons, who were hanging their heads. Old Second, Old Third. Ah, Imperial Father? Th this son's way I waste has been hurting during this period of time. The second prince stammered hastily. Th this son's leg problem has recurred, Imperial Father. The ultramarine province emperor got angered to laughter by his two cowardly sons. One has a waste problem and the other a leg problem. Then just stay in Phoenix Imperial City and don't go on the hunt. The second prince and third prince looked at each other in dismay. Fook. 
how could they not go? The list of people going on the winter hunt every time represented imperial father's favor. Which of the people going on the winter hunt with the emperor was not a young noble, royal, or aristocrat the latter thought highly of? Wrong king. This humble official is present. Vassal Prince King, who got called by name, jumped off his horse and greeted the emperor with a bow. Do you have the confidence to compete with our son? This humble official dares not refuse your majesty's order. The emperor's mood turned better when he looked at his outstanding nephew, and he laughed heartily. Ah, you will have a competitor once we get to the icebound snow territory. Our king's hunting skills would definitely be an eye-opener for you. Du An glanced leisurely at Vassal Prince Rong who was standing quietly with a solemn countenance. He lifted the curtain to his carriage and hopped inside. Let's set out. The emperor looked helplessly at his son's carriage and announced while raising his hand, we're setting out. Oh my, his majesty seems to really be doting on the fourth prince. Nonsense. That is the glory of the wrong clan. The only one who inherited the demon emperor's bloodline in more than a thousand years. Speaking of which, will your cultivation advance by leaps and bounds with this demon emperor's inheritance? I wonder what cultivation this fourth highness has reached now. You had better not ask, otherwise you're just asking to suffer a shock. Previously, even though the learned and graceful crown prince couldn't match up to the king vassal prince, who excelled in both academic and martial arts, he was still a fine young sir. Now though, his limelight has completely been overshadowed by his fourth brother. Eldest brother, don't listen to those gossiping fools. The second prince furrowed his brows as he swept his gaze toward the back. Because there were so many people, he could not make out who was talking. Only bits and pieces were drifting into their ears. Chapter 2290 Illegitimately Conferred Even though Rong Li did not show anything. Veins were popping out from his hands as he gripped his reins. Ever since this fourth brother of his had returned, he felt that his status in his imperial father's eyes was plunging rapidly. It felt like everything his imperial father said revolved around this fourth brother. Look at how people were mocking him, the crown prince. It truly was abominable. He really wanted to personally destroy that arrogant young man's handsome face. The caravan moved toward the ferry crossing. Once they arrived, they would switch to proceeding to the Arctic, the icebound snow territory, by ferry. This journey would take from 10 to 15 days. The crown prince, Rong Li, gripped his reins tightly to suppress his foul mood. Dot. The nether province's great harmony city, the imperial palace. Ah ha 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 ha. Your, your highness the crown prince. Several personal palace attendants were looking at the black clothed man laughing uproariously with a distorted expression. They averted their gazes and shrunk back. Did his highness the crown prince go crazy? Ha 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 ha. Ming Lung was practically crying from law there. Look, just look. Mr. Zhuang, you also heard it today. Ha 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 ha. That good imperial father of mine personally told me to give up the position of crown prince. To give it to my good third brother. Ha 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 ha. I just knew that nothing good would come out of bringing him back. Crown Prince Ming Lung gritted his teeth and berated. Ha 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 ha. Look, this is my father, the father I revere the most. He is going to depose this Crown Prince for a favored consort's son. Ha 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 ha. Crown Prince, Your Highness the Crown Prince. Please calm down. The old gentleman in his fifties whom Crown Prince Ming Lung had called Mr. Zhuang sighed while stroking his beard. It is an immutable truth that the Emperor deeply favors the Imperial Noble Consort. Mr. Zhuang exhorted, the most important task right now is to unite with the court officials to push back this matter. And then what? What happens after we push it back? I'll still have to abdicate my position. Ha ha ha. Crown Prince Ming Lung slumped in a big wooden armchair in despair. Teacher. The situation is hopeless. We cannot save it. No, we can save the situation. Mr. Zhuang calmly analyzed, everyone within and without the court has witnessed your highness the crown prince's accomplishments during these past three years. Your highness cannot give up so easily. Heed this old official's words. You only need to do one thing during this period of time. Pay visits to all the court officials. Will that do anything? Your highness the crown prince? You will lose if you don't do anything at all. If you strive to make an attempt, 
perhaps you will be able to reverse the situation. Crown Prince Ming Lung lay spiritlessly on the chair. He suddenly covered his face and wept. Father said that third brother is extremely talented, whether it be his intelligence, strategizing, and even cultivation, he is the most outstanding of us all. So what? Mr. Zhuang flung his sleeves and declared. How can he occupy this position of crown prince when it is illegitimately conferred? Your Highness, you must pull yourself together. You are the late queen's child and have assisted the emperor in taking care of state affairs during the past three years. You performed your tasks methodically and did an excellent job. Yes, crown prince Ming Lung propped himself up and shouted with clenched fists. I, I am the legitimate crown prince. How can that son of a favored consort compete against me? I. I won't lose, I won't lose, your highness, your highness the crown prince, the crown prince consort's voice came from the door, chapter 2291 it's just deposing the crown prince, fewer, why did you come, crown prince Ming Lung hastily stood up and opened the door, helping his pregnant wife inside, fewer, you have to take care of your body, don't come out after it gets dark and damp, your highness, I am worried about you. Su Fu held her husband's hand and sat down with him at the table. I know what happened in the royal study today. Your Highness, you must not get irrational. As long as there is life, there is hope. Before you do anything, think about Fuer and our unborn child. Yes, Crown Prince Ming Lung hugged his wife's shoulders and nodded. Fuer, don't worry, I won't topple that easily. Mr. Zhuang nodded in gratification. This old official will go contact some people. These couple of days, your highnesses should remain inside Cheng Yuan Palace. This crown prince will be troubling you, Mr. Zhuang. I await your good news. Mr. Zhuang nodded. However, just as he walked out the main entrance of Cheng Yuan Palace, someone pressed a dagger to his neck. He paled in shock and backed away back into the palace, good news, what good news were you expecting, an unfeeling voice entered crown prince Ming Lung's ears, it echoed through the empty hall, the imperial maids and eunuchs had knelt and were prostrating from fear, their heads pressed against the back of their hands, and they dared not let even a single hair go astray, Ming Lung, this prince had planned not to hold it against you, but too bad you have no tact and don't know when to retreat. A tall figure stepped into the palace over the threshold, and he looked coldly at Mr. Zhuang, who was still at the dagger's mercy. Third Prince, you? What are you doing? Mr. Zhuang felt like he was facing a brute who did not listen to reason. He was already a fish on the chopping block. Even though he tried to remain calm, he was panicking on the inside. Unfortunately for Mr. Zhuang, even though he was skilled in persuasion, he couldn't say anything at this point. Eldest brother, Ahn carried a chair over for a sit to sit on. Aka crossed her arms and gave Crown Prince Ming Lung and his wife a haughty snigger. So unappreciative, my brother Asu wasn't going to do anything else to you, yet who knew that you actually dared to scheme in the dark? You want to kill the situation? Save the situation. Asi corrected her absent-mindedly. Right. You even want to save the situation. Aka harumphed. I don't know where you get your ego from to have to make my brother a succumb and punish you personally. All right. Stop talking nonsense with him. Read the Imperial Edict. Yes. An old eunuch walked out tremblingly from behind us. He unscrolled the Imperial Edict and announced, Imperial Crown Prince Ming Lung is wicked and does not know benevolence and righteousness. He is petty and far from being a noble man. His actions are immoral. Every sentence the old eunuch read caused Ming Lung's face to turn even more ashen. The Crown Prince consort was shuddering. Mr. Zhuang was shaking uncontrollably from fury, and he shouted, Slander, this is slander. You, you people, how dare you relay a fake imperial edict? You are framing His Highness the Crown Prince. It's just deposing the Crown Prince. As is stated coldly, tomorrow during morning court, Imperial Father will officially appoint me as the Crown Prince. Crown Prince Ming Lung suppressed the mouthful of blood that threatened to come out. As he glanced at him coldly and commented indifferently, Eldest brother had best take care of your body. Chapter 2292 The Heart to Contend You, you, Mr. Zhuang pointed at Ming Asi with a trembling finger. You people, how can you treat deposing the crown prince and appointing another as such a trifling matter? Once the divine province and the ultramarine province heard of it, 
wouldn't the two sovereigns laugh their heads off? Ming Asa curled his lips and snickered at Mr. Zhuang and Ming Lung. It is just a trifling matter, deposed Crown Prince. I advise that you recuperate in Sheng Yuan Palace. Don't go running about randomly. Otherwise, you might not even know how you die. Crown Prince Ming Lung sat limply on the floor, his soul having left him. Imperial father, he, in the afternoon, had only been asking his opinion. Ming Lung, you aren't suited for the position of Crown Prince. What do you think about abdicating to your third brother? He did not expect for him for him to issue the edict to depose the crown prince after just four hours. Crown Prince Ming Lung's sight was blurred, and he could no longer hear his wife Su Fu's cries. He felt his eyes turn sticky. He seemed to be unable to see clearly at all. He could indistinctly hear people scream, quickly call for an imperial physician, find an imperial physician. His Highness the Crown Prince's eyes are bleeding. It's only deposing the Crown Prince. No need to be so agitated. Ah and laughed with his hands on his waist. Someone, go find a doctor to examine this deposed Crown Prince's condition. Don't die on us now. I don't want my eldest brother and sister-in-law to die on the day that I assume the position of Crown Prince. Ming Asi glanced coldly at the deposed Crown Prince and his wife. His gaze then landed on Mr. Zhuang. Eldest brother, what should we do with this old geezer? Kill him. Ming Asi sneered and turned around, walking out of the palace. He couldn't let the old geezer continue to strategize for the deposed crown prince. Without this old man, the deposed crown prince would never have the chance to rise up again with the extent of his intelligence. A cold light flitted across Asi's eyes. He flicked his sleeve and walked out of the palace. He looked up at the outline of the palace buildings in the bright but cold moonlight. Eldest brother, don't blame me for being ruthless. I did not want to contend with you. However, I am determined to have the position of crown prince. If he didn't have a comparable position and status, if he didn't have the connections, resources, and power, how could he contend with that person? Crown Prince Lian of the Divine Province, are you ready for my move? As long as he became the crown prince of the Nether Province. He would definitely get what he wanted. Ah Chu Kiao Mu drew her furry cape more tightly around herself. She grasped her gold beaded talisman pen and continued drawing talismans on the fire phoenix's back. The journey truly was rather boring. After departing from Annie Prefecture, Kiao Mu had summoned the ancient fire phoenix to take them to Shanshan Prefecture faster. With this big fellow exuding a horrifying pressure the entire way. They didn't have to worry about any flying spiritual beasts blindly crashing into them. During the first two days, Zihuan and them had vomited even their bile. They were now feeling better, but their pale complexions were quite pitiable. Kiao Mu did not find the little fire phoenix's flight turbulent at all. She thought the flight was quite steady, so she didn't understand why Zihuan and them kept saying with trepidation that the ride was bumpy. The little phoenix was probably giving them a lesson. He might be miffed that he also had to carry eight other men. A eh? fiery, quickly descend. The thunder planes were right below them. She wanted to go sit on a terrestrial whale again. Bletch, after stepping on solid ground, Zihuan swayed forward with teetering steps. He then squatted down and started vomiting. Chapter 2293 Are you selling? The blood fire phoenix yelled, you scoundrels. What are you vomiting for? I'm not carrying them next time. He had given this bunch of ignorant hillbillies glorious favor by allowing them to sit on him, an ancient fire phoenix. How dare they vomit? Vomit my SS. Kiao Mu facepamed and recalled the ranting blood fire phoenix. She looked at the eight people who were vomiting their guts out. How are you guys? My lady. Zihuan was crawling like a caterpillar to her ladyship's feet, and cried piteously, he, he did it on purpose. It's been hard on you. Kiao Mu squatted down speechlessly. She patted Zhu Huan's head and poured out a pill for nausea relief. Take another one. We'll be riding on a terrestrial whale later, which is very steady. Zhu Huan, Chi Hua, and company felt better after taking medicine. The feeling of dizziness and nausea went away after they rested for five minutes. They all looked pitifully toward Kiao Mu. Kiao Mu twitched her mouth. Fiery is just too naughty. Don't worry, we'll switch over to King Liyun later. My King Liyun has a gentle temperament and definitely won't make the ride bumpy. As for now, 
they'll first seek out a terrestrial whale. Kiamu dashed in the direction of the terrestrial whales. Come with me, Chi Hua was startled. He chuckled. Her ladyship has been acting so mature and prudent all this time. It really is rare to see her behave so cheerily like a little girl. Ha ha. Fang Wen Ya and his brother also couldn't help laughing out loud. Hurry, let's catch up. Once they arrived at the boarding area for the terrestrial whale, Kiamu paid their fees and sat on the terrestrial whale's back with the other eight talisman practitioners with great familiarity. The terrestrial whale was quite fun. Miss Giao had been reminiscing about it ever since last time's ride. Since there was another opportunity now, she'll ride again. Stomp, stomp, stomp. After a series of footsteps, the people who walked onto the terrestrial whale met face to face with Kiamu and her party. Kiamu felt that these people looked somewhat familiar. One of the ladies in their group shrieked uncontrollably as she pointed at Kiamu. Why are you here, Miss Kiao? Do you still remember us? We had met here on a terrestrial whale previously when we just entered the Shunshan Prefecture. We met again afterwards during the academy competition. I am a student of Celestial Light Academy. My name is Su Hao. Kiamu looked at him blankly for a bit. Since she did feel like they were familiar, she nodded her head dully. Su Hao scratched his nose involuntarily. Eh? It's just Miss Kiao? How about Chi Xiu Anxuan and the others? Miss Gao answered expressionlessly, their enclosed door cultivation. Oh, Su Hao nodded and sat down with his party behind Kiao Mu and them. The items in this small town are relatively cheaper, so we actually came to procure supplies, Su Hao explained while scratching his head. Su Hao, why are you telling her so much? The young lady who had shrieked while pointing at Kiao Mu earlier snapped. Her looks were ordinary. Gosh, since we're all acquaintances, it's fine to make conversation. Chen Haniu, shut up you beach. Su Hao sighed. Don't be arguing. All right, the terrestrial whale is starting to move. Kiao Mu felt that those people were so DMN noisy. She automatically blocked out their voices and looked up at the thunderbolts descending on the thunder plains. The terrestrial whale steadily advanced while swiftly dodging the thunderbolts. Hey. I have a question. Are you selling this terrestrial whale? Chapter 2294 Give it to me for free. A big shot who wants to buy the terrestrial whale? Everyone turned to look at Kiao Mu. The woman who had shrieked while pointing at Kiao Mu earlier couldn't resist covering her mouth as she laughed out loud. You want to buy the terrestrial whale? Do you have that much money to buy it? It was simply ridiculous. The terrestrial whale was a level 3 spiritual beast. It could also effectively avoid thunderbolts and was a speedy mode of transportation. How could it be so easy for someone to buy it? Besides, apologies, miss. The elderly manager was stunned, but still answered with a smile. We are only renting this terrestrial whale. In reality, it is a spiritual beast that belongs to the Shunshan Prefecture's official mansion. The terrestrial whale's daily meals are also not cheap. Since it is called a terrestrial whale, can it go in the water? It can. The elder explained with a smile. Since this terrestrial whale is already a level 3 spiritual beast, it does not fear water. So it was Shunshan Prefecture's spiritual beast. That wasn't a problem then. Kiamu took out a jade messenger talisman and wrote Dunzu a message. She fancied this terrestrial whale. It was so much fun. She had planned to buy it, but since Dunzu was in charge, then she'd have him give it to her for free. Kiamu put away her jade messenger talisman and titled her head. She didn't say anything more and closed her eyes to rest. Yet that woman's grating laughter entered her ears. Yo, didn't you want to buy the terrestrial whale? How come you're not talking anymore? Liu Tanshan, enough already. How many times have I told you? This is not on you and planet. So stop putting on your princess ears. You're making trouble for the team all day long. Xbang, you've been bewitched by Chen Hani U that beach. You want to try scolding her again for me? Xbang protected the weeping Chen Hani U as he glared at the ordinary looking Liu Tanshan. Kiao Mu swept them a glance. She suddenly did have some memory of them. It seemed like every time these people got together, they would be at each other's throats. Forget it. Lady Kiyoki I won't hold it against you, 
The little fellow crossed her petite legs and leaned into her seat to rest with closed eyes. This terrestrial whale ran extremely steadily. There was no turbulence as its eight stout legs ran across the thunder plains. There was no discomfort at all. Zihuan and the others were very happy. They finally did not need to suffer another rough ride on the Bloodfire Phoenix's back. They didn't chat much when they saw her ladyship close her eyes to rest. Each of them chose to mentally draw the binding talisman they had just learned. It was the fortune they had cultivated in three lifetimes that her ladyship was willing to teach them. Everyone declared to themselves that they must not disappoint her ladyship. Her ladyship's expectation was that they had to advance to advanced level talisman practitioners within three months. They would do their best. The terrestrial whale stopped at the designated location at Julu City's city gate. Julu City's city lord Huakinu, dressed in a fleeting white robe had long been awaiting their arrival. Greetings to Miss Kiao. Huakinu identified her in the crowd at a glance. He hastily strode over and bowed courteously to Kiao Mu. He remembered the first time he met her, when he did not know her identity. Her methods had given him a lasting impression. This savage little lady had beat passionless palaces fairy Lyran nearly to death. Done. Prefecture Lord Gang told you to wait here for me? Yes. Huakina saluted her again. The terrestrial whale and one year's worth of food have been prepared. Miss Kiao, are two terrestrial whales sufficient? Chapter 2295 Supreme Grade Purple Talisman Kiao Mu nodded her petite head. She had planned to only get one terrestrial whale to play with, but this city lord Hua was quite a tactful person. Kiao Mu was quite elated, so her taut expression also eased up. Bring me to see. Yes. Huakina gestured for Kiao Mu to follow him to the parking lot. Liu Tanshan and company felt their jaws drop from shock. How, how is that possible? Liu Tanshan rambled to herself, this terrestrial whale is a level 3 spiritual beast. Yet they just sold her to so easily. So how was also a bit surprised. Due to their curiosity, the passengers who had ridden the terrestrial whale with them earlier all couldn't resist following Huakina and Kiao Mu to the parking lot. Sure enough. They saw two gigantic terrestrial whales sunbathing lazily. My heavens, these two terrestrial whales are huge. They must have bred them for many years. Such a large terrestrial whale can carry 50 to 60 passengers. Wow, it's twice the size of normal terrestrial whales. Everyone's chatter attracted more bystanders near the area. They were asking around eagerly about the situation. When they heard that there was a nouveau riche buying terrestrial whales, they all gaped in shock. Holy shit, it won't be convenient to bring such huge terrestrial whales around. They're also buying two at once. Unless they have a castle at home, how can they keep them? Isn't that so? Hey, how much are you buying these terrestrial whales for? Lutantian couldn't help but crease her brows as she asked, Princess, it's someone else who is buying the terrestrial whales. Do they need you to worry about them? They have the money so they can be willful. DSK. Chen Haniu couldn't help but take a jab at her. Shut up. I'm not talking to you. Liu Tanshan barked. Chen Haniu rolled her eyes at her and leaned against Xibang. She cried coquettishly, Brother Bang, look at the princess. She's scolding people again. You're the one who needs to shut up. Don't be an embarrassment here. Xibang shouted at Liu Tanshan which made the princess's ordinary features contort with rage. Huakina saluted Kiao Mu urbanely and said with a smile, Miss Kiao, please examine them. If there are no problems, I will bring you over to fetch their food. Kiao Mu raised her head to check out the two terrestrial whales lying on the ground. She felt that these two extra-large terrestrial whales were titanic even when lying there unmovingly. The little lady was like a baby when standing next to the terrestrial whales, stout elephant-like legs. When she looked up, she could see the white breath from the terrestrial whales, snorts, whoosh. The little lady leapt up onto a terrestrial whale's head. She looked expressionless, but if Molian was present, he would definitely be able to tell that the little fellow was in high spirits. Little ones, sorry but I'll have to keep you inside storage talismans for the day. Kia Mu reached out and swept through the air. Two streaks of purple light discharged from the two thin jade talismans she was holding. The two streaks of purple light rose up into the air 
forming circles as they landed on the two terrestrial whales. Subsequently, the terrestrial whales got pulled into the purple talismans. After drifting down, Kiao Mu grasped the purple talismans in her hand. Zihuan, Chihua, and the others were so worked up their eyeballs were about to pop out. They rushed up and surrounded Kiao Mu and shouted frenziedly, Purple, purple talismans, supreme grade purple talismans, their supreme grade purple talismans, chapter 2296 she didn't pay, quickly pinch me, are my eyes playing tricks on me, eldest brother, your eyes aren't playing tricks on you, I also saw them, purple talismans, pur 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 purple talismans, heaven bless him, he actually had the fortune to see the supreme grade purple talisman of legends, ah, Ah, how lucky was he, buddy, you're stammering from your excitement, sigh, Kiao Mu let out a long sigh, if she hadn't drawn two supreme grade purple jade talismans previously, it really would have been a challenge to bring away these two gigantic fellows, it's not like she could send them into fish orchid planet in public, Miss Kiao is very skillful. Quackinu's smile deepened. He also confirmed that this Miss Gia was someone of remarkable ability. Otherwise, the Prefecture Lord wouldn't be caring so much about her. The message that the Prefecture Lord transmitted to him through the Jade Messenger Talisman was urgent. His order was that he must thoroughly satisfy Miss Gia's requests. Actually, he should have long known. No, when they first met, he only treated this little lady as an ordinary girl from the lower star domain. Yet he didn't expect this fellow to be so adept at talismans back when she faced off against passionless palace's fairy Lyran at the city gate. Such a young grand talisman practitioner. The new generation truly excelled the previous. They deserve to be treated with respect. How about the food you mention, miss? This way please? Quackin it quickly showed her to a storehouse. Kiaomu took out two blue talismans to store the terrestrial whale's food. Afterwards, she nodded in satisfaction. Do terrestrial whales like to eat fish? They do. It's their favorite. This dried fish can feed them for a year. Ah. Even terrestrial whales will probably get tired of eating dried fish every day. Quackin explained feebly, because fresh fish was not convenient to store. He had only prepared food that could keep. How about setting them into the sea? That would be most ideal. Quackinu nodded and added, terrestrial whales move very quickly. If you set them into the sea, Miss Kiao must be careful not to let them escape. Okay. Quackinu also said with a smile. Additionally, these two terrestrial whales have a high rank spiritual beast core in their lower bellies used to suppress them. You had best not remove them, otherwise, the terrestrial whales won't listen to your orders and might run amok. They are spiritual beasts with intelligence, after all. Kiamu waved her petite hand. Thanks for your trouble, city lord. I still have matters to attend to, so I'll take my leave now. Ah, okay, okay, allow me to see you off. Quackinu bowed respectfully. When he looked up again, he saw that she had already summoned a humongous cyan bird. She and the eight young men in her party had taken to the air. Liu Tanshan gasped. She, she didn't pay. Everybody looked at her with contempt. Why was this young lady focusing on such a strange point? From how courteously and respectfully City Lord Hua was acting, how could he ask the little lady for money? The City Lord of Julu City had most likely given away these two terrestrial whales and their food for free. Utterly ridiculous. Xabang glared at Liu Tanshan. He felt that this woman was just hurting their reputation. She definitely didn't conduct herself as appropriately and gently as Chen Haniu. As the captain, Su Hao was also extremely embarrassed. After finally persuading this princess Liu to hold her temper, he said, we have come out for a long time already. We have to return to the academy as soon as possible. Chapter 2297 Thoughtless Friendship Huang, after journeying for two days straight through Shanshan Prefecture, Kiao Mu found a certain Huang who was in closed door cultivation inside an inn. The latter was absorbed in refining pills. The moment she kicked open the door, she could smell an acrid and moldy stench wafting toward her. Kiao Mu expressionlessly blocked her sense of smell. The inn's waiter pinched his nose and cried out behind Kiao Mu, This customer, 
your friend is simply crazy. In the 20 days since you left, she hasn't left her room and only eats once a day. Our innkeeper feared that she was going to die inside this room. Kiao Mu. Fairy Huang was sprawled on the floor. There was a yellow pill refining cauldron beside her that was giving off a burnt smell. Since Kiao Mu couldn't smell it, she didn't feel anything. However, the waiter following her fainted on the spot from the fumes. He knocked out with a thud. Kiao Mu. How come she felt that the scene was kind of funny? Huang, Huang, get up if you're not dead. Fairy Huang vaguely seemed to hear a familiar voice. She opened her eyes and looked around in a daze. Subsequently, she sat up and lunged for Kiao Mu's leg. She wept bitterly. Kiao Kiao. Did you come to rescue me? Ah, you're finally back. I'm trying to refine a level 8 spiritual breakthrough pill, but I'm simply about to go crazy from all these failures. You're a mystic cultivator with low cultivation. What do you need a level 8 spiritual breakthrough pill for? Kiao Mu tried to yank her leg out from her sickeningly stinky arms, yet Fairy Huang was clutching to her as if she was a column. She refused to let go. Kiao Kiao. If I can't refine a level 8 spiritual breakthrough pill in this lifetime, I can't live on. Kiao Mu instantly felt like she was hit with 8 lifetimes of bloody misfortune for such thoughtless friendship. Could this clown act any more foolish? Get up. Go bathe right now. Kiao Mu felt that this scream of hers could probably be heard through the entire inn. She was so smelly that she felt that even blocking her sense of smell wasn't enough. After half an hour. Fairy Huang had washed herself clean and regained her beautiful looks. She slowly walked out from behind the screen with a head of damp hair. Kiao Kiao. Fine, fine, all right. Kiao Mu held out her hand to stop her from pouncing over. Go study this bill refining book. I'll be sending you to a place where the time is 12 times slower than the outer world. It'll be enough for you to succeed. I'll call you out again when we get to the divine province. 12 times? Fairy Huang was stupefied. She felt like she was hearing fake news. The divine province? MHM. I came back to pick you up. Kiao Mu pursed her lips. I'll let you out when we get to the divine province. During this period, you'll be staying in my. Kiao Mu stopped and looked exasperatedly at a certain person who was already intoxicated by the bill refining book. This clown. Kiao Mu wrote on a piece of paper and pasted it to Huang's forehead. She then had the sapling send this fellow to an uninhabited island on Fish Orchid Planet. Huang could study pill refining in closed door cultivation all she wanted. Passing 20 days on Fish Orchid Planet in reality only equaled 40 hours. On the small deserted island suffused with rich spiritual energy, Fairy Huang finally succeeded in refining a level 8 spiritual breakthrough pill. She jumped up ecstatically. Wow, she had succeeded. Chapter 2298 Screwing Huang Over She suddenly found something amiss once she jumped up. Huh? Why was she standing on a white sandy beach? What was going on with water surrounding her on all sides? This was an island? Fairy Huang spent a whole day's time, equaling two hours in the outside world, to run a full circle around the island. She hugged a tree and screamed in terror. This, this is a deserted island? How come I'm the only person here? Huang was hurling curses in her mind right now. Th this is actually an uninhabited island? Ah, Gyo Kiao, Gyo Kiao, where am I? Fairy Huang wailed like a ghost for a while before looking up and taking down a piece of paper pasted to her forehead. She saw a line of elegant characters written on the paper. Do not panic if something happens. Just call for Lady Gyo Kiao. Was this supposed to be a joke? Huang flipped this piece of paper back and forth in stupefaction. She decided to try her luck and screamed at the top of her lungs. Lady Gyo Kiao. Her response was a flock of birds that got startled into flying. This is Xiao Huang waking up. Right? Kiao Mu watched the sapling dutifully roasting fish on the beach. She eyed Mo Lian who had been in closed door cultivation for a long time and had not budged a bit. What a pitiful child. She must have gotten a scare. Kiao Mu took the roast fish that the sapling handed her. She gingerly took a bite and pulled back her tongue from the scalding meat. Speaking of which, where did you throw her to? She couldn't even sense Huang's location when she came in last time. 
wasn't she thrown too far away? An island. There are many small islands like this on the sea. I threw her onto one of those uninhabited islands. It's surrounded on all sides by water. The scenery is very beautiful. The sapling gesticulated excitedly, Master. You said that you don't want her constant cauldron explosions to affect your senior sister's cultivation. Kiao mute witched her mouth. Then I'll write a letter, and you deliver it to her for me. MHM, MHM. Go ahead, master. Kiao Mu took out a brush and paper from her inner world and casually wrote several sentences. She stuffed her letter into an envelope and tossed it to the sapling. Do not panic, Quang. Just live on the desert island for now, don't worry. Kyukiu will be delivering food to you every day. The spiritual energy here is rich and will greatly benefit your pill refining and cultivation. Oh, remember to bathe. Signed by, Lady Kiao Kiao. Kiao Mu flung out two purple talismans and walked to the edge of the beach. She opened the talisman and let out the two super large terrestrial whales. Wait. Kiao Mu flew onto one of the terrestrial whales and raised her hand. She sucked the high rank spiritual beast cores away from their bellies. Subsequently, the two terrestrial whales joyfully dove into the sea. They sank down slowly into the water. Kiao Mu squatted on a glossy rock that had been polished round by the sea water. She looked into the water with curved eyes. Suddenly, she heard a thunderous sound. A terrestrial whale poked its large head out from the water and nodded to her. Kiao Mu waved her petite hand with a faint smile on her lips. The sapling played with its branches in a huff, scolding on the inside. It's only super large and looks really robust, yet they make the little master this happy. Harumph, wait until this sapling grows up. I'll become the super largest tree in this world. At that time, haha. <laughs> Nothing in the world could surpass Kyukiu. Kyukiu was little master's strongest backing. Kiao Mu tilted her petite head, suddenly seeming to sense something. She quickly turned around and saw Molian slowly open his phoenix eyes. Chapter 2299 Snow Territory Divine Flower the, the Nether Province's Great Harmony City, the Zengi Yuan Hall The Imperial Edict to appoint a new heir apparent still caused the court officials to break into hushed whispers. Everyone secretly eyed the front of the hall, where the coldly handsome third prince, Mingus, was standing. This third prince who had only just returned was indeed the imperial noble consort's son. He had gained the emperor's favor in just a few short days, causing the latter to actually depose and appoint another crown prince. This action made all the court officials feel like the position of crown prince was a mere trifle. After all, deposing the crown prince should be a huge matter, yet the old emperor didn't even tell anyone. He didn't consult with the court officials and just made the decision overnight. The nether province emperor was cloaked in a thick fur cape. He had wrapped himself up like a winter melon as he laid back on his throne. He spoke spiritlessly, as if he was at his last gasp, if there is nothing else to discuss, court is adjourned. Your majesty. One official standing in the first row strode out and knelt in salute. Crown Prince Ming Lung has been accused wrongly of his majesty's charges, not knowing filial piety and fraternal duty is utterly absurd. Official Kang. One old official standing at the front on the left, although white-haired, chided him loudly. Minister Bu does not need to advise. This humble official knows my limits. Official Kang declared with streaming tears, This humble official just does not want your majesty to be tricked by evildoers and wrongly depose the crown prince. Im impudent. The nether province emperor sat up. He tremblingly picked up a jade paperweight and threw it at official Kang's head. Smash! The jade paperweight smashed into pieces on the floor. Official Kang's face turned pale, but he continued to count down on stop. The heavens and earth can attest Crown Prince Ming Lung's filial devotion. These three years, Crown Prince Ming Lung has been assisting your majesty in handling state affairs. He has worked tirelessly, fearing to make the slightest mistake. Additionally, Crown Prince Ming Lung has even announced that he is traveling to the icebound snow territory this year to pick the snow territory divine flower for your majesty to nourish your body. Everyone knows what kind of place the icebound snow territory is. That is the Arctic, where there are dangers at every step. How much resolve and courage has Crown Prince Ming Lung mustered? How much does he respect and love your majesty? 
for him to dare say that he is going to pick the snow territory divine flower for your majesty, shut up, the nether province emperor shouted as he smacked his dragon throne's arm wrist, don't say any more, official Kang, the court officials exhorted, official Kang is saying that only picking the snow territory divine flower can express one's respect and love as well as filial devotion, the cold faced Mingasi suddenly spoke up, his voice was low and elegant, but exuded an indescribable tension, it was as if everyone wanted to shut up like cicadas in winter the moment he spoke, this third prince was tall and handsome, with a domineering air, he had usurped the crown prince and snatched away the latter's position immediately after coming back, naturally, he took a much tougher stance than the indecisive and weak crown prince Ming Lung, official Kang prostrated with his forehead pressing against the floor, he howled bitterly, Crown Prince Ming Lung's filial devotion can move the heavens and earth, and is clear to the sun and moon, shut up, the nether province emperor broke into a coughing fit, which covered up his angry roars, Ming Asi stepped forward and knelt on one knee, he looked up sharply at the emperor on the throne, imperial father, since the court officials are already saying this, as your son, I naturally cannot shrink back, imperial father, please allow me to lead 2000 troops to the arctic, I will bring back the snow territory divine flower to nourish your body, chapter 2300 blue spiritual purifying fire, Hurlian had come out of closed door cultivation, he had woken up, Kiao Mu pounced into Molian's arms with a whoosh like a little tiger seeking food, the latter hugged her waist with a smile, he looked down at her and asked gently, Kiao Kiao, you were waiting here for hubby, Kiao Mu nodded vigorously, Lady Kiao Kiao a trembling voice from the horizon promptly ruined this dreamy atmosphere, Molian, strange, how come it sounded so much like Huang's voice, Kiao Mu dragged Molian back to the edge of the beach, Lian, while you were busy forging, I brought back two terrestrial whales, do you want to see, they're so fun, the little fellow pulled him to the water and hopped onto a rock, she called out, big whale, the surface of the sea was extremely calm, there was no ripple at all, two minutes later, a huge vortex started forming in the water, a titanic terrestrial whale popped its head out from the water, its slanton like eyes peered over at the couple on the beach, Kiaomu took out a dried fish the size of her arm from her inner world and tossed it into the sea, the terrestrial whale spewed water from its mouth and caught the dried fish with its teeth, it crunched on it as it sank into the water, it was hard for Kiaomu to hide her mirth even through her compressed lips, she looked up at Molian, are they? fun, when the little fellow looked up, she just so happened to see the man gazing at her unblinkingly, and her voice slowly trailed off, why are you looking at me unblinkingly, my Kiyoki ow is so pretty, Molian reached out to caress her snow white cheeks, he pulled her into his arms and just hugged her without saying anything, actually, he was particularly happy, the little fellow had completely abandoned all her defenses in front of him now, the charming manner that the little lady revealed just now showed that her childish innocence had still not vanished, he hoped that she could continue smiling like a flower just like this, no matter where they went, he would definitely make sure that she had a peaceful and smooth life, swish, ink black ferule appeared in Molian's palm, it looked the same as before, but Kiaomu felt her mood flutter in excitement, as if the ferule ink he was eagerly beckoning to her, pick it up, pick it up, Kiao Mu reached out, and the ink black fru leapt into her hand, it was five inches long and two inches wide, it glimmered ink black with a subdued brilliance, the moment Kiao Mu grasped it, she felt an extraordinary power surging through it, recall, with this thought, the ferule melded into her palm, a miraculous power merged with her body, it was as if she did not need to use words to communicate with the ferule, it was just like that peculiar startled swan dagger that would immediately attack at her single thought, whoosh, a bright blue flame burned in Kiaomu's palm, the blue flame was tranquil yet fierce, it was so bright that she squinted her eyes, this is grade 8 blue spiritual purifying fire, Molian was very satisfied, he curled his lips and said, only high ranked elemental spirits above grade 9 have names, it was kudos to a divine weapon engineer that a heavenly fire mithril could produce a grade 8 spiritual fire, the essence of this grade 8 spiritual fire is extremely pure, it can practically rival my purple flame, Kiao Kiao, 
Are you happy? Kiao Mu nodded repeatedly. She was just short of waving her tail joyfully, 